Stargate Book presents Cyclomancy, The Secret of Psychic Power Control by Frank Rudolph Young. Digitally narrated using the voice of Edward Herman. Introduction. What this book will do for you. Isn't this something more than pure fantasy? Shakespeare, Hamlet. There are more possibilities, my son, in the mind and body of man than he has imagined with all his science. John Arnold Young, father of the author, to whose memory this book is dedicated. This book will teach you the way to acquire extraordinary mystical powers. Powers of healing, materialization, prophecy and thought transmission, and even more extraordinary ones. It clearly shows you that magic really exists, and that through it you can achieve incredible results. Cyclomancy, a name that replaces white magic, is simply the utilization of some hidden powers that we all possess. Powers that were given to us long before the books appeared. Forgotten powers, such as the power to move objects without touching them. You possess the faculty to accomplish these, as well as many of other kinds, such as radioscopic vision, astral projection, hypnotic mental attraction, and hearing sensitization. At every stage of life, you will notice that cyclomancy will bring you incredible results. With the vision of psychic power, you can see through walls of brick, stone, and solid steel. You can perceive what is happening in a nearby room. You can read passages from closed books, and you can see the contents of locked safes. The very ground on which one walks becomes transparent, and one can see down into the depths, into the interior of the earth. Minerals, coal, oil, and underground rivers can thus be discovered. These magical techniques are not at all difficult to employ and do not require special aptitudes. All you have to do is read the instructions and perform the exercises you will awaken wonderful powers within you that you never suspected you possessed. What kind of powers? For example, 1. The power to see a great distance by means of the astral telescope. 2. The power to discover the history of an object by simply holding it in your hands. 3. The power to know, thanks to psychometry, what happens at a certain place at a certain time, without being there. 4. The power to know what a certain person is like before you have seen him or her. 5. The power to travel with your astral body. 6. The power to use your astral arm and move objects without touching them. 7. The power to foretell the future by means of the crystal ball. 8. The power to lose weight without deprivation. And all this is only the beginning. You will be able to see how many great personalities have used only one procedure of cyclomancy to achieve glory and fortune. You will be able to do the same way if you wish. Here is what it means for you. You will be able to captivate others with your thinking and the grace of your movements, to increase muscle power tenfold by means of the mind, to awaken intense desire in people of the opposite sex, and to attract people as honey attracts the bee. All this is exposed to you gradually, with comprehensive, easy-to-follow instructions. You will know how to draw your peers to you, without asking for anything, how to command others to do what you want them to do, without lifting a finger. You will find in this book secrets hidden for centuries and used only by someone for personal purposes. But today, you too can use these powers and achieve a miracle in your life. In these pages you will discover cyclomancy, the only true form of magic that will enable you to reap a vast harvest of wisdom, understanding, power, and love. You will discover how you can see the deep truth of things thanks to the wonderful third eye and how to get all the information you need about a particular project, thanks to the secret of psychic power. And all this is but a sample of the immense wisdom and insight that this book offers you. Your life changes instantly. If you desire money, look for the amazing techniques in Lesson 20. If you want a nice house, nice clothes or jewelry, Cyclomancy will easily get them for you. If you want a friend or relative to come to you and do what you want, simply project a psychic ray onto this person's mind. 
After a few seconds, this individual will agree with you and obey your orders. Thanks to these powers, your life will take on a new direction. Each day, which previously offered you only torment, will now give you a new victory. Your problems know, matter how disastrous they have been will, finally find their solution. Like a miracle. From today to tomorrow, you will turn sadness into joy, failure into success, hate into love, distrust into confidence, weakness into boldness, strength and vitality, boredom and apathy into joie de vivre and pleasure. Cyclomantics is magic, and it can also rejuvenate you. Through it, as you will discover in Lessons 6 and 7, you can tone your muscles and skin, look younger, fresher and more attractive, restore strength to your hair and skin, eat better, work better and sleep like a baby. Unlimited power is in your hands. Cyclomancy can do much more for you. To money, love, success, new friends, new energy, wisdom, you can add. A more dynamic and authoritative personality. An improved power of concentration. An infallible memory. Increased communication power. Better resistance to colds, flu, and respiratory disorders. There are no limits to the possibilities of cyclomancy. This book offers you a proven progressive technique that will expand your aptitude for doing anything with unexpected ease and speed. You will discover for yourself a personality whose existence you never suspected. The concept this book proposes is revolutionary, and you must succeed, just as it has succeeded for hundreds of men and women who are no different from you. Lesson 1. How to make the high potential of the primitive self work for you. The primitive self is the prehistoric instinctive mind. As life progressed, from the instinctive age of fish, amphibians, reptiles and birds, to the more intellectual age of the great apes and man, man felt less and less the need for this remarkable control that the primitive self-consciousness exercised over him, and felt more and more that of the powers of reasoning. Man, as a result, lost the psychic and muscular control with which the primitive self-consciousness had endowed the older but lower forms of life. The cerebral cortex developed, covering his conscious and subconscious. In fact, throughout the time of growth to maturity, even more of the primitive self-conscious element is lost. It is more developed in childhood, so the embryologists have determined. The cortex was then thinner, indicating that the power of reasoning was less important at this stage of life and therefore interfered less with the primitive self-consciousness. It happens, therefore, that your occupations and daily life need the primal self-consciousness more than ever. Important decisions do not depend solely on the opinion of enlightened-minded people, as Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson implied. Others, such as Clark Gable, Rudolph Valentino, Jean Harlow, and Marilyn Monroe, resorted solely to a small unknown quality of their personality to catapult themselves into glory and success. Logic and reasoning can help you, and later instinct and the primitive self take over and demolish your conclusions based on the strictest logic and skill. Fortunately, you have not lost your primitive self-awareness. It functions in the brain involuntarily or instinctively. Its presence in you, even when asleep, is demonstrated by the incredible performance of people in a state of hypnosis. Therefore, it can be awakened and used consciously to accomplish fantastic things. For example, you cannot make your ears move at will, but you always have the muscles to do so. You can then, if you want, urge these muscles to make your ears move again. You can gain incredible psychic and physiological power by awakening just a fraction of your primitive self-consciousness. You can use it to achieve exceptional health, to captivate people with your thoughts, to subdue them with your gestures and draw them to you just as honey attracts bees, to learn any trade in no time, to cause intense sexual desire in the opposite sex by your mere presence, to increase your strength tenfold, to improve your sight and hearing, to know what is happening in a given place thousands of miles away, to have exact knowledge and information about a certain project, to make contact with the past and the future through your mind. Through it you can see through the earth, and perform endless miracles.
The Two Scientific Proofs of Confusion There are two indisputable scientific proofs that demonstrate that anyone can awaken his or her primitive self to transform his or her entire being and life. The first is pathological evidence that could be demonstrated on any victim over the course of a few years. The second is psychopathic evidence that could be exhibited by anyone in an instant if the opportunity arose. The two pieces of evidence consist of syphilis and hysteria. First test. Syphilis eminent pathologists call syphilis the great imitator. Its clinical manifestations are innumerable, as it can affect any organ or tissue and can virtually take on the appearance of any disease. Many clinicians state that syphilis can actually take on the appearance of the most diverse diseases. In other words, human tissues possess an unknown quality, which, when subjected to an appropriate pathological stimulant, i.e. treponema pallidum, can, over a period of months and years, mimic any disease. Second test. Hysteria is strictly a mental condition, although it can cause symptoms of illnesses that do not actually exist in the person concerned. During the war, more than one soldier was stricken with hysterical blindness after miraculously escaping danger. Other soldiers who had the task of burying rotting corpses lost their sense of smell. Hysteria is a psychosomatic illness. The hysteric becomes convinced that he is suffering from a certain disease and thus develops all its symptoms. Although clinical and laboratory examinations will show him otherwise, he will remain convinced that he possesses such an illness to the point that it becomes real. What does this prove? It proves that the superiority of the hysteric psychic power is so irresistible that he can actually assume the state he believes he has. His tissues can truly degenerate simply because he is convinced that they already are. The order of his psychic power takes over the logical reasoning of his conscious mind and orders the primitive self to change his mind and body into the condition in which he believes he is. The subject actually becomes what he imagines himself to be. In conclusion, if you acquire the mind and body control that the hysteric has and use it in a constructive sense, what wonders you can accomplish in life. But the conscious and logical mind does not abandon you, and psychic power has subordinated itself to it over the years. Cyclomancy, the secret of psychic power padronity, will free psychic power from such subordination. These two scientific proofs of confusion show that the tissues of mind and body already possess an inherent quality that makes them capable, with appropriate pathological stimulation, of mimicking any disease if given the necessary time and opportunity. They likewise prove that psychic power, when strong enough, can change the condition of the mind and body through the control it exerts over the primitive self-consciousness. Learn to know your primitive self-consciousness and bring it under the control of psychic power. Analysis of Primitive Self-Consciousness Anatomically, the primitive self consists of ten major parts of the brain. 1. The center of psychic power the silent region of the brain, the forehead and temples. 2. The sensation registration center, two thalamus. 3. The organ control center, the hypothalamus. 4. The coordination center of muscles, the extrapyramidal nervous system. 5. The brain antennae, the artillery of psychic power the optic nerves, and the retina. 6. The reflex centers of vision and hearing, upper and lower colliculus. 7. The center of primitive sight and the great visual center, the occipital lobes. 8. The primitive hearing center, the middle geniculate bodies. 9. The vision of psychic power, the eyeball. 10. The hearing of psychic power, the auditory nerves and temporal lobes. Description of the ten parts of the primitive self-consciousness. 1. The center of psychic power, the zone of silence, differs microscopically from the adjacent areas of the brain and possesses amazing power over the mind and body. Since its cortex has not been conveniently analyzed, according to Gray, the mysterious power of this part of the brain can only be psychic power, 
because no one has been able to prove otherwise. Scientifically, it has been proven that this center controls the power of attention, memory, digestion, heart, kidney functions, respiration, sensations of pain, temperature, and tension. It is related to many important areas of message reception, such as visual and auditory. The psychic power center is the region of the brain that most influences the development of the unconscious personality. When through it, you have learned to govern the body. You can control the lungs, heart, liver, kidneys, digestion, blood tension, coordination of muscles, body temperature, etc. It is like the one eye of the cyclops, cyclomansia. Without it, the cyclops was an unarmed giant, while with the eye, he was invincible. With the exception of the great visual center in the temporal lobe, the other parts of the primitive self-consciousness are not centers of psychic power. They govern the muscles and different nervous systems. The psychic power center is able to control the whole body because it can govern all other parts of the primal self-consciousness. 2. The sense recording center, the thalamus, is the region of the brain where pain, differences in temperature and pressure, the position and movements of different parts of the body, and sensations of pleasure are most felt. All this before the conscious mind itself has knowledge of them. That is why, by ruling the sensation registration center by psychic power, you can control the sensations of pain, temperature, and pleasure. You can, for example, be in intense cold and yet be so hot that you sweat. You can give evidence of such vibrant ardor as to awaken intense sexual desire in people of the opposite sex by your mere presence. You can excel at playing an instrument, typing by giving your fingers the appropriate pressure. 3. The organ control center, the hypothalamus, is the command center of the nervous system, grand sympathetic and parasympathetic. It is also the command center of your emotions. Although the nervous system controls the living functions of the body, you can control them at will in the same way as emotions when you have gained control of psychic power over the organ control center. You will then be able, for example, to increase or decrease your appetite at will. You will then be able to control your weight, regulate your bowels, avoid fears and nervousness, acquire invincible confidence and inexhaustible energy. 4. The muscle coordination center the extrapyramidal nervous system, controls the coordination of muscles. Thanks to it, under the control of psychic power, you can perform incredible balancing exercises, increase the strength of muscles tenfold without increasing their volume, gain mastery in any sports activity. Coordination of muscles will prevent you from considerable effort in anything you undertake physically and increase your muscle power and effectiveness. Take a real but simple example of muscle coordination, and you will see that the muscle coordination center will do wonderful things for you. How the biceps lift a light weight. First movement. The biceps contracting to lift the weight. Second movement. The triceps, its antagonist is induced to relax by the coordination center of the muscles so that the biceps can contract without resistance. Third movement. The triceps does not relax completely, but it also contracts to restrain the biceps. In each case, it contracts less than the biceps. Fourth movement. The muscles that bind the elbow contract, thanks to the coordination center of the muscles, to secure the elbow joint and allow the biceps to lift this light weight with minimal effort. In this way, the biceps lifts a light weight. How the biceps lift a heavier weight. First movement. When you lift a heavy weight, the biceps contract more forcefully. Second movement. The triceps relaxes immediately, but because of the coordination center of the muscles, it also contracts more to break the biceps more forcefully. Third movement. The shoulder and forearm muscles, which contracted weakly at first, now do so more forcefully to stabilize the shoulder and fist joint, as well as the elbow joint, so that the biceps can lift the most weight with the least effort. How the biceps lift a heavy weight. First movement. When you lift a heavy weight with your biceps, almost all the fibers of the biceps muscle contract. 
second movement. The triceps relaxes immediately, but also contracts more forcefully to restrain the biceps. Third movement. The coordination center of the muscles forces virtually every muscle in the body to contract to stabilize all the joints in the body and allow the biceps to lift the large weight with minimal effort. The muscles in your feet and legs contract to lock your ankles and knees so you can maintain your position despite the pull of your weight downward. Those of the hips lock the hip joint to keep you in the upright position. The muscles of the back, chest, and abdomen contract to keep your head, shoulders, and chest straight. The muscles of the face and forehead also contract as a result of the psychic power and determination exerted by the mind. By stabilizing the different joints during the lifting effort, all these sets of muscles allow the biceps to lift a large weight smoothly and force savingly, which allows it to lift a much heavier weight than it could do without this coordination. When you govern the coordination center of the muscles through psychic power, you can become as strong as Hercules without even training. You will gain mastery of new activities that demand grace, quickness, and rhythm with extraordinary rapidity. 5. The cerebral antennas, the artillery of psychic power. These are the optic nerves and the retina. The retina is an outgrowth of the brain and a true independent nervous system. It does not resemble any other sensory organ. Due to the different projections of heat, radiation, and waves of the cerebral antennae, you can emit or receive messages and waves at any distance. You can affect the health of people near and far. You can create new friendships and exercise psychokinesis, or psychic power over inorganic substances. They are also called brain horns. 6. The reflex centers of sight and hearing. They economize a considerable amount of energy daily and are not affected by sensations. They give you considerable prestige graceful feline movements, and give the mind the ability to function while you are in motion with maximum performance. This makes you proficient in business and social life. 7. The center of primary sight and the great visual center, the occipital lobes. By awakening the center of primitive sight, you automatically possess two major visual centers instead of one. You can then read much faster because you possess four eyes instead of two. Later, as you develop the great visual center, you will increase the faculty of recognizing, determining, identifying colors and shapes, and acquire a more penetrating artistic eye. You can do the same thing when you are on the move and excel in activities, crafts, and sports as you never did before. 8. The Primitive Hearing Center Because of the mysterious cochlea electricity it possesses, and which you can develop enormously, your hearing can come very close to the super-receptivity of the hysteric, who hears 16 times more than you, and the radar hearing of the bot. 9. The Vision of Psychic Power By acquiring the action power of the vision of psychic power, you can acquire the microscopic and telescopic eye and see through matter and to long distances. By creating an astral tube, you can see astrally at great distances. Through the power of the eyes, you can reach out and touch people 20 feet away. 10. Psychic power hearing, the auditory nerves and temporal lobes, enables you to considerably improve your hearing, to distinguish sounds amidst the most diverse noises, to hear sounds before you have even heard them, to create an astral ear, to receive sounds from very great distances, and to improve hearing in great proportions, just as the blind do. To sum up, it can be said that the primitive self-conscious can recover a superhuman part of your sleeping powers mentally, physically, and astrally. That is why the potential of the primitive self is so fantastic. With the following lesson, you will begin to awaken it. Three steps to conduct psychic power in every part of the body. Whatever part of the brain or body you wish to command with psychic power, always employ the same technique. It consists of three stages. First stage. Give the order in your conscious mind, or, if it lacks the power of action to execute it, transfer the order to the psychic power center. This is an easily attainable stage if you process your order well. Second stage. 
direct the order of psychic power from the forehead through the entire length of the nerve that Eo carries into the part of the brain or body you want to rule. Third stage. Now fix the order of psychic power in this part, and it will incite it to do what you want. In the second lesson you will learn how to perform these three steps, and immediately afterwards you will engage in other experiences. The dynamite hidden in protoplasmic irritability. You are able to direct an order of psychic power through nerves to any part of the brain and body by means of the dynamite hidden in your protoplasmic irritability. Irritability or tendency to react to a stimulus, is a fundamental property common to all protoplasm and your nerves, like every other living tissue, are composed of protoplasm. From a protoplasmic point of view, beings are different from each other. Each individual has its own smell that a dog or cat can easily detect. The irritability of protoplasm depends on the hidden dynamite that possesses an electrical potential. When the protoplasm is stimulated or excited, even by psychic power, an electric current is unleashed that spreads along the tissues of the organ of which it is a part. This is the hidden dynamite. This protoplasmic electric current is obviously weak, but that does not make it any less important. Thanks to this dynamite hidden in your nerves, you can direct the orders of psychic power to any part of the body and brain that you want to govern. The Disadvantages of Order Habituation there are a few pointers to follow to make the most effective use of this hidden dynamite. Nerve tissue instantly regains its magnetized state as soon as the current has moved into the designated tissue. That is why you should never direct the orders of psychic power through your nerves for more than two seconds at a time. The nerves would adapt and stop responding. In conclusion, you know the fantastic potential of primitive self-awareness and its scientific basis. All you have to do is to arrange the different parts under the control of psychic power so that you can awaken them and begin to take advantage of them quickly by making their fantastic potential work for you. This book will do that for you. What 1% of your primitive self-consciousness can do for you? You already know that the primitive self is your unknown or unconscious personality. But there is no need to fully awaken your primitive self-consciousness. Only develop your unknown personality no more than 1% and you will have complete control of your body. Thanks to the primitive self-consciousness, you can penetrate the mysterious powers of the mind and body powers that could increase your effectiveness a hundredfold in everything you undertake. This can happen very simply. First of all, it is well known that you use only one ten th of your known mental personality, and you also use virtually no part of your primitive self-consciousness. So most of your known personality and primitive self-consciousness remain unused. This is the reason why yoga masters and mystics perform miracles. They use their mental powers a hundred times more effectively than you do. It is therefore not surprising that they can surpass you in the employment of their mind and body. You, however, do not need to be one hundred times more effective than others to outperform them. You do not need to be January 10th more effective than them to surpass them. So all you need to do is develop the 1% primitive self-awareness, and you will thus use 11% of your known and unknown personality, while others will only use 10% of their combined personalities. This will make you January 10th more effective than them. Remember that in any activity in school, at work, in sports, in love, if you outperform someone by 10% you outclass them. If a firm consistently earns 10% more than its rival, it will put it out of business, because it will earn less and less until it is outclassed by 20 or 30 percent. The same rule of competition applies with people. At first you overtake the rival by 10 percent and then overtake others by 20 percent, 25 percent and more. From this moment the rival is in your dominance. That is why you have to gain mastery and know how to develop primal self-awareness and use the hidden power of the mind and body. Lesson 2. How to place the conscious mind, the sensation recording center, and the organ control center under the control of psychic power. How to improve the transmission of psychic power command. The transmission of the order of psychic power is ensured first of all by the primal self-consciousness, your center of psychic power. 
With this part, as we have already established, you can govern the other nine parts of the primal self and your conscious mind. Since you probably do not use more than 1% of the psychic power when you consciously apply it, you do not use more than 1% of the nerve fibers of the psychic power center when you issue an order. Therefore, psychic power can be intensified a hundred times more. This is what beings who perform miracles do. In fact, you power intensify the command of psychic power 1,200 times by quickly overcoming the resistance it meets at the nerve junction. Since some nerve tracts have up to three or four joints, you can intensify psychic power at least 3,600 times. You will learn in lesson four how to accomplish this. In exercises one and two below, you will create a powerful command transmission of your psychic power. You will learn to make the conscious mind feel a much more intense sensation than in reality. In exercise three, you will feel two different sensations at the same time with the two separate parts of the brain and you will order each half of the conscious mind to feel the different sensations much more intensely than is actually the case. The seven exercises will force you to put more nerve fibers of your primitive self into motion under the guidance of psychic power and develop the hidden powers of the mind. Seven, exercises to transmit orders to the conscious mind. You cannot hope to dominate the rest of your body and the bodies and minds of others with the commands of psychic power if you cannot first dominate your own mind. Exercise 1 gives you this power, the power to force your conscious, logical, and reasonable spirit to accept exactly the opposite of what it knows to be true by simply sending it an order from the center of psychic power. Only when you have accomplished this will you be on your way to performing miracles. When you have forced the conscious mind to accept the orders of psychic power without argument, you too will be able to perform miracles. So exercise one is very important. Exercise one. How to master one's conscious mind by means of the orders of psychic power. Place your left hand in a sufficiently deep cup filled with cool water. Then issue an order of psychic power to the conscious mind ordering it to feel that the water is very hot. Represent the order as a very hot rocket launched from the forehead backward into the conscious mind, into the cortex of the brain. The conscious mind will immediately feel that the cool water is a little warmer. With this launch, you will have used about 1% of the nerve fibers of your unconscious personality. After two or three seconds, before the mind adjusts to the very hot flare, throw another even hotter flare command. Then imagine that the hand becomes hotter and hotter. After another one or two seconds, before the mind adapts to the enhanced command of psychic power, Throw her another even hotter rocket command and immediately imagine the hand becoming completely hot. This time, however, you can bring into play more of the new fibers of the primitive self-consciousness to percent in all. Launch two more and hotter rocket commands to the mind so that you use and develop at least 3% of your primitive self-consciousness. From this moment on, you can actually give orders to the conscious mind by means of psychic power. Exercise 2 now place your right hand in a cup full of very hot water and repeat exercise one in the opposite direction. Launch a very cold rocket command, commanding the conscious mind to feel that the hand is cold rather than hot. After a few seconds, you launch a new, even cooler rocket and imagine that your right hand is cooler than before. Repeat the exercise up to five times. Once more, you have given orders to the conscious mind through psychic power. Exercise 3. Sit down by placing your left hand in a cup of cold water and your right hand in a cup of hot water. Repeat exercises 1 and 2 at exactly the same time. To do this, you must focus divided attention, which doubles the difficulty of the exercise. However, this is achievable because the right half of the brain controls the left hand, while the left half controls the right hand. This forces you to place each half of the mind under a different command of psychic power at the same time. Apply these exercises until you feel the flares command flares of psychic power reach the left and right hand. Exercise 4. Repeat exercises 1, 2, and 3, but now instruct the right hand, which is in hot water, to feel cold instantly, the left hand, which is in cold water, to feel very hot as well instantly. 
Your commands will not succeed at the first stroke, but your efforts will put the fibers of the primal self into action and develop them accordingly. When you feel an immediate and noticeable change in the temperature of your hands after issuing the commands of psychic power, you will be able to realize higher designs with much greater ease. Be careful not to let your imagination distract you. Do not imagine that your hand is locked in ice when it is merely immersed in warm water. You are practicing to develop the transmission of psychic power orders and not imagination. The skill you can acquire in these exercises will put more and more nerve fibers of the primal self into action and equip you with a transmission of psychic power commands to make people who know you envious. Exercise 5. Silent Transmission To rapidly develop the transmission of the psychic power command. Sit in your room with your hands resting on your knees. Close your eyes and think only of your left hand. Throw with vivid force a very hot rocket command through the sensation registration center to the base of the neck. Then direct it to the left shoulder and then down the arm to the hand. Immediately thereafter, block the recording center by means of a rocket command of psychic power from any normal temperature sensations that the left hand might send to it. Continue to throw rocket command reinforced by psychic power to your left hand to increase its feeling of warmth. Exercise 6. Repeat exercise 5, but now throw a rocket command cold from psychic power at your right hand. Exercise 7. Cross silent transmission. Repeat both exercises 5 and 6 at the same time. Launch the psychic power command to the left hand from the right half of the forehead, and at the same time, launch a similar rocket to the right hand from the left half of the forehead. With exercises 5, 6, and 7, you will quickly develop all the transmission of the psychic power command that you need for the prompt realization of your ends, using the various possibilities offered by cyclomancy. How to develop a sense of time through control of psychic power. Exercise 1. Throughout the day, several times, try to establish the exact time. Do not try to refer to the time when you last looked at the clock but force your mind to feel the exact time at that moment. Do not try to guess. Fix the psychic power on the general feeling of time. After repeating this exercise a number of times for several days, begin to make the subconscious mind work according to these directives, keeping the time secretly for yourself. When you later ask yourself this question, the psychic power center will launch a rocket to the subconscious mind and illuminate the dark, invisible clock arranged within, and it will project the exact time to you. Exercise 2. Take a book, not this one. Check the time, and then read a page or two intelligibly. Estimate the time taken and check it on the clock. Do not try to imagine the time it took you to read these pages. Everything must depend solely on the psychic power of your subconscious mind. To sum up, musicians, dancers, athletes, doctors, nurses, businessmen, presenters, salespeople, etc., must constantly use their sense of time. In many of these activities, it is virtually impossible to watch the clock while working. And unfortunately, without an exact sense of time, you are doomed to lose valuable time in these situations. The ability to know the time with sufficient accuracy, without the help of a watch, amazes and fascinates people. This greatly increases your ability and effectiveness in all the projects to which you devote yourself. How to increase volitional power or willpower by control of psychic power. The volitional power, as psychologists call it, belongs to the conscious mind. Through it you can guide your muscles to make a certain movement. You can encourage the mind to think in a certain way and your actions to carry out a certain project. Whatever movement you make, Whatever project you propose, if you make it without volition, it will be made without conviction, unless you already have the habit of making that movement or project and have converted it into a conditioned reflex. When your volitional power is intensified to the point of foreseeing the possibilities of accomplishing the desired act or project, you will then achieve results in daily life that will astound everyone. You must develop your volitional power to the point of totally surpassing that of the masses. Even intensified to the slightest degree, 
your volitional power can operate miraculously in daily life. Do the following exercises and you will intensify your volitional power with impressive rapidity. Exercise 1. How to force yourself to do something you want to do in spite of the obstacles that may stand in your way. Set a specific time to go to bed at night. When the hour approaches, prepare for bedtime, even if you prefer to do something else, unless it is an urgent case. Strive to go to bed exactly at the appointed time, neither earlier nor later. Do not make it a matter of life and death, but follow your plan patiently and meticulously. Look at your watch and make sure you are in bed at the chosen time. This seems a simple exercise, but it will test the resources of your willpower. You will find many obstacles in the realization of your plan, and you will have to overcome them all. You will have to disregard other people's wishes to be in bed at the chosen time. Even if you live alone, this will not be easy. To this you must arrive without any sense of anxiety. You will be surprised to see the extent to which willpower will intensify. Repeat this exercise for several times in a row. Exercise 2. Force yourself to sit down suddenly and write a letter to someone. If you have an appointment at that time, choose a time the next day to write this letter. Choose an appropriate time to write a letter the following week. Exercise 3. In Exercise 2, oblige yourself to write a three-page letter to your correspondent. Make it neither longer nor shorter and complete it in half an hour. This exercise will force the region of the brain covered by the parietal lobe and quickly provide you for this letter with the words and thoughts you need. All this must be done very calmly. Summary. Even if you cannot do this exercise correctly the first few times, repeat it several times. The exercises make you use psychic power to intensify volitional power so that you can solve these troublesome tasks effortlessly. Exercises to make thinking more insightful. Exercise 1. Take the most difficult book you have on hand, which you detest because of its roughness. Open it at random and read it fluently as if it were any other book. When you encounter a difficult word that you do not understand, give it a plausible meaning and keep reading. Read two-thirds of the page, striving to penetrate the concepts expressed as if the book were very easy. Put the volume back and begin the same thing again with another, difficult book. You will be surprised to find that you understand it faster. Repeat this exercise four times a week and you will develop more nerve fibers of your unconscious personality. Gradually increase the time of your reading, adding a line or two at a time until you are reading a page and a half or two. The aptitude for assimilating complex information will develop greatly in you. Occasionally stop this exercise for several days or even a week. Do not subject the primal self to too hard a test before it is fully awakened. Exercise 2. Choose an urgent problem for which you cannot immediately find a satisfactory solution. Analyze it from a new point of view and choose the best solution. Do the same thing for any problem that comes your way for which you do not have a ready solution. From the moment you feel fatigued by the effort, or have to struggle to find spontaneous solutions, stop the exercise. To get the best benefit from these exercises, always perform them with a fresh and rested mind. Exercise 3. Choose instantly, after brief consideration, a practical solution to end wars forever and make peaceful coexistence possible. How the control of psychic power over the sensation recording center accomplishes miraculous deeds. Polynesian sorcerers can walk on coals by repelling heat from their legs and feet thanks to the sensation recording center. They do not feel the burning heat of the coals. There are blind people who can see with their fingers. They have developed extraocular vision. All the message-carrying nerves of the body are connected in one way or another to all the nerves that send orders. You can transfer functions from one part of your body to another. With cyclomantics, you will learn practical processes that will help you better integrate into society and progress on the path to success. How to place the sensation recording center under the control of psychic power. 
Why lethargy is a perfect example of the mastery of psychic power over the sensation recording center and the organ control center, the second and third parts of the primal self-consciousness. This book will reveal to you entirely and scientifically. How does the yoga master realize hibernation? Hibernation is the miraculous physiological means by which the yoga master can get himself buried alive and emerge healthy after dozens of days. In order to carry out this bewildering experiment, he launches from his psychic power, an order of such violence, to the sensation recording center and the organ control center that it causes incredible changes in bodily functions that serve to keep him alive without food, water, or air for the duration of the experiment. First, he reduces the normal temperature from 38 degrees to a variation between 27 degrees and 32 degrees. Second, it extraordinarily reduces the rhythm of the heart and breathing. Third, the pressure drops to a point where it cannot be measured. Fourth, decreases urine production or totally suppresses it because of its incredible control over kidney function. Fifth, reduces digestive activity to a minimum. Sixth, reduces the volume of circulating blood until it flows drop by drop. Seventh, reduces metabolism by 20% to 50%. Eighth, under such conditions, the body practically does not demand food. Digestion, metabolism, and pressure are so imperceptible that it uses only a minimum of energy to stay alive. Only very little oxygen is needed to breathe. The average normal man would die under such conditions because he could not slow down his life process to such a degree and would require more oxygen to stay alive. Ninth, because the body in this state breathes little oxygen. Fat is converted by complex biochemical processes into carbohydrates, releasing oxygen. Thus, during hibernation, oxygen supply is ensured. To be more clear, the body gets the necessary oxygen not from the air, but from itself, by converting fat into carbohydrates. By placing the sensation recording center and the control center of the organs under the control of psychic power, the yoga master can put himself in a state of hibernation and live 40 days without food, water, or air. This is how the squirrel and the bear hibernate without the worry of food. Exercise How to get warm when you are cold On a day when it is cold, take a walk less covered than usual. The sensation recording center receives a sense of coolness and transmits it to the conscious mind. Immediately send a rocket command from the psychic power center to the sensation recording center ordering it to warm you up. The sympathetic nervous system will provide it. Do not abuse this exercise and bring a spare pullover just in case. Repeat this exercise in even colder weather. Keep your hands and feet warm by means of gloves and woolen socks. Do not let your extremities get cold. Do not expose yourself to the cold for too long. Gradually develop psychic power control over your body temperature. Fearlessly resist the feeling of cold for a few moments by commanding the sensation recording center to keep you warm. How to develop spatial discrimination or sense of direction in space? By developing a sense of direction in space, you will add positional and visual confidence to your feet. Exercise 1. How to put eyes on your feet. Stand upright at the far end of a room or in a corner. Look straight ahead at a spot on the wall. Close your eyes and walk toward that spot. No obstacles should stand in your path. Keep one hand outstretched in front of you to avoid bumping into the wall. Force your legs to walk straight with your eyes closed, and you guide them with a command of psychic power. When you touch the wall, open your eyes and calculate the distance to the point you had set out to reach. Practice this exercise until the psychic power command achieves perfect mastery of the sense of direction in space. Exercise 2. Return to the starting place and look again at the dot on the wall across the room. Now, turn to the side and close your eyes. Without opening them, turn around with your face in the direction of the established point on the other wall. With your hands stretched forward, cross the chamber again. Reach the wall, open your eyes and calculate the distance to the established point. Practice this exercise often 
which exercises the command of psychic power to direct the center of registering sensations with the immediacy of memory. Exercise 3. Return to the starting point and look again at the spot on the opposite wall of the room. Make a half turn so that you are facing the wall that was behind you. Close your eyes. Go around again with your eyes closed and cross the room to the same spot on the wall. When you arrive, open your eyes and calculate the distance gap as usual. Exercise 4. You will be masters of the controlled sense of the psychic power of direction in space when you can turn completely twice on yourself with your eyes closed before crossing the room and heading directly for the spot on the wall. Do these exercises one after the other. They begin with the fixation of the point across the room in your conscious mind. Once your eyes are closed, you rely on the command of psychic power to guide you straight to the appointed point. How to place the center of organ control under the control of psychic power. Since the organ control center governs all functions of the body, bringing it under the control of psychic power can have unlimited beneficial effects on health. Thanks to it, for example, you can reduce your weight, gain appetite, regulate the bowels, eliminate nervous tension, normalize sleep, fight disease, and control the emotions of fear, anger, pleasure, and joy. The following exercises are but examples of what you can do for you by controlling the organ control center through the commands of psychic power. Exercise 1. How to lose weight by means of the organ control center. At mealtime, if you feel heavy fast, thinking with the imagination that you have already eaten. Do not fill your stomach with water, as this would keep your weight down. You must feel your stomach full by order of psychic power. Launch a rocket command to the organ control center, ordering it to distend the stomach so that it ceases to emit gastric juices. You can also consume a small amount of your usual meal, and then immediately imagine your stomach dry and without gastric juices. Direct the visualized image into your stomach with absolute conviction through a rocket command of psychic power. Exercise 2. How to regulate the intestines. Since the organ control center governs the intestines, it can be used to acquire regular habits. It controls the peristaltic movement of the digestive tract, that is, the intestines in their function. Sitting on a stool, Imagine the intestine as if it were a tube leading directly from the stomach to the outside of the body. Imagine it rhythmically dilating and contracting every five seconds, with the contents descending from the stomach about to one half centimeter each time. In other words, tune the control center of the organs to the peristaltic rhythm that expels the contents of the tube out of the body. If you practice this exercise regularly at the same time every day, you will train the organ control center to go into action automatically and your bowels will be perfectly regulated. Exercise 3. How to Control Breathing Controlling breathing is of great benefit and can be achieved by means of the following exercise. Sit in a chair, breathe deeply and fill the diaphragm with air. Fill your chest with more air up to your shoulders. Afterwards, exhale as much air as you can. Repeat this exercise several times, it also serves to purify the blood because it reduces acidity caused by emotions. Exercise 4. How to Control Emotions If you get nervous easily or are prone to anger, encourage the organ control center to slow down the rate of breathing and the rate of heartbeats. Do this only through the breathing control you learned in Exercise 3. This habit will do you immense good. Breathe as deeply as possible because you will store more oxygen and the rhythm of breathing and heart rate will automatically slow down. Reflexively, they will control your emotions. Reflexively means an involuntary movement in response to another stimulus. By developing conscious control over the sensation recording and organ control centers, you can develop your intelligence. Psychologists Penfield and Jasper argue that consciousness is based in the sensation registration and organ control centers and in the upper parts of the upper brain trunk. These structures and their connected ones are called centroencephalic system, and it is considered as the highest level of nervous development. And this may be the reason why some psychically super gifted beings can perform mind-blowing acts, their sensation recording and organ control center 
has been developed or awakened to a mind-blowing degree. You will gain incalculable benefits by developing yours to the maximum possible degree. Lesson 3. How to Place the Coordination Center of Muscles Under the Control of Psychic Power How you can improve endlessly with the incredible potentials of the Muscle Coordination Center. The Muscle Coordination Center, the ivy part of the primitive self, is composed of three important portions, the corpus striatum, the red nucleus, and the cerebellum. To simplify things, we will denote them by the term muscle coordination center. Spontaneous electrical potentials are produced in the coordination center of the muscles, but they are weak because the conscious mind harasses them to preserve conventional muscle activity. In the laboratory, the nerve connection between the center and the conscious mind was experimentally disrupted by freeing it from this awe. High voltage discharges were immediately sent from the center. The muscle coordination center hid within itself much of the dynamite of protoplasmic irritability. When you release it from the civilized control of the conscious mind, it detonates its dynamite and accomplishes the unbelievable for you. You can free yourselves from this all through psychic power. Place the muscle coordination center under the control of psychic power and you can eliminate this addiction and you will gain explosive muscle power. This is exactly what the hysteric does, but in a negative way. You can do the same thing, but in a positive way. How the Muscle Coordination Center Works Every muscle in the body is under the control of the Muscle Coordination Center. In Lesson 1, you learned how muscle coordination works when a biceps lifts weights that are more or less heavy. Now learn how the coordination center of the muscles brings your nervous system into action to create this increase in power and how you can work miracles through it by putting it under the control of psychic power. When you try to lift a weight with your biceps, this is what happens in the nervous system. 1. A message is sent from the biceps to the conscious mind with a request for the force needed to lift the weight. In fact, the conscious mind must govern the muscle for it to lift the weight. 2. The nerve that brings order to the conscious mind is a nerve segment that stops at the spinal cord. 3. Consequently, in the spinal cord, the message must pass the nerve junction, or synopsis, and transfer to another nerve segment leading to the brain. 4. This second nerve segment conveys the message from the biceps that has arrived at the spinal cord to the coordination center of the muscles and stops there. 5. The center receives the message from the biceps and continues it via another nerve segment to the sensation recording center. 6. Finally, the center entrusts it to the mind and it chooses for the biceps the amount of force it needs to lift the weight. 7. The mind gives the order to the biceps via the transmitter nerves to contract sufficiently to raise the weight. 8. But the biceps needs a balancer to maintain position while lifting weight. The center also orders the triceps to contract to put a break on the biceps. 9. On the other hand, the triceps must not contract too much so as not to prevent the biceps from lifting the weight with minimal effort. So the center gives another order to the triceps, that of not contracting too much. 10. The triceps contracts, but relaxes enough to allow the biceps to operate without unnecessary loss of energy. In this way, the biceps lifts the weight aided by the triceps, thanks to the coordination center of the muscles. 11. When you lift an even heavier weight and stabilizing muscles come into action, they also come under the control of the muscle coordination center. Other ways in which the center helps you in your daily life. The same control of muscles occurs when you perform difficult movements, such as those that demand balance of the body, the sense of balance, or participation in a sport, game, or job. All activities, swimming, skiing, skating, golfing, dancing, singing, painting, sexual activity, dental surgery, surgery, serving at the table, doing manual labor, acting, driving, horseback riding, bicycling. Demand that you use many muscles of the body in a synchronized action 
to enable the main muscle to increase its effectiveness many times over. When an athlete strives to break a record, when a dancer or musician wants to improve their performance, or when a motorist wants to squeeze into dense traffic, you must add to your skill a considerable mastery of psychic power, because you cannot foresee the eventualities that as they arise. How to Multiply the Strength of Muscles The strength or agility that the transmission of the command of psychic power can impart to muscles is incredible. When a muscle becomes stronger, its fibers become larger. But the strength that muscles can eventually achieve is out of proportion with the increase in their volume. Let us examine the case of an average bodybuilder who lifts weights. He will begin training with a biceps that measures 35 centimeters and in a few years will have developed it to a maximum of 40 or 42 centimeters. That is, he increases by 25%. Now, at first he could not lift more than 26 kilograms, but in a few years, he can lift 81 to 90 kilograms. His strength thus increases by 150%. Moreover, observed under a microscope, his muscle fibers are the same although a little thicker. What could have caused this extraordinary increase in muscle power? It was the transmission of the command of psychic power to lift weight. He convinced himself that he could lift heavier and heavier weights. The psychic power center sends this rocket command to the muscle coordination center and orders it to ignore the opposite influence of the conscious mind. High voltage charges are immediately sent from the center and add strength to the stabilizing muscles. This allows the main muscles to increase their effectiveness six times more than tissue development would suggest. If this bodybuilder were of the caliber of a champion, he could lift up to 125 kilograms even with arms no bigger than his own. Thus his strength would increase by 245% while his muscles would only grow by 25% it would increase about 10 times in proportion to the increase in muscle volume. How to develop control of psychic power over muscles for a muscle to fully receive order, it must receive messages from multiple message-carrying nerves. Otherwise, it is only partially stimulated and only some of its fibers contract. Nevertheless, with an order of psychic power strong enough, you can engage a considerable number of message-carrying nerves to send messages to the command nerve of any muscle. The body itself acts this way with the coordination of muscles, but you can do it to a higher degree with the orders of psychic power so that the muscle contracts fully at your will. This is how many athletes who rely on power as well as speed break records. This also explains how little muscled men can perform miracles of physical strength without special training. Their command transmission of psychic power is 109 times more powerful than that of the average man. The following exercises will develop control of physical strength over the coordination center of muscles, whether for strength and agility, or for grace or beauty of movement. Each of these qualities that you acquire will give you self-confidence and help you overcome any obstacle. Exercises to develop mastery over muscles, man. Exercise 1. How to increase your strength in any sport. Suppose you are a runner, a hammer thrower, a swimmer, a jumper, a boxer, or play any sport that demands strength and dexterity. You put all your strength into your movements, but you need more to do better at winning. The conscious mind, sensed by the pain you feel in your muscles when you have put in all the effort, tells you that you have reached your maximum for that day. Refuse to believe it and prepare to overcome it. Relax from head to toe and breathe deeply to saturate yourself with electrons. Put yourself in the position of repeating the effort now, but remain relaxed. Throw a rocket command of psychic force at the conscious mind, ordering it to get a better result from the muscles. Before the mind can discuss the usefulness of this order, hit it with another rocket command of psychic force. Indy tense the muscles and go into action. If you have added weights to the bar, the mind will react with a shock or a dark foreboding of impending failure. Eliminate these forebodings immediately with a third rocket command ordering the mind to keep pushing the hands. Do not desperately try to be stronger. Calmly accept the principle that you are strong enough and let your muscles adjust to your new concept of their vigor. Put all your strength into it, 
but do it as if you had kept it in reserve until now. You will be surprised how quickly your strength will increase. Do this exercise once a week, trying not to fatigue yourself. You will get better results that way, because your muscles need more days to fully regain their strength after abnormal exertion. Exercises to develop psychic force control over muscles. Woman. Exercise 1. How to quickly acquire the grace of a model. Arrange on the bedside table a newspaper with a photograph of a model in a beautiful pose. Try to imitate the model's pose in front of a mirror. Copy her from head to toe. The twist of the body, the height of the shoulders, the position of the arms, hands and fingers, the line of the neck, the position of the head, the gaze and the smile. Exercise 2. When you are satisfied with your imitation, copy another one. Continue until you have learned four different trials very naturally. Exercise 3. Repeat the four poses quickly and deftly so that you can drag a possible spectator. When you do a new pose again, remember the exact position in which you must place each body part so that it is in harmony with the others. Be attractive and create a personality. Some of the best models have a barely passable figure, but when they pose they create a personality that stands out. They are able to do this by mastering their psychic power over the muscles of the body. Do not make any abrupt gestures and move from one pose to another just as the dancer does when dancing. These exercises are enjoyable. They enhance your charm, particularly when you are conveniently dressed for this occasion. Be weightless as if you were walking on clouds. Exercise 4. Repeat the first three exercises until you can perform them perfectly. A skirt or short pants demand great skill in leg pose. An evening gown demands skill and elegance in body pose. After gaining perfect mastery in these poses, you can go anywhere and present yourself to anyone confident that the charm of the movements will win everyone's eyes. Lesson 4. How to bring the nerve union points under the control of psychic power. In previous lectures, you were shown repeatedly that nerve junctions, or synapses, were an obstacle to the passage of messages sent from the body to the brain, as well as for messages from the brain to the body. Since virtually all nerve passages involve one or more points of union, the speed of reflexes can be delayed considerably. This lecture will teach you how to increase the speed of messages across nerve junctions and how to incredibly improve the effects of nerve messages and brain commands. Their speed of transmission is significantly slowed in nerve junctions because they must bypass the junction between the two nerve segments before they can continue on their way. The chemical nerve bridge and how it conducts messages beyond nerve junctions. The nerve junction point is where one nerve segment ends and where another segment begins. When the message reaches the end of the first segment, it stops. But the end of this segment releases a fluid, acetylcholine, that allows the message to transfer from one segment to the other, so that the second segment can carry it to its destination. Often there is a third, smaller segment between the two segments, which means there are two more conjunctions to overcome. This constitutes a 40% loss of time in the transmission of the message. The reason for this delay is that the resistance the message encounters when passing through the junctions is 12 times greater than when passing through the nerve because the nerve end must produce acetylcholine first in order for the message to be conveyed beyond the nerve junction. In addition, the nerve fiber does not fatigue, while the junction point consumes energy which increases even more the resistance the message may encounter. To send messages or orders more quickly through the nerves, you must send them more quickly beyond the junction points. You must also intensify the electricity of the nerve that sends the message. All this is necessary because accelerating messages speeds up reflexes and helps to make you think and act quickly and prolong your youth. This also enhances the power of action of psychic force and makes you able to project it onto another person with such speed that he cannot escape its influence. The Psychic Arc how to create it to reduce resistance at nerve junctions. In the laboratory, resistance at nerve junctions can be greatly reduced by stimulation of the message-carrying nerve. 
Acetylcholine is enhanced in the secretion of the first strong stimulus given to the nerve. After a short pause in, which the acetylcholine gradually dissolves, a second stimulus is given to the nerve. This time the message passes through the junction point more rapidly because some undissolved acetylcholine still remains. Before long, the nerve is stimulated for the third time. After many stimuli, the junction point retains such a large part of acetylcholine that its resistance to the next message can be reduced by one-eighth of its origin. You can achieve similar results in daily life through the psychic arc. This is the name of the process of thinking the opposite of the situation you face to counteract its effects on the conscious mind. If you are faced with a situation that disturbs you, think of something that will calm you down. But only think about it for two seconds. Stop thinking about it before the mind gets tired and returns to the reality of the original situation. After a few seconds, think of this opposite idea again, but reinforce it with rocket command of psychic force launched from the psychic force center. Continue this process until the nerve junctions are so saturated with acetylcholine that the opposite thought can rush through the junctions to the conscious mind faster than the original thought. With the exercises in this lesson, you will learn to do this with ease, which will bring rapid change to your daily life. You will learn to deal with new situations, and you will control yourself with confidence and keep a cool head in the strangest circumstances. Note, there are actually three types of psychic arc, and they will all be explained to you in this lesson. 1. The psychic arc, 2. The radiating psychic arc, 3. The deferred psychic arc. Study them thoroughly and put them into action immediately. How the psychic arc acts on nerve junction points. When you increase the speed of one of the habitual reflexes, the ends of the conditioned nerve segments secrete more acetylcholine. The mastery and rhythm acquired in a certain movement give a feeling of pleasure and satisfaction to the body and stimulate the nerves to function better, and these nerves always secrete acetylcholine when stimulated. That is why it is important for you to be calm and content in order to secrete acetylcholine. When you are frightened, the nerves secrete sympathin, and then digestion stops. The heart beats faster, pupils dilate, blood pressure rises, sugar pours from the liver into the blood, and so on. When you are calm and satisfied on the contrary, appetite and digestion are good, heart beats regularly, pupils contract, pressure is normal, and muscles relax. If you add the mastery of psychic power to your confidence and effective pacing, you can increase the digestion faculty by eight times. In other words, the psychic power on the psychic arc can increase the secretion of gastric juices eight times without the psychic arc bypassing the nerve junction points any faster. Think of how many times the psychic arc could increase the gastric juices when it bypasses the junctions more quickly. This is what the psychic arc can do when you place it under the control of psychic power. How to master a new specialty more quickly through the psychic bow. When you get ready to engage in a new specialty, fear and uncertainty assail you, and the nerve endings secrete sympathy. As a result, the entire nervous system acquires an anti acetylcholine tendency. In starting the new specialty, the nerve junctions of the muscles secrete little acetylcholine and thus work with tension and fatigue. This will decrease confidence and increase doubt. As a result, the nerves will secrete more and more sympathy. Nevertheless, if you do some good movements, you will regain confidence, and the muscles will regain rhythm and agility. But as soon as you make a new mistake, the acetylcholine will dry up again, and there will be new secretion of sympathy. The muscles will resume working with tension and fatigue. Through persevering training of hours, days, months, and years, you will arrive at mastery of a movement or specialty and dexterity in performing it. In any case, your period of refinement can be greatly reduced if you can retain the same confidence in yourself while learning a specialty. Your aim should be to adopt or retain the same masterful self-confidence when learning something new rather than when you are sure of it. You can achieve this by encouraging the nerves to secrete more acetylcholine so that the mind and muscles react more quickly to the instructions they receive. This is achieved with the help of the psychic arc controlled by psychic power. Exercise 1. 
How to learn any specialty quickly thanks to the psychic arc. Undertake any manual work. Read the instructions and follow them point by point. Whatever you do, confidence leaves you and you become mentally and physically tense. Through the psychic arc, you immediately think of a delicious dish, a steak, an ice cream, a cream. Picture it clearly before your eyes. Your muscles will relax and feel comfortable again. Concentrate on work again and tension will reappear. Then think of the favorite dish and try to resume the work, and you will find that you will perform it more and more easily. After repeating this process several times, you will be able to visualize the appetizing dish so clearly in your mind that the tension will disappear. You will acquire the aptitude to control the new work to the smallest detail. Always make use of the psychic arc. Strengthen it with the rocket commands of psychic power, and the amount of acetylcholine will quickly increase and help you learn faster. In this way, you will quickly learn any job. The stake serves only as an example. Imagine the thing that appeals to you most, and you will get the best result. Exercise 2 How to Gain People's Sympathy. The technique applies to both sexes. You can also use it on the telephone. Listen attentively to the person talking to you while you think of something pleasant. Also think of all the qualities the speaker possesses and embellish them in the mind. Stop these thoughts every two seconds and then start again by intensifying them with psychic power. To do this, imagine that the interlocutor is twice as attractive as you thought he was before. Interrupt this thought after two seconds and imagine him to be three times more attractive. Let him speak so that you focus deeply on your thoughts. Imagine the wonderful qualities you attribute to his appearance, voice and expression, and forget his flaws. Ultimately, you will soon feel a great friendship for the one who is speaking to you. A delightful feeling will spread through your body. His nerves will respond by secreting acetylcholine and he will desire your company. You will have won him over by spreading your psychic arc over him. Note, Clark Gable openly confessed that by using the thought of a good stake, he transformed at the age of 30 his insignificant career into that of the vedette of his time. Jean Harlow and Valentino did the same thing and catapulted into glory with incredible rapidity, while other great actors, who did not use this little trick of their unknown personality, were hardly ever seen by the general public and were soon forgotten. How the Psychic Arc Controls the Final Common Path Physiologically, the last segment of the nerve that carries the order to the organ is called the final common path. Many other nerves can carry at the same time different orders to this final path, but the only order that finds passage to the organ is the one that possesses the highest charge of nerve electricity. Ultimately, you can override a weaker order that has been given to an organ with another order that is stronger and more interesting. In addition, Contrary orders cannot occupy the final path simultaneously. The weaker of the two must give way to the stronger because the final path is selective. Otherwise, you would be trying all day long to do different things, and you would end up walking on all fours without doing anything productive. In order to allow the final path of any of the nerve circuits to pass welcome orders instead of undesirable ones, you must throw welcome orders at your organ with greater intensity than you use for undesirable orders. If you throw all orders with the same power, the final path will no longer know which ones to let through, and you will no longer be able to accomplish anything specific and progressive. This is a scientific fact that you must realize clearly, because it reveals to us an easy means of eliminating negative influences that can harm the body. All you have to do is to cancel these influences with a more powerful contrary command. This is what the psychic arc does for you. It can be used to overcome complexes of inferiority, depression, sadness, discouragement, shame, despair, fear, anxiety, embarrassment, or any other negative mood that threatens you in the course of an unpleasant situation. Think of the opposite. Think of a stake if you cannot think of anything else. Think realistically so as to erase the thought that oppresses you. When the two thoughts simultaneously reach the junction point of the nerves preceding the final path, the psychic arc will fill the void with more acetylcholine, and the obsessive thought will dissipate, as well as the sympathy will dissolve. 
If you immediately intensify with a psychic power command by ordering the steak to be even more delicious, the effectiveness of the psychic arc will be considerably increased. In this way, you prevent the negative thought from affecting the organ. Its influence will be nullified. If the obsessive thought will have already passed the junction of nerves before you can rush in with the psychic bow, throw the psychic bow in the final path several times in succession every two seconds, stopping a few seconds each time. Throw it ten times. This will gradually make the negative thought disappear and get it out of your mind. Sustain the attack at the end with two or three rocket commands of psychic power and this will totally annihilate the negative thought. How to employ the power of the radiating psychic arc Take hold of the incredible power of the radiating psychic arc. The body reacts to a stimulus in a specific way because not all nerve junctions offer the same resistance to an equal stimulus. When you apply a certain stimulus to the body repeatedly, a habit or conditioned reflex is created, and the stimulus will cross the junction points more easily. Nevertheless, if the intensity of the stimulus is increased to the point that it spreads throughout the nervous system, a psychic arc would form in response, and this is scientifically called irradiation. It is a radiating psychic arc. The response power of the irradiant psychic arc eludes all description. It can be used in the most diverse ways, and it is not possible to enumerate them all. Exercise How to protect yourself from the antagonism of others through the irradiant psychic arc. You have had a recent dispute with Bill Adami, and you feel that he detests you. You try to forget, but are unable to do so. There are possibilities that he wants revenge. You are in an anxious state and need to quickly get rid of the nefarious effects of his thinking. This is how you will succeed, thanks to the irradiant psychic arc. Prevent Biladami's thoughts from affecting you by preventing your nerves from producing sympathies. Think for two seconds about a dish you love dearly. Stop for two seconds and start again, intensifying the thought of the favorite dish each time until your mouth is watering. Intensify it again until your hands, feet, stomach, and neck are warm. To feel your body pleasantly warm anywhere you have to stimulate your nerves and attract blood from your skin muscles. Your body is then able to secrete acetylcholine even if your mind receives threatening messages from Bill. You will thus have developed an irradiating psychic arc against Bill's antagonistic introspection. The irradiating psychic arc is a permanent acquisition and can be used against anyone who detests you for no reason. Just imagine someone else's negative thought and nullify it with the psychic arc, and then intensify the latter seven times consecutively. How to gain invincible self-control with the secret of the deferred psychic arc. The deferred psychic arc is an amazing means of suppressing an unwanted command from the mind. Physiology admits that commands from the brain to organs can be overridden by a new command from another part of the brain. That is exactly what you do with your rocket command of psychic power when you launch it at any part of the mind, of the body to counter the orders that the conscious mind sends. And that's not all. Physiologists have found that the motor region, the region of the conscious and subconscious mind that commands the muscles, loses some of its power when stimulated assiduously. In fact, after 15 seconds of continued stimulation, the region temporarily loses all of its power. The same thing applies to psychic power, because the psychic power center is also a tissue of the brain. If you throw the psychic power command through the nerves for more than two seconds, the command will lose its effectiveness. If you continue to throw the command for more than 15 seconds, it will temporarily lose all power. Hence the need to create and apply the deferred psychic arc. Exercise, how to eliminate an undesirable habit or impulse that penetrates the mind. Here are the first 10 instructions to follow. 1. Let the undesirable habit penetrate the final common path. 2. Hold it for 15 seconds until it temporarily disappears. 3. Now cast the psychic arc at full force with the opposite thought in the final path for 2 seconds. 4. Interrupt for 2 seconds. 5. 
Throw it again for two seconds. Six. Interrupt for two seconds. Seven. Throw it for two more seconds. Eight. Interrupt again for two seconds. Nine. Launch at the last time for two seconds. Ten. Stop the operation. You have launched and stopped the psychic arc with an opposite thought four times in total. This converts it to deferred psychic arc. In conclusion, you have studied the first part of cyclomancy. Now you can understand why the primal self is the great source of hidden power of the mind and body. You already know how to use it in numerous cases of daily life. Now that you know more about the anatomy and physiology of the primal self, you will better understand how it is possible to perform miracles without supernatural powers. Lesson 5. How to put the nerve electricity of the brain and body under the control of psychic power. In this lecture you will discover how vast and dynamic is the electrical potential of the brain and body, and how, by placing it under the control of psychic power, it can be used to achieve mental and physical miracles. The Potential of Nerve Electricity You already know the hidden electrical potential in protoplasm, which naturally includes some nerve tissue. The nerve message is therefore not similar to an electric current passing through a cable. A cable simply conducts the current, while a nerve creates its own current as a message passes along its path. The cable receives energy from a battery, while nerve energy is created by the nerve itself. The potential of electric current decreases as it passes along the cable, while the electric force in the nerve remains intact along the way. An electric current travels at a speed of 372,000 km per second, while nerve electricity travels at 100 meters per second. Nerve electricity is fabricated from the flesh, one could almost say, while electricity in cables is fabricated inorganically. The Limitless Frontiers of Unsaturated Control Ligaments The muscle and sense regions of the brain have been localized, but those of the conscious and subconscious mind always remain a mystery. These vast regions are called association regions by physiologists. Each half of the brain is divided into three lobes, and each lobe contains a similar association region. In the region of association, the roots of the fibers are localized. The regions of muscles and senses in the conscious and subconscious mind are linked together in the most unthinkable ways. In fact, the brain has a huge number of small nerves that link two nerve segments together, and through which all parts of the conscious and subconscious mind are brought into contact with other parts. About 10,000 million association fibers start from the conscious and subconscious mind. The number of connections between them reaches one, followed by 15 million digits. To print this number would require the paper that was used to print 15 copies of this book. In the brain, therefore, the nerves that carry messages are linked together in the most inconceivable ways. Each of these connections reinforces in the brain a certain element of knowledge. The brain ties are never saturated because you use only one-tenth of the primitive self-consciousness. Nevertheless, you forget what you know, and the ancient brain ligaments become available to form new connections. When you are in a state of hypnosis, all the old ligaments can be reunited again, and then you can remember facts that the conscious mind had forgotten. How Brain Connections Differ Brain connections are created by the repeated crossing of the same message on the same nerve tract. They are tightly clamped in the brain, while those that do not often cross a nerve circuit are brought together weakly. You may wonder how the conscious and subconscious mind can choose between the tight and loose impressions that are in the brain. How can you remember something you have studied longer and more deeply, rather than something you have studied less deeply? The secret lies in the graduated resistance of the nerve junction points. Not all junction points are overcome with the same ease. A moderate message may be sufficient to pass through the junction point of a tight cerebral ligament, while a powerful message will be needed to pass through the junction point of a loose cerebral ligament. To put it another way, the tight cerebral ligament requires to be stimulated by a small number of nerve fibers, while the loose cerebral ligament 
needs a considerable number of fibers to be stimulated, i.e. by a considerable amount of nerve electricity. In this way, the mind chooses between tight and loose impressions. That's why you think faster, easier, and more effectively when you multiply the number of brain ties thanks to the psychic arc. How to quickly acquire a brain link for a new activity. The quickest way to acquire a brain bond is the way of reinforcing knowledge in the conscious and subconscious mind. The basis of knowledge memory, personality change, influence on others, and conception of projects is based on the creation of brain ligaments that you can rely on. As you develop primitive self-awareness, you form at the same time a new set of brain connections. The quick way to acquire a brain ligament is to saturate its mind after it has bypassed the nerve junction. The following exercise teaches you how to do this. Exercise. Suppose you have learned a new trade, thanks to the psychic arc. Instead of thinking about something else and relaxing, sit down all alone and delve into the problem. Mentally, redo point by point the whole process that the mind performs by throwing orders through the junction points of the nerves it passes through to reach the organs affected by this activity. Repeat this several times until the subconscious mind participates in the process with the conscious spirit. A few hours later, when you have nothing particular to do, repeat the exercise, but add a psychic power check each time. Whenever you launch the command, you also launch a rocket command of psychic power. Since, without any doubt, you make use of the eyes, launch a special command of psychic power to the eyes. Repeat this launch for several minutes until you do it quickly with the brain. Launch the rockets only after a two-minute interval. You will thus have formed a new brain link and have reinvigorated new activity in the mind. How to place personality under the control of psychic power. As has been demonstrated in the laboratory, the brain's zone of silence gives you the power to predict and critically evaluate yourself. These combined qualities make you virtually unbeatable in anything you undertake. When you make a critical evaluation of yourself and can identify your possibilities, you can make wise decisions. If you also harness the power of foresight, you can critically evaluate the future without error and prepare yourself to take advantage of the best opportunities that come your way and avoid setbacks. But the psychic power center also contains negative elements that can cancel out its benefits. That is why lobectomy is sometimes practiced on the mentally ill. It is practiced because the silence area of the brain torments the sick person by giving him an impressionable, complex personality with excessive emotional impulses, fear, despair, and hypochondria. After lobectomy, the ablation of their frontal brain, the sufferer feels relieved of anxiety and chronic depression. His state of dread, despair, or melancholy gives way to a sense of well-being, and he is at ease. Do not marvel at the inconveniences that the silence zone of the brain can cause. The amazing qualities it provides you with demand a sensitive personality. But sensitivity, unfortunately, increases tension and leads to fear which, in turn, generates excessive emotional impulses such as despair. The result is melancholy. However, the lobectomy patient has lost the power to evaluate himself critically and becomes impassive and insensitive. This gives him inner peace, but does not help him improve himself. Nor will he ever be able to develop primitive self-consciousness if he is insensitive to psychic phenomena. Your goal is to derive the greatest benefit from the zone of silence, and you will achieve this through the following exercises. Exercise 1. How to critically evaluate yourself and make the best of it. You have just had the experience of an unpleasant encounter with Francis, or Francesca, depending on your gender. When you are left alone, the hypersensitive psychic power center bombards the conscious mind with a discouraging list of your mistakes and judges your conduct with a rigor that the mind does not conceive. Then the psychic power center insinuates into the conscious mind fear, despair, and melancholy that can degenerate into excessive anxiety or chronic depression. You must expel these ideas as soon as possible with a rocket command ordering them to disappear into space. From this moment, let the conscious mind judge the encounter while retaining the memory of the different reasons offered by the psychic power center. 
Whenever the psychic power center tries to influence you, chase it back into space. After that you will be more willing to reconcile with Francis when you meet him and win him back. You will thus have banished the fear, despair, and melancholy that plagued you. Act the same way in any unfavorable situation. Exercise 2. How to develop the faculty of foresight and make the best use of it. You are preparing to face an important test in life. It may be an examination, a marriage proposal, a request for a salary increase, or you are trying to persuade an influential person to help you in achieving your goal. The mind then calls for help from the psychic power center, since the latter is the one that possesses the faculty of foresight. The psychic power center sends the mind a mass of possibilities from which the mind must choose. These possibilities make you sensitive, fearful, overexcitable, because they present the future to you from different angles. But the psychic power center also gives you the faculty of intuition to help you choose the right path. But you find yourselves confused, indecisive, and bewildered. By means of a rocket command, you chase all these possibilities away from you and order them to disappear into space. Then let the conscious mind evaluate its own findings. From this moment on, rationally judge your capabilities and prospects for the future, not forgetting the possibilities that the psychic power center has submitted to your attention. Remember especially what the intuition of psychic power recommends most to you. Such insight frequently turns into prophecy because the psychic power center is in contact with the future archives of the earth. Make a thorough study of this particular possibility before making a decision. How to bring the nervous electricity of muscles under the control of psychic power. As a result of experiments, it was found that the arm, for example, when not needed, has the muscles in a resting state and the nerves are not electrified. In this state, the muscles are relatively alkaline. On occasion, however, a sudden change occurs. Muscles become relatively acidic and nerves become magnetized. Nerve electricity now circulates in bursts from the brain to the arm to direct and control its action. What causes this sudden change? A simple command from the brain to make the hand move. This mental phenomenon is powerful enough to change the relative alkalinity of the muscles to a relative acidity. In other words, the brain orders the liver to put glycogen into the muscles to provide them with enough energy to perform the required action. Here is the reason why the alkalinity of the muscles changes to acidity. The arm now goes into action. When it returns to its resting state, the muscles become alkaline again, because they no longer receive glycogen from the liver, while the accumulated products, lactic acid mainly, are absorbed by the blood. What can be deduced from this? It can be concluded that an order given by the brain causes chemical and electrical changes in the body. This knowledge can be used very effectively in current life, as the following exercise shows. Exercise 1. How to make someone happy with an electrified handshake. Gustavo Denti seems to be angry with the whole world. You cannot avoid him because you meet him every day. He may even be your neighbor. The easiest way to tame him is with the electrified handshake. The moment you catch sight of Gus, breathe deeply and fill yourself with electrons. Gather this charge in the psychic power center. At the same time, operate the psychic arc to feel happy and thus retain the electrons. When you meet Gus, smile and hold out your hand to him. The moment you shake it, give him an explosive discharge by means of a psychic power command. For this part of the exercise, train yourself until the electron charge is so powerful that it shakes your hand. Gus will feel as if he has been injected with a charge of delicious energy. His capillaries will relax and decrease his tension, and you will have quickly won him over. It is clear that many phenomena and sensations that cannot be explained otherwise can be justified through bioelectricity. Exercise 2. How to invigorate yourself when you feel discouraged and shabby. At certain times when the weather conditions depress you, or after discouraging sentimental disappointments, you experience a rapid loss of electrons. A tension occurs in the body, and you are apt to overindulge in drinking and eating or to quarrel with those who are not at fault. 
The quickest means of restoring the body to its electron balance is to appeal to the electron restorer. To create the electron restorer, imagine that the most beautiful dream you can have in life is about to come true. The conquest of a person you desire, the promotion you hope for, the achievement for which you have fought the hardest, or the overcoming of the pain that plagues you the most. Visualize this dream so clearly that it may seem true to you down to the smallest detail. Reinforce this image with a rocket command of psychic power. Direct the flare into the conscious mind by commanding it to give you more details of this representation so that it becomes even more convincing. How to establish the balance between the body's electricity and that of the atmosphere. In the study of bioelectricity, it was found that a healthy body registers a negative electric charge, but that a sick body reports a positive electric charge. When the body registers a negative electric charge, you supply energy. When it registers a positive electric charge, you absorb energy. Electrons are found free in the air and have a negative charge. The body, depending on your state of health, either absorbs electrons or repels them. Since there is a stable loss of electrons, or electricity from the Earth to the atmosphere, about 18,000 amperes per hour, 4,000 thunderstorms must occur at the same time on the Earth's surface to equalize this loss. During a thunderstorm, the magnetic field is more often negative than positive, and a negative current flows toward the Earth. Rain, as well as lightning, restores the loss of the Earth's electricity. That is, there is a continuous exchange of electricity between the Earth's surface and the atmosphere, which causes considerable variations in atmospheric electricity, affecting the state of health. In fact, when the weather is nice one is generally more cheerful and confident, in the imminence of thunderstorms, or when the bad weather lasts for a long time, one feels depressed and is prone to ailments, mostly due to the weakening caused by the loss of electrons. Then it benefits to turn to the electron restorer, who can remedy the unfavorable weather conditions by restoring with electron charge the vitality, optimism, and confidence that are indispensable for success? How to control people with nervous electricity When two healthy people meet and shake hands, there is no electric current between them. Both are negatively charged. But when two individuals meet, one of whom is assertive and aggressive, and the other retarded and shy, the shy one is telepathically cancelled out by the aggressive one, whose negative electrical charge is significantly higher. Fear, terror, inferiority, submissiveness, sadness, breathlessness cause great losses of electrons, and sometimes they are so great that you feel cold and get sick quickly. You are then positively charged. This explains the amazing possibilities of treating psychosomatic illnesses by channeling the necessary electrons onto the sick person with the application of the hands. Confidence, happiness, contentment and similar states fill a person with more electrons than usual and can even make him recover from an illness. Lesson 6. How to Multiply Energy Through Psychic Power Energy can be multiplied. You can start training by running around a group of houses. The first time you will get tired. Train until you run ten times in a row without feeling more tired than when you ran once. You will then have multiplied your energy by 10. The need for stimulatory breathing. The body needs many different substances to stay alive, but its first and constant need is for oxygen. The continuous supply of oxygen and the constant elimination of carbon dioxide depend on blood circulation and respiration. Any interference in blood circulation increases fatigue. It happens, for example, in your leg muscles when you stand for too long. The more you fatigue, the more your efficiency decreases. You will then need periods of rest so that your performance does not suffer. Since you need all your energy when you are about to perform a psychic phenomenon, you can understand why you need to be fully rested before you begin. Your circulation and respiration must function at their maximum in order for you to achieve the best results in psychic phenomena. How stimulating breathing helps the conscious mind. The respiratory center is a set of nerve cells in the brainstem that sends impulses to the breathing muscles. 
Deep breathing done in a moment of fear or nervousness calms your breathlessness and restores calmness in you. When you breathe deeply, you relax the air sacs in your lungs, and the relaxation causes a stream of messages that are launched to the respiratory center in the brain. These messages lower the activity of the respiratory center and reduce the frequency of the commands launched to the diaphragm and other muscles of the respiratory system, which decreases breathlessness and normalizes the respiratory rhythm. How to breathe deeply and slowly. To get the best benefit from regular deep breathing, accompany it with regular exercise, such as walking. When you breathe deeply for more than two minutes at a time while sitting, standing, or lying down without moving, you expel an abnormal amount of carbonic acid from the blood. But the blood requires a certain degree of acidity before it can stimulate the respiratory center in order to cause breathing. That is why alkalosis stops breathing for a minute or two until the blood becomes sufficiently acidic again to provide the stimulus for breathing. In addition, severe alkalosis is accompanied by muscle cramps and increased secretion of alkaline salts. If you breathe deeply, doing rhythmic exercise, the alkalosis disappears. Lactic acid and other acids are then formed in the blood, which turns into carbonic acid that acidifies the blood. It is therefore preferable to perform breathing exercises while walking in the fresh air. The Benefits of Deep Breathing Deep breathing causes great benefits when the body is in a state of rest. The resulting alkalosis gives you a short stopping period of breathing that gives the body a time frame to rest completely after the respiratory effort. This helps you overcome fatigue more quickly. Therefore, learn to breathe deeply when the body is relaxed, that is, practice horizontal ozone. The horizontal ozone, how to recover energy quickly when you are fatigued. When you are fatigued, immediately stretch on your backs to reduce the rate of breathing. Breathing becomes slower and deeper. To fill your lungs with air, stretch the soles of your feet on the bed or floor with your knees flexed. In this position, you stretch your abdominal muscles and thus can fill your lungs to bursting. Now imagine that inside your chest is a large empty circular tube that you want to fill with air. Suck in normally and begin to fill it starting at the bottom. Suck in again and fill it higher in the chest region. Finally, inhale completely and fill it up to the shoulders and neck. Now, of course, exhale. Repeat the horizontal ozone five or six times, fully oxygenating the blood. Finally, stretch completely for 20 seconds before standing up. Exercise. If you are on an empty stomach, lie down and practice the horizontal ozone. There will be a good reason every day to practice it. If you can, stretch without moving for half an hour on your back. The Zembla. How to recover energy quickly when you are exhausted. If you cannot use the horizontal ozona and are at the end of your strength, use the zembla. Exercise 1. Stand with legs wide apart and toes pointing outward. Bend your knees and project forward, resting your hands on your knees to support the weight of your body. In this position, your abdominal muscles are stretched to their fullest and allow your lungs to fill completely. In this way, you get a large amount of oxygen to nourish the tissues that were lacking. Lack of oxygen is a normal accident for athletes and anyone who performs heavy activity. In such cases, you must get as much oxygen as possible to conserve your energy. Now breathe very deeply. With each deep inspiration, fill your chest to your neck with air, and soon you will be breathing normally, whatever the previous effort was. Then rest. Stay in the same position for 8 or 10 seconds, then get up and walk around. The Zembla is truly a magical vivifier that will restore your vitality when you are exhausted as a result of painful exertion. How Zembla Increases the Potential of Your Strength With the Zembla you store a large amount of electrons. This is very useful for healing a psychosomatic illness, as it is for any psychic power activity. Practice it to increase the volume of the rib cage, or to increase vital capacity, as physiologists call it. To practice it, go out for a walk, even running if you can. Or stay in the yard and do deep push-ups with your knees. 
To do this movement, stand with your legs wide apart, heels six inches apart, toes outward. Do many push-ups until you are exhausted. Then stop, bend forward and do the zimbla. Inhale as deeply as possible and expand the lungs and rib cage to the limit. By doing this exercise every day, several times you will increase vital capacity. Thanks to the Zembla, you can store electrons like a battery stores electricity. You will also strengthen psychic power and all parts of the body, including the brain. How to acquire exceptional physical stamina. By walking at a speed of five miles per hour, you increase oxygen consumption by about eight times and carbon dioxide production by about nine times. The increase in oxygen consumption is made possible by 1. The increased circulation of blood in the lungs. 2. Deeper breathing due to exertion. 3. From the fact that you breathe about seven times more air than when you rest. These three factors increase in proportion to exertion fatigue. During great muscular exertion, you can get up to 11 times the normal inhalation. Such an inhalation evidently lasts only a few seconds. Nevertheless, you can maintain this abnormal inhalation of air longer during exercises if you breathe deeply and regularly. Otherwise, you dissipate considerable energy in the course of strenuous physical exercises because you breathe fast and your heart beats abnormally. But you can effectively control these two physiological changes by means of zembla and ozona. In this way, yoga masters can preserve their form during long runs of up to 60 kilometers. How to use Zembla to delay aging. Vital capacity is the volume of air you exhale as forcefully as possible after a full inhalation. This is the total amount of mobile air in the lungs. The vital capacity of 200 students ranges from 2,500 to 6,000 cubic centimeters. From birth to maturity, the vital capacity gradually increases, but the costal cartilages become stiff and decrease over the years your vital capacity. This decreases your aptitude for performing manual labor, which is painful as you age. Zembla is amazingly resistant to this weakening of vital capacity and can therefore delay aging. Body position is an important factor in stimulatory breathing, because if you have a vital capacity of 4.3 liters when standing, when lying down, it is reduced to 0.68 liters. This is the reason why the Zembla lets more air into the lungs of the horizontal ozone. Zembla also affects the thoracic index. Thoracic index is the ratio of chest depth to chest width. A flatter and wider chest is less prone to tuberculosis, bronchitis, and other lung diseases. Zembla, by powerfully inflating the chest in all senses, equalizes its size. It increases its depth when it is too flat and its width when it is too narrow. This also retards aging. The indestructibility of thinking energy. We quote the Damapta, everything we are is the result of what we have thought. In other words, modify your thoughts and you will be different. Learn how to use mind and psychic power and you will become different. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. This includes thought, past events, etc. Energy is simply transferred into another form of energy. Consider the example of a material object. Let us pick up a book on the floor and place it on a table. During the performance of this gesture, the motion energy obtained by the arm is transferred into its positional potential energy. This energy is kept latent in the book. It is the positional potential energy because the earth, with its force of attraction, attracts the book. The motion energy of the arm overcame the force of gravity when it picked up the book on the ground and put it on the board. If the board is taken off, the potential energy of position is changed to kinetic energy of motion, and the book falls to the ground. When the book touches the ground, its kinetic energy of motion is changed to sound and heat energy. This also applies to thought. Thought energy, brain waves is never destroyed it, is only transformed into other different energies. Note, in 1929, Berger discovered that conscious and subconscious mind activity was associated, like muscles and nerves, with changes in nerve electricity. 
These electrical changes or brain waves were revealed by the encephalogram. The distinctive signs of each individual's brain waves also varied with the position according to which the electrodes were applied in relation to the lobes of the brain. During sleep, brain waves become slower and irregular. In certain pathological conditions of the brain, epilepsy, tumors, etc., abnormal rhythms are noticed in the brain waves. You will know more if you read this book carefully. How to Conserve Body Electricity by Body Bolt The body, as negatively charged, is constantly losing electrons in the air and in everything it touches, including the ground. This is a normal process, and the body is always producing more electricity to replace the lost electricity. Nevertheless, when you are not feeling well or nervous, or inferior to someone the body loses more electricity than it produces, and you begin to feel weak. This is why an inferiority complex is so depressing. To delay this loss of electricity or even stop it, give your body the bolt. Bring your hands together or place one foot on top of the other. You will thus retain your body heat, and the normal temperature keeps your body's electricity constant. This is one of the reasons why you feel strong and confident when your temperature is regular. Lesson 7. How to Never Feel Fatigued. How to Keep Fit. Lack of muscle exercise can cause muscle adhesions and create fat deposits. This is an important reason to do muscle exercises regularly. Rhythmic exercises that last for a long time and stretch the muscles completely are the ones that will stop muscle adhesions, dissolve fat, and strengthen the heart. Exercises that fatigue cannot be endured for long. Cyclomantics is not a bodybuilding course. Our recommendations will be limited to the kind of exercise with which you are already familiar. If you are young, lift weights, swim vigorously, run doggedly. It is ideal for using muscles rhythmically, strengthening respiratory muscles, and increasing blood circulation through the lungs. If you are less young, these same exercises performed with less doggedness will suffice. Rhythmic motion and cycling are suitable for middle-aged people of both sexes. If you do not exercise, walk at least an hour a day, but never stand longer than necessary. When you walk, breathe deeply. Preserve a slim figure. Do some ring exercises and stretch your spine every day. Feel young and light of body, and this will affect your spirit. Complex static exercises are not advisable. Leave them to yoga adepts. The importance of muscle tone. Muscle tone is of great importance for physical health and psychic power. It fills you with confidence, and without confidence, you will have no psychic power. If you place muscle tone under the control of psychic power, you will never be fatigued. When muscles are in a state of rest, they are often not fully relaxed. Rather, they are in a state of slight contraction, which prevents them from relaxing. The meseter and temporalis muscles, Jaw muscles are excellent examples of this. What is it that creates muscle tone? It is created by the steady current of nerve electricity flowing down from the brain and spinal cord to the muscles. When the nerve that feeds the muscle is cut, the muscle sags. All muscles exhibit some degree of tone. But tone is especially pronounced in anti-gravity muscles, that is, those that hold your position. In general, they are the outer muscles of the lower limbs, trunk, and neck. This is why standing is more tiring than walking. When you walk, you contract and stretch your leg muscles with each step. But when you stand, your leg muscles remain partially contracted the whole time. Cold weather invigorates you, while hot and humid weather afflicts you with a sense of fatigue. This is due to the fact that you gain or lose muscle tone. Let us now see how muscle tone affects your state of mind and overall feeling of vigor and ambition. You can also decrease muscle tone at will to stock up on energy for psychic power. How the body creates muscle tone. When the tendon of a muscle in the body, the biceps, is pulled by gravity or by the contraction of a muscle that pulls in the opposite direction, the triceps, the biceps contracts and resists extension. But tendon extension also stimulates the biceps, 
and sends a message to the spinal cord. The message, without going to the brain, stops at the medulla, which sends a command to the biceps to contract more. When the biceps tendon is stretched long enough and the resulting contraction is long enough, you have what is called muscle tone. When you stand up after a long rest, your calf muscles are small and soft and become big and hard again when you are standing. After standing for a while, your calves get even bigger and harder. This shows that muscle tone comes and goes without special effort on your part. An empty stomach increases muscle tone by granting it more blood to fill the muscles, since it is not used to assimilate digested food. However, hunger reduces muscle tone, like an overfull stomach that withdraws too much blood from the muscles to do digestion and assimilation. To achieve better performance, you must engage on an empty stomach, but not hungry. Note, it is true that scholars have shown that some individuals perform better in athletics when the stomach is partially full. But this is only true for individuals who have a very high metabolic rate and, consequently, digest quickly. On the other hand, physiologists have found that doing exercises on a full stomach demands about 8% more effort from the heart. Exercising on a full stomach therefore fatigues the heart. It is therefore advisable to start exercises at least one and a half hours after meals and not to prolong them for more than two and a quarter hours. How to prolong muscle tone to never be tired. It cannot be said that muscle tone defeats fatigue because the biceps is partially contracted during an exertion and therefore cannot fatigue. Such reasoning would be contrary to theories of muscle fiber contraction. But here is what actually happens. Only a few fibers of your biceps contract entirely during exertion, and when these are fatigued, it is others that contract. Nevertheless, the more the muscle is tensed, the greater the number of fibers it contracts, and the more intense its muscle tone. Muscle tone is highly influenced by the state of mind. When you are happy and hopeful, your facial muscles are toned, your shoulders erect, and your gait firm. When you are worried, your face is scarred and you look tired. The same thing happens to animals. If you are about to make an effort that demands considerable physical endurance, you can delay fatigue by keeping muscle tone at the right point. You will achieve this by firing a rocket of psychic power at the conscious mind, assuring it that you are capable of doing this work. The conscious mind will immediately stretch some fiber of the affected muscles so that they regain some of their energy. The stronger the command, the more energy you will regain. Exercises to prolong muscle tone through control of psychic power. Exercise 1. If you have a healthy heart, do some running around a block, and when you feel fatigued, throw a flare of psychic power at the conscious mind, ordering it not to fatigue. Then resort to the psychic arc by thinking of something else, and forget that you are really fatigued. Immediately, the nerve fibers in your muscles will relax, and you will regain strength entirely. Exercise 2. As you regain your strength, Continue doing the exercise and take one more lap when you are fatigued at the same gait. Exercise 3. Repeat exercise 2. But at the end, don't stop suddenly, but do one more half run. Then do another half lap running, thinking that you are not tired at all, or thinking of something completely different. At the end of the exercises, bend forward to do the Zembla. These exercises not only strengthen the heart, but are excellent for developing muscle tone control. They can be used for swimming, skating, stair climbing, very, lifting weights, weight reduction, and all exercises that can fatigue you in a relatively short time. How to overcome hindrance through selective control of muscle tone. Selective control of muscle tone is valuable to you because it can help you overcome undesirable psychic habits. The physical cause of awkwardness is due to a discards of muscle tone between the flexion and extension muscles of the parts used in this movement. Try to do a certain movement and not do it at the same time. You must learn to choose the necessary muscle tone for the muscles you wish to use, but at the same time, to retain the muscle tone of those you do not wish to use. Exercise 1. How to choose specific muscle tone. 
Try to do, in your room, something you are always afraid to do. Try, for example, to carry a saucer full of water across the room without spilling a drop. You will find yourself making too much effort at first, shaking and stumbling. In order not to spill the water, throw a rocket command of psychic power to the muscle coordination center, commanding it to relax all the muscles used, except those affected by the effort. Also help yourself by relaxing the muscles in your hands and arms. You will immediately cease to tremble and quietly carry the saucer to the other side of the room. Exercise 2 Start exercise 1 again with other dexterity experiments that you do not know how to do well. This will take away any fears and accustom the mind to cooperate in you, avoiding new fears in the new specialties you are trying to learn. The Secret of Miraculous Muscle Endurance A nerve fiber never fatigues because it rapidly demagnetizes after a message is passed over its entire extent. Nevertheless, a muscle becomes fatigued by accumulating intermediate or end products, such as carbonic acid, lactic acid, acid phosphates, etc. And when it fatigues, it loses a lot of protoplasmic irritability, a lot of aptitude to transmit messages, and a lot of strength to contract. Also, when it becomes fatigued, it contracts and relaxes more slowly. Thus, it does not get to stretch to its full length before contracting again and consequently remains in contraction. This is a precursor sign of fatigue. To avoid muscle fatigue, you must prevent the accumulation of fatigue substances in the exercising muscle, and you must provide it with energy-generating materials. Normally, deep breathing eliminates most of the fatigue substances, and the kidneys and sweat glands eliminate the rest. But the lungs and kidneys cannot eliminate these substances fast enough when you do overly strenuous exercises. Therefore, they accumulate, and you are tired and exhausted. To increase the endurance of your muscles, you have to overcome fatigue at the junctions of nerves. Exercise 3. How to recover energy quickly when you are fatigued. If you are doing any kind of work and feel really exhausted, it means that your muscles are soaked in products that increase fatigue, and the nerve junctions are obstructed by sympathetine. Any movement made in this state feels exhausting to you. You feel heavy and clumsy. Reflexes are slack because the nerve junctions are flooded with sympathy. Actually, the muscles are not as fatigued as they seem. Only new stimuli cannot reach them easily. If stimuli could get past the nerve junctions faster, the reflexes of the muscles would be accelerated. You can remedy this situation by eliminating the abnormal accumulation of sympathetine with the irradiating psychic arc combined with stimulating breathing. Think of a good steak and intensify its realistic image until it spreads throughout the body. Immediately afterwards, breathe deeply while continuing your action and saturate the body with electrons. Then launch a rocket command of psychic power to all the muscles ordering them to be as strong as at the beginning of the action. They will instantly obey the command, and you will feel as if reborn. You must then rid the muscles of fatigue products, or they will continue to feel tired. Here are three ways to do this. Three ways to rid muscles of accumulated fatigue products. If you can eliminate fatigue products from your muscles, you will never be tired. Evidently, this is impossible, but it can be achieved to a certain degree. 1. First, a giant rib cage must be created. One must provide the venous blood in the lungs with as much oxygen as possible. It is necessary to start at age 15 or 16, doing breathing exercises at least one hour a day. In this way, you can increase your chest size by 10 centimeters in six months and 17 centimeters in one year, and 32 centimeters in 10 years. With such a rib cage, one can fill the lungs and oxygenate the blood with amazing rapidity and promptly get rid of carbon dioxide. Two, second, by overcoming the recovery of muscle tone, the muscles can be fully stretched between contractions. Three, by mastering muscle rhythm, the body in action possesses perfect mastery of movements so that breathing and its movements work in concert, allowing it to get rid of fatigue substances as they are formed. Unless the muscle is injured, it will not become fatigued if it does not accumulate fatigue products, 
and if it receives the necessary energy generating matters. These three methods will now be explained to you in detail so that you can learn them and never be practically fatigued. One method. The wonders of breathing that delays fatigue. The capacity of the lungs varies in a normal person from 2,500 to 6,000 cubic cm. The athlete, however, due to a rib cage one-sixth larger than normal, has a vital capacity of at least 7,000 cubic cm. If a normal person has a vital capacity of 4,000 cubic cm, it is clear that the athlete's lungs have better oxygenation with a capacity of 7,000 cubic cm. Because of this increased breathing power, the athlete greatly increases the atmospheric pressure in the lungs. This increased pressure sends even more oxygen into the blood and thus expels more carbon dioxide. When you walk at a speed of 5 miles per hour, you increase the amount of air you breathe, which is about 7 liters per minute to almost 50 liters. The maximum amount of air available in the lungs per minute is 80 liters per minute for men and 50 for women. Such breathing cannot be maintained for more than a few seconds. But the athlete who develops his rib cage about 30% more than that of an average man can make at least 114 liters of air available in his lungs per minute. Moreover, thanks to his developed respiratory muscles, he can take this extra air much longer than normal. That is why he can perform miracles of physical endurance. In addition, by breathing so deeply, it retains body heat for a relatively long time. As a result, it requires less fuel to fuel the body. This is why it can withstand freezing temperatures. The pores of the skin close tightly to retain body heat, and by breathing deeply, it needs less fuel to warm the body. Exercise how to develop a huge rib cage with the seated zembla. The seated zembla is the best means of developing a huge rib cage. It is similar to the original zembla, except that you apply it while sitting. Deep breathing exercises practiced while standing are not the best means of developing the rib cage. In such a position, the abdominal muscles are tight and pull the ribs downward. Therefore, Practice sitting Zembla every morning and evening for about half an hour. If possible, do a little exercise before doing the Zembla, such as running or doing deep push-ups, so as to avoid alkalosis. Note. At any age, you can widen the rib cage with the sitting Zembla. With the Zembla, you will develop breathing muscles that will become stronger, raising the ribs and keeping them in a higher position even in a resting state. The time you devote to the Zembla is an important factor. Anyone at any age, if they are healthy, can do the Zembla and thus increase the rib cage. The great advantage of sitting Zembla is that it allows you to more easily fill the roots of the lungs that extend upward to the shoulders, as well as to the base on the diaphragm. All this increases the total capacity of the lungs even more. By stretching the spine repeatedly when you inhale doing the Zembla, you straighten the back and increase the height noticeably. Two method, how to excel in muscle tone recovery. By excelling in muscle tone recovery, you conserve your energy and increase your stamina. Do this with the conscious and subconscious mind. When a muscle sends a message to request muscle tone and reaches the first nerve junction point in the spinal cord, it encounters orders from the conscious and subconscious mind that can increase or decrease the tonic discharge that promotes passage to another nerve junction point. Evidently, you can increase either of these effects by means of the rocket's commands of psychic power sent to the second junction point. Muscle tone recovery is necessary to increase physical endurance because after having your muscles repeat the same movement for some time, the affected muscles end up suffering from cramping. Your endurance will last the longer, the more you can delay cramping. Those who are masters of psychic power practically have gained control of the psychic power over the paralyzing centers of muscle tone in the conscious and subconscious mind and can relax so well after using the muscles that it is virtually impossible for them to feel fatigued. The muscles relax completely after each contraction, whatever the number of movements made. In this way, he avoids fatigue. Exercises to develop muscle tone. Exercise 1. Lift a weight or do a pull-up at a fixed bar. If you are over middle age and not in excellent health, 
Sit down and lift your arms up above your shoulders. Start this movement again until you feel tired. Do not do this while standing. Cyclomancy stubbornly opposes standing when it is not absolutely necessary. When you lower your arms, stretch out completely. Do not let your arms come down slowly or suddenly. As fatigue increases, it becomes more difficult for you to fully stretch out each time you lower your arms, and a feeling of fatigue oppresses you with each repeated movement. Then send Flair's commands of psychic power to your mind to relax the thickened muscles in your arms, and at the same time, imagine them stretching. When you raise your arms, do so with the least dissipation of energy. After a while you will find it difficult to raise them or, at least you will have that feeling. Repeat the exercise every other day for at least a week. Then move on to exercise two. Exercise two. Start exercise one again, but sending a rocket command to the mind from the beginning to have the weight of the arms lifted with minimal energy consumption, while maintaining the speed up before. Do this exercise with less effort than exercise one. This forces the mind to discourage the creation of excessive muscle tone and opposition to any effort. Repeat this exercise for one week. Exercise three. Combine exercises one and two. Relax and discourage the formation of excessive muscle tone from the beginning to the end of the exercise. You will find that your endurance in doing the exercise is greatly increased. In addition, the control of muscle tone is also greatly increased. Exercise four. Start again with exercises one, two, and three, running or doing deep knee push-ups or another exercise you are used to. They will give you exceptional control of muscle tone and improve the condition of your heart, provided your doctor clears you to do this exercise. Exercises to control heart muscle tone. Exercise one. Do any exercise that leaves you transfixed. Then, while leaning forward, inflate your lungs to the maximum and send a rocket command of psychic power to the heart so that it relaxes and returns to its normal volume. The Zembla, by faster supplying the heart with the oxygen it needs, helps it decelerate and quickly recover its normal volume. In addition, the rocket command of psychic power prevents it from maintaining excessive muscle tone and allows it to relax even faster. Exercise 2 Now, as you vigorously perform an exercise in fatigue, send a rocket command of psychic power to the heart to slow its beats and shrink back to its normal volume. As you do this exercise, take deep rhythmic inhalations. Exercise 3 Start exercise 2 again, but send a rocket command of psychic power to the heart to beat a little faster to supply the muscles with more blood and oxygen. Deepen all these exercises so that you can control your heart's muscle tone, beats and volume during physical or emotional fatigue. This will help you avoid a heart attack. Use the rocket command of psychic power to control it, and you will help it live longer. Exercises to control muscle tone at will. Exercise 1. When you get up in the morning and feel weak and tired, immediately send a rocket command of psychic power to the conscious mind, ordering the body to feel fit. At first you will not get great results, but it is necessary to persist. After a while you will be surprised to find that your muscles will be hard and strong as the command rockets of psychic power grow in power. Exercise 2 Begin exercise 1 again, but strip your muscle tone by sending yourself successive rocket commands to feel tired and weak throughout your body. Later, regain your muscle tone by sending yourself a second rocket command to become fit again and feel your body transformed. Practice this exercise until you lose and regain muscle tone at will, even while sitting or lying down. Note. The accumulation of lactic acid in the muscles causes them to react less vividly and pushes the nerves that feed it into a state of lethargy. To be in the best of mental and physical strength, it is preferable for the blood to remain rather alkaline. You will achieve this by doing the zembla sitting every morning for five minutes and the horizontal ozone lying down. 3. Method How to have mastery of muscle rhythm 
Muscle rhythm is about perfecting the coordination of the muscles and the physical activity in which you are engaged. The amount of energy the body saves in this way is incredible. You know that more powerful braking is needed when you want to brake the car suddenly than when you brake progressively. Muscular rhythm consists of making the movements of an action with such perfect precision that you soon form cerebral links of these movements in the subconscious mind. These backup govern the coordination center of the muscles and synchronize the muscles you employ so that they can act in unison with minimal energy dissipation. Accomplish this by forming a kind of psychic union between the resisting and stabilizing muscles. If you run or ride a bicycle, for example, move your legs at the same speed and with the same force by repeating this movement without stopping, so that the leg and body muscles agree to repeat the same effort at the same time and with the same dispersion of energy. Runners do this for most of the run. They change their pace only when they slow down suddenly or when they set off quickly. But if they still have a distance to go, they pick up their pace again to make up for the energy lost during the change of speed. The same is true for all other sports or activities in which you need a long enough time to create fatigue, exhaustion or exhaustion, and which demand constant activity. Swimming, tennis, marching, mountaineering, typing, singing, dancing, gardening, driving, etc. Exercise. When you embark on any action that fatigues you, 1. Immediately relax the face, eyebrows, jaws, and lips. These always contract reflexively when you undertake an action that demands prolonged use of the muscles. The relaxed face will force other muscles to do the same. 2. Keep your face relaxed and continue your physical activity. Do each movement with the least expenditure of energy. But do it correctly, because this allows you to do more with less effort. Keep your back, arms, and legs erect, and your tongue and neck relaxed. 3. Repeat each movement in exactly the same way. This will greatly economize your energy. Don't be misled by imagination or by a few shifts. 4. Each repeated movement must be performed at the same time each time. This is possible when you repeat exactly the same movement each time. Do not try to go faster or slow down. Do exactly the same thing each time with your face fully extended. This will prevent you from speeding up, because when you speed up, you instinctively contract your face. 5. Continue now, feeling that the body has adopted a satisfactory filtered rhythm, and do not change it, no matter what happens on your path. Ignore outward influences, such as noises, smells, conversations. 6. Follow these tests exactly as they are described for each physical activity, and you will apply muscle rhythm in a lasting way. They will provide sufficient time for the blood vessels to evacuate the accumulating products of fatigue before they are stored. Conclusion These are the three methods of rapidly eliminating fatigue accumulating products. Apply them seriously, and you will get an amazing increase in your physical endurance. You are now ready to assimilate the third part, external cyclomantics, in which you will learn to project out of the body all the forces accumulated in it. Lecture 8. How to use the wonderful power of brain antennae, or horns of the brain. Physiology of brain horns and their magnetism. The horns of the brain comprise the fifth part of the primitive self-consciousness. It is for the projection of psychic force outside the body. The horns of the brain consist mainly of the optic nerves, the retina, and the inner covering of the eyeballs. The optic nerve is not merely a nerve. Rather, it is a collection of nerve fibers from different regions within the brain. And the retina to which the optic nerve leads does not resemble any other organ of the senses. According to leading anatomists, it is a true outgrowth of the brain or a true autonomic nerve center. Some of the optic nerve fibers originate completely within the brain and from their past to the retina. They are believed to control the photographic capacity of the retina. Other optic nerve fibers are born in the retina and extend into the brain. These directly affect the eye itself. When light enters the eye, it stops on the retina and causes, among other things, changes in its nerve electricity. 
In this electrical circuit, the cornea is the positive plus pole, and the optic nerve is the negative pole. A series of waves are produced on the electroretinogram when light penetrates inside the eye. When the outer and inner surfaces of the eye make contact, retina and cornea, a stable current is created. A current is also determined when one electrode is applied to the outside of the eye and the other electrode to any moist surface of the body. In other words, the eye is always ready to conduct electrical discharges to the brain or any other part of the body. The message-carrying nerves of the retina are intimately associated with the junction points of nerves in the brain and body. The retina is a true autonomic nerve center and reacts to stimulus as such. It can transfer out of the body direct orders from the brain. The bodily organs receive brain commands in the form of nerve electricity sent from the brain, but the retina, which is a real outgrowth of the brain, receives them in the very form in which these orders were conceived, that is, in the form of brain waves. The retina later transforms the brain waves into light rays and projects them, in that form, out of the body. Before using the power of the brain's horns, you must learn about brain waves. The Extraordinary Means of Brain Waves Brain waves are of five types whose origin is obscure, and each of these waves indicates the functioning of a different part of the mind. They are 1. Alpha waves, subconscious mind 2. Beta waves, conscious mind 3. Delta waves, psychic power center 4. Theta waves, psychic power. 5. Gamma waves, deep psychic power. 1. Alpha waves. Alpha waves come from the subconscious and have a frequency ranging from 8 to 13 cycles per second. They possess a voltage of 50 microvolts. They arise mainly in the upper parts of the brain, that is, memory region. The subconscious is memory based. They are produced in the brain during light sleep or during a state of narcosis or when the eyes are closed. That is, they arise in a mental state in which the subconscious takes control over the brain. Alpha waves are canceled out as much as the individual receives visual stimuli or after mental effort or in other states in which the conscious mind is actively employed. They therefore disappear when the eyes are open. Nevertheless, if the visual field is uniform, or if you wear glasses that fog up and hide what you observe of significance, alpha waves are not cancelled. But if you make the slightest attempt to distinguish any detail in the field of view, and then actively use the conscious mind, the alpha waves vanish. Alpha waves disappear during sleep and are replaced by intermittent low-voltage high-frequency screeches called sleep fixes. And this is because, during sleep, it is not really the subconscious that ensures control, but the primitive self-consciousness. 2. Beta waves Beta waves arise in the conscious mind. They have a frequency of 15 to 60 cycles per second. The voltage is lower than that of alpha waves and ranges from 5 to 10 microvolts. They arise mainly in the centers of the senses and muscles of the brain that the conscious mind governs. They have a frequency of 20 to 25 cycles per second. They are not inhibited by the opening or closing of the eyes because you are conscious when they are present. 3. Delta Waves Delta waves arise in the center of psychic power. They have a frequency of 1 to 15 cycles per second. Therefore, their voltage is very high, from 20 to 200 microvolts, and therefore the brain waves of psychic power are very powerful. They originate in the silence zone of the brain, which emits waves at the rate of 3 to 8 per second. Delta waves are thus indisputably the waves of the psychic power center. They can rarely be recorded on the average adult when he is awake, but they normally appear when he is asleep. This is because it is during sleep that the adult habitually uses a considerable portion of his psychic powers or experiences. When delta waves are recorded by an awake adult, it means he or she is suffering from mental depression, depression of consciousness caused by toxicants, a brain tumor, or epilepsy. 
Such a state really means that his mind does not control him completely, and that he is under the control of some other mysterious mental influence with amazing electrical potential. Delta waves are not inhibited by closed or open eyes, indicating that the psychic power center can function both while awake and asleep. Since alpha waves are produced only during drowsiness, if delta waves supplant them in that state, this means that the psychic power center is in control and the subconscious is in sleep. 4. Theta Waves Theta waves are commonly in the temple region. They have a frequency ranging from 4 to 17 cycles per second. Since the temple region is part of the psychic power center, delta and theta waves are waves of psychic power. 5. Gamma Waves Gamma waves are those of deep psychic powers, such as those of the medium in trance. They have a frequency of 14 cycles per second. The amount of electricity that is possible to be recorded in the brain varies with the intensity of the state of consciousness. In a state of light sleep, delta waves appear. Alpha waves persist, but are overlaid by the slower frequencies of delta waves. In deep sleep, the alpha waves disappear completely and are replaced by the delta waves, especially during hypnosis. The psychic power center then has complete control of the brain. On some occasions, the delta frequency is also replaced by a faster frequency, the gamma waves. Abstract, alpha waves are the nervous electricity of the subconscious, that is, the nervous electricity of the subconscious personality. 1. Beta waves are the nerve electricity of the conscious mind, that is, the sense regions and muscles of the brain. They are also the nerve electricity of the conscious personality. 2. Delta waves as well as theta waves are the nerve electricity of the psychic power center, or your unconscious personality. 3. Gamma waves, which are very rare, are the nervous electricity of the totally unconscious personality. They are the brain waves of the medium in trance and come from the psychic power. The Purposes of Brain Waves The first purpose, to take advantage of this and to develop the unconscious personality as much as possible, is to place alpha and beta waves under the control of delta and theta waves when you are fully awake. You have already achieved this first goal with the exercises done in past lessons. In fact, you have constantly subjected the conscious mind to the orders of the psychic power. But you have done this to send the orders to the brain and body. Now you send them to the retina and project them outside onto another person or thing. Artillery to launch the barrage of psychic power. Since 80% of the optic nerves reach the retina, they carry brain waves from different parts of the brain to the retina. From the subconscious mind, they carry alpha waves. From the conscious mind, beta waves. From the psychic power center, delta and theta waves. Upon reaching the retina, these brain waves are converted into one of four forms of heat and energy before being discharged outward or projected from the body. They are 1. Radiant heat For near healing, for calming and attracting people, for a sentimental conquest, for activating personal charm. 2. Infrared rays for near or distant healing, for a sentimental conquest, to excite the interest and obedience of others. 3. Radio waves, for the projection of psychic power. These three first forms of energy and heat are projected in light rays. 4. Bodily magnetism, to influence inorganic substances. The two important forms for the primal self are number 2 and number 3, which we will study in this lesson. Number one and number two will be more or less combined together. The power of infrared beams. Since radiation is responsible for 50% of the total daily loss of body heat, the sick, depressed, or melancholy person loses considerable body heat. When you give it back to them, by means of infrared rays, or by the application of your hands filling them with electrons, they instantly feel much better. They really feel as if they are taking a sun bath because the sun's rays are the most important natural source of infrared rays. The retina projects infrared rays. 
They consist of an extraordinary number of very small entities known under the name of photons. In other words, your infrared rays discharge on John or Joan as an astronomical shower of photons. They travel through space at the speed of light, 298,000 kilometers per second, until they are restrained or stopped by a liquid or solid. But they are incredibly powerful because they are produced by their astounding speed and the monstrous number of collisions that take place between heat molecules that create infrared rays in the retina. The result is the creation of that fantastic energy. The speed of photons is 400 million times that of a rifle bullet of the same volume. When the photons of infrared rays meet the atoms in the air around you, they release an astronomical number of electrons and transform the space they pass through into a channel of negative charge. The infrared rays produced by the 1% of your unconscious personality are long infrared waves. They do not penetrate tissues very deeply and are strongly absorbed by the outer layers of the other person's skin. When you develop a force of infrared rays, the wavelength of your projected rays will penetrate deeper into John or Joan's skin. Short waves of infrared rays are emitted by all incandescent bodies such as the sun, electric arc, incandescent lamps, etc. Specially designed high-temperature infrared radiators can penetrate the skin much more deeply, 5 to 10 millimeters, and can directly affect blood vessels, nerve ends, and other tissues. They are widely used for their therapeutic effects. You can do amazing things by simply developing the strength of the photons of infrared ray projection, and that is, by developing the primitive self-awareness of another 1%. Exercises to double the strength of photons. Exercise 1. To double the strength of the photons of infrared ray projection, you must radiate at least twice as much heat as you normally radiate. 1. Bring twice the normal heat to the surface of the body and project it outward. 2. With a rocket command of psychic power, you double the collision speed of the photons you project. 3. They, in return, double the number of collisions that occur between them. 4. They also shorten the wavelength of the projected infrared beams to double the resulting energy and heat. Let us now explain the four phases. Step 1. To double the amount of heat at the surface of the body or in the horns of the brain, use the psychic arc. The psychic arc stimulates the nerves to bring blood from the muscles to the surface of the skin to heat it. So, think of steak and the surface of the skin will emit more radiant heat. However, if you are clothed, clothes stop infrared rays, and to overcome the obstacle, centralize the heat from the skin of the whole body and concentrate it in the horns of the brain. Phase 2. To double the collision speed of the photons, launch a rocket command to the brain horns and immediately feel the heat intensify to the point that the eyes feel warm and even a little drowsy. Then launch the heat to its destination thanks to a rocket command of psychic power. Steps 3 and 4 come automatically after this. The number of collisions between photons automatically doubles, and the wavelengths of the projected infrared beams also double the energy and heat they produce. Note, now repeat these four steps, but increase the amount of heat you collect in the brain's horns by intensifying the delicious steak image you create through the psychic arc. Amass heat and send it out in bursts by means of a powerful rocket command. This is the way to triple or quadruple the force of photons. Remember that the yoga master is able to multiply his 109 times more than yours. It is therefore not surprising that he can perform miracles through the power of his eyes. Fortunately, the power of the eyes, or the power of the brain horns, develops with amazing speed, and so it will not take long for you to be able to do with them amazing things. Do these exercises more and more frequently, and you will be amazed at the power you will acquire. Remember that IR, infrared, rays, penetrate only through air. They will not be able to reach the target if they have to pass through a liquid, water or rain, or a solid, wall, window glass, clothing, etc. The Effects of Photon Force on Another Person Photons exert pressure because they possess volume and motion to a very high degree. But since John or Joan consists of semi-solid body, 
It will slow down and stop the photons of your IR beams after they have penetrated half a millimeter into the skin. Nevertheless, the strength of the photons will increase if you are closer to the subject to be influenced. The large number of photons will fully hit John or Joan if you come to stand with them in a parallel position in the same place, such as both standing facing each other. To exert the greatest force on the subject, the photons must strike him or her at a right angle. The energy that photons give off when they hit John or Joan is absorbed and converted into receiver heat. This heat in John or Joan's retina is converted into nerve electricity. In that form, it is sent as a message or order to the part of the brain toward which you direct it. Exercise 1. How to appease some deeply troubled people with IR projections. Marco Laplant has suffered serious blows as a result of erroneous investments, bad business dealings, and deteriorating health. From the moment you place your eyes on him, use the psychic arc to send twice as much heat into his body. Store heat to send it on him reinforced by a rocket command ordering. Marco, you will win. Just be a little patient. You will win. This prevents your conscious mind from analyzing the advice and judging whether it is realistic or not. Forget logic and let the psychic power center direct the rocket command directly to your eyes, bringing all its power with it. This rocket command of psychic power consists of brain waves, delta and theta, or psychic power brain waves. Upon reaching the retina, they are immediately converted into infrared radiation. Strengthen them now with a rocket command of psychic power to double the speed and power of their photons. Look directly into Marco's face so that the passage of the waves takes place in the most complete way. The receiver's brain horns absorb them and turn them into heat, and in the form of nerve electricity, they are sent to the psychic power center. Nerve electricity is then converted into thought electricity, and its meaning is received. Mark's psychic power center will later refer this meaning to the conscious mind, which will accept it as its own thought. Exercise 2. Start exercise 1 again with Miss Joan, or with a neighbor, or with a sick person. But change the terms of the order carried by the rocket command of psychic power according to the person. With Miss Joan, who may be your fiancé, you affirm. You know you are mine. Why deny it? You know you are mine. With your neighbor. I am exactly the person she needs. Exactly the person you seek. With the sick. She already feels good. She is already better. The indisputable dominance of radio waves. Radio waves are the other important form of energy and heat into which brain waves are converted before being projected outward from the body. It is mainly for the projection of psychic power, but this can be used effectively for healing at a distance. Unlike IR rays, which can only penetrate solids, radio waves can penetrate liquids as well as solids. Consequently, they radiate from your body direct to the outside when you project them without first gathering in a particular projection channel and this scatters and weakens them. Radio waves are electromagnetic waves and carry messages of your mind's thoughts or orders to the minds of others. Since they are light rays, they are made up of photons. To increase the strength of photons, you must increase their voltage and frequency. Accomplish this by controlling psychic power as demonstrated by the exercises we give you. Exercises to increase the strength of radio wave photons Exercise 1. How to send a message of psychic power to someone you know. You wish to send a message to Edmondo, who is a relative or friend or business associate of yours. He is probably at his home at this moment on the other side of town. Or perhaps he is traveling hundreds of miles away. Construct the message clearly in the conscious mind. Choose the exact words so as not to be misunderstood. Now send the message through the optic nerves to the retina. Since these are conscious thoughts or beta waves, they will first be converted into radio waves before being projected outward, and radio waves consist of light rays or photons. Along with the radio waves, simultaneously emit a rocket command of psychic power that violently pushes the photons against each other, thereby shortening the length of the radio waves. 
which doubles their strength and energy and carries the message to Edmondo with greater force. Since the radio waves of each message are different, they create different degrees of energy and heat when they meet Edmondo's retina. As a result, they produce different nerve electricity than any other stimulus, and so he receives the message sent to him. Exercise 2 Start Exercise 1 again, but double, triple, and quadruple the speed of the rocket command that you detonate with the photons of the message on the radio waves. The message will reach Edmondo's psychic power center with so much more force. Radio waves are able to heal at a distance because they can penetrate liquids and solids and because distance does not diminish their intensity. Radio waves, consequently, are the waves that carry thought messages or your orders. Exercise How to bring back to you the husband or wife misled by another man or woman. You know that your husband John or your wife Joan are secretly related to Helen or Henry. You know that the two have been seen together in dubious places. You love your husband or wife. You believe that he also loves you, and you are meant to live together. The next time he goes out suspiciously, try to know where he will go, and try to imagine him in Elena's company. This makes his mind more receptive to a message from you. Recreate now in the mind a delightful sentimental scene from the past between him and you. Release this image and from the conscious mind send it through the optic nerves to the retina, from which it is converted into radio waves. Launch these radio waves to the place where you think John may be at that moment and immediately strengthen them with a rocket command of psychic power to double their energy and warmth. John will receive the radio waves in his psychic power center and from there they will reach the conscious mind. His mind will be attracted to you. Elena will notice this sudden distraction and become angry. Launch the radio wave several times and be certain that they will end up breaking up, disappointed in each other. Bodily Magnetism, the fourth form of bodily energy and heat. You will study bodily magnetism later and use it for levitation. Lecture 9. How to bring psychic power under control, visual and auditory reflexes. Visual and auditory reflexes constitute the sixth important part of the primitive self-consciousness. Man has allowed these reflexes to degenerate, but now, in his apparently safer world, he needs them more than ever. The present world is no safer than the prehistoric one, for work in factories and construction sites and road traffic are dangerous, and delinquents have become common currency. It is therefore very important for you to develop visual and auditory reflexes. The superior colliculi, the centers of visual reflexes. The superior colliculi are two round prominences of the brain. They are the main centers of visual reflexes. In fish and birds, they are very large, sometimes even larger than the brain, but in higher animals, they are much smaller. In humans, they are relatively conspicuous because their visual functions are provided by the great visual center in the conscious mind. Nevertheless, there is still the main center of visual reflexes that receives messages from. A. The retina through the optic nerve. B. The great visual center in the conscious mind. C. The spinal cord, that is, the whole body. They send back commands all the way down from the spinal cord to the entire body. What visual reflections do for you? Visual reflexes correlate eye movements with head or limb movements. The main ones are A. When you turn your eyes to fix them on a stationary object and when you take your gaze away from the object. B. When you move your head at the same time as your eyes to follow a moving object. C. When you move your limbs, neck or trunk to avoid a moving object or parry a sudden blow, while your eyelids immediately close to protect your vision. These reflexes are of first necessity for the animal hunting or protecting itself. In humans, these reflexes are indispensable in sports, for fixing a moving object, such as a ball or tennis ball. Moving the limbs, neck or trunk to avoid a moving object or parry a blow, are essential movements for fencing, 
and in all other self-defense activities, and for dancing, loving, and playing. Visual reflexes provide alertness and protection. Alertness to anticipate an attack and protection to enable the mind to prepare an effective defense plan in the required time. They provide the eyes for the muscles to direct their agility in acrobatics, dancing, skating, skiing, and other specialties that demand great muscle coordination. To sum up, when you awaken the upper colliculi, you become much more competent in all sports that require the use of your eyes, limbs, head, and body. You will then be able to move and walk more gracefully to the point of attracting the admiration of those who watch you. You will acquire the calm and detached manner of a distinguished person. You will inspire deep admiration in others, and you will instantly stand out above the crowd. How the Upper Colliculi Work The stimulus that makes the upper colliculi work generally comes in the form of a person or object visible in front of you. When the stimulus comes to you through your eyes, its image penetrates them in the form of light rays. Light rays cause a series of changes in nerve electricity in the retina. They are called retinal action currents and can be recorded as a series of four waves, A, B, C, and D. When you are under anesthesia, the last waves to disappear are the first ones, A and B. This is why the hypnotized subject has better visual reflexes than the conscious subject The light rays entering his eyes cause only the two fastest waves of his retinal action currents to form. The two slower waves are not formed in him. The same thing applies to the medium in trance. You, with practice, will be able to accomplish the same thing even in a conscious state, thanks to a command of psychic power to the retina. The stimulus of light rays is then conveyed in the form of nerve electricity from the optic nerves in the retina to the superior colliculi. These send a command to the region of the conscious mind that governs the muscles of the face and body that can execute the visual reflex. To increase the vigor of the visual reflex, send a rocket command of psychic power to the great visual center and radiate it to the upper colliculi, ordering them to increase the strength of the visual reflex. Exercises to place visual reflexes under the control of psychic power. Exercise 1. How to shine in all sports by developing your visual reflexes. In almost every sport, there is an activity you can do to develop your visual reflexes. It also develops the reaction speed of your arms, legs, and body. It can be started at any age and can be practiced alone or with a partner. It is handball, and for this game, you need a wall and a rubber ball. Single play demands great speed and stamina because you cannot rest unless you stop playing. Playing with a partner also demands quicker reflexes of another kind, because you cannot always predict where the ball will fall. In cold weather you will not be able to play outside, but in the basement. It is preferable to use gloves so that you can repel the ball hard without hurting your hands. You will thus create visual reflexes that can effectively serve you to shine in any sport. Exercise 2. If you train to succeed in a well-defined sport, you must repeat your movements without tiring. The same advice applies if you play a musical instrument or any specialty for which your hands or feet or whole body are used with effort. Exercise 3. How to excel in a romantic relationship by means of visual reflexes. As ridiculous as it may seem, when a woman is in a relationship, she uses visual reflexes to a great extent. She cannot simply move her eyes from side to side they must automatically turn in the right direction at the right time and at the desired speed. Ella can subsequently subdue men one after another. Her visual reflexes, when used for flirtation, will cause her to move her body and limbs with a seductress synchronism and grace. Even if her eyes are not of exceptional beauty, they appear beautiful in those moments, and her less attractive features and body take on the grace of feline and light movements. Stand in front of the mirror and imagine that your image is Arthur, the man you want to put at your feet. Reject the logic and constraint of the conscious mind, as well as the supersensitivity of the psychic power center, and let the visual reflection center take control of everything. To achieve this, use the psychic arc, or visualize the stake. You will immediately get rid of the inhibitions of the conscious mind. Compliment Arturo by letting your eyes react spontaneously to the imaginary sight of a stake. In other words, 
The organ control center must show the way to the visual reflection center. When Arthur arrives and takes you in his arms, hold the psychic bow and let your eyes, arms, and body move instinctively. You will place him at your feet with languorous glances and gestures that need not be prepared but performed automatically. The Mystery of the Power of Motion Perception It is a well-known fact that you can discern the faint movement of an object more easily if this object does not move in front of you. The reason is that the image of the object then falls on the most sensitive part of the retina, which is located at an angle of 10 to 15 degrees behind the region of most distinct vision. And here, now, is a great mystery. When you follow a moving object with your eyes, you see that it moves despite the fact that its image on the retina does not move. Moreover, when you look here and there with your eyes, you still see that a nearby stationary object does not move, despite the formation of a succession of new images of this object on the retina, just as if the object were moving. How is it possible to explain such illogical visual contradictions? Why do you see a moving object moving when in fact its image on the retina does not move and a fixed object remains fixed, despite the formation on the retina of a succession of new images? Why, in other words, does the conscious mind refuse to accept as fact the images recorded on the retina? Physiologists explain this great mystery on the basis of your faculty of attention being under the control of the psychic power center. See Lesson 1. When you follow a moving object with your eyes, your attention remains fixed on the movement of this object. To keep your attention fixed on this, the psychic power center simultaneously commands the great visual center to ignore the fact that the image of this moving object remains perfectly still on the retina. And conversely, when you see that a stationary object remains perfectly still, even when you look this way and that way, your attention remains fixed on the immobility of the object. To keep your attention fixed on this, the psychic power center simultaneously commands the great visual center to ignore the new images of this stationary object that form on the retina when you look to the right or left. To summarize in the two examples, the psychic power center helps to highlight what you see by ordering the great visual center to ignore the new visual images it receives from the retina and to continue seeing the object as if it were still doing what it was doing before. Such a contrary order is not under the control of the subconscious mind because this happens even in less perfected animals that have binocular vision, such as humans' animals, that have little cerebral cortex, but possess a highly developed primitive self-consciousness. The inferior colliculi, center of auditory reflexes. The lower colliculi serve as the center for the auditory reflexes. They are not the great auditory center, however, nor are they affected by auditory sensations. Auditory reflexes vary greatly in different animal species. In the bot, from the ear's radars are developed to an extreme degree. Bot wings instantly obey the slightest warning of an audible sound and modify flight accordingly. In the deer and other defenseless forest animals, movement reflexes are instinctively linked to the ears to such an extent that, even when they are intent on a meal, their limbs immediately spring into action before the mind has had sensation of the threat of danger. Civilized man has lost the instinctive use of auditory reflexes for the relative safety and organization of his environment. Socially and professionally, however, auditory reflexes are of great necessity to him. Even a musician must react instantaneously to sound and cannot wait for the conscious mind to decide for him. The same is true for someone who drives a car, acts on stage, saves his life in an accident, competes on a racetrack, in a swimming competition, writing, etc. Exercise How to create confidence and amazing self-control for yourself by means of auditory reflexes. Set the chime of an alarm clock to any hour and then immerse yourself in reading or any occupation. When, later the alarm clock rings, immediately relax the muscles of your body from head to toe. Be surprised by the sound of the alarm clock, but relax immediately. Repeat the exercise several times, but on different occasions to avoid getting used to it. In a short time you will be able to deal with any urgent case and will have gained great serenity in your life. The Advantages of Placing Visual and Auditory Reflexes Under the Control of Psychic Power 
by placing the centers of visual and auditory reflexes under the control of psychic power, you will be able to be detached in competitive or dangerous situations and will economize an enormous amount of energy on a daily basis. You will acquire a gait that will be noticed through economy of movement. You will not be affected by a suddenly coming bow, a threatening individual, an unexpected difficulty when doing manual labor, or a difficult musical passage. You will not move your head or arms haphazardly when you speak. On the contrary, you will keep your head still when you do not need to move it, and your arms and legs in a resting position, except when you need to use them. Instead of following a moving object with your body, follow it with your eyes and keep your legs and hands still. You will learn to eliminate sudden reactions to everything you see or hear and ignore the unimportant ones. Cross a room or street with measured, gently cadenced steps and reach K goal elegantly. It is little things like these that make an impression on people. By watching and listening intensely and using psychic power control over visual and auditory reflexes, you will minimize energy dissipation and allow the mind to function in the best way while you are in action. If you add to this the control of psychic power by developing your unconscious personality, even just a little, your poise will become so irresistible that you will dominate dangerous animals and men with just a glance. You will also retain boundless energy because the nerves preserve well-balanced functions and relaxed muscles to the body. Lesson 10. How to place the primitive and great visual center under the control of psychic power. The primitive sight center and the great visual center are the seventh important part of the primitive self. The primitive visual center is the outer geniculate body on each half of the brain. It comprises a portion of the largest and newest part of the thalamus. The oldest part, however, is the sensation recording center. The new part is larger in humans than in other beings because its different portions contain more nerve passages leading to the higher centers of the conscious mind, the sense of touch or skin centers, and the visual and auditory sense centers. The great visual center occupies a large part of the cortex at the back of the brain. Develop first the primitive sight center and then the great visual center. The functions of the primitive center of view. In all vertebrates, optical messages are sent from the retina to a region of the brain, is the primitive visual center. In the mouse, cat, dog, and other mammals, the external geniculate body serves as the second great visual center. These animals can still perceive imperfectly after ablation of the great visual center of the mind. In the frog, all nerves discharge their messages from the retina into the optic lobes, which are the equivalent of the human upper colliculi. From the optic lobes, orders are sent directly to the frog's various muscles. The animal acts spontaneously according to the visual images it receives from the retina without going through the mind. The ablation of the visual region of the conscious mind thus leaves the frog's primitive self-consciousness in full possession of sight. This is why the primitive self-consciousness completely determines the animal's reaction to the visual images that the retina sends to the brain. In slightly more developed animals, some nerve fiber carries the messages, thus linking the primitive self to the conscious mind. This allows the conscious mind to control, to a certain extent, the animal's muscular activities. Nevertheless, their primitive self still holds most of the control over muscle reflexes. The higher one rises on the biogenetic ladder, the more the great visual center gains ascendancy, and the number of nerve sending orders from the primitive self consciousness to the mind progressively increases while the number of nerves sending orders from the self-consciousness to the muscles progressively decreases. The dog, for example, after ablation of the conscious mind, can still discern different intensities of light but cannot distinguish shapes and see obstacles in its path. In humans, visual images sent from the retina to the external geniculate body can only stimulate orders to the brain and body through the conscious mind. Ablation of the great center of the conscious mind leaves him completely blind because no images from the retina can stimulate him anymore. His primitive visual center cannot replace the large visual center, as is the case in the dog and other less developed animals. How to awaken the center of primitive sight. It is evident that if you awaken the primitive sight center, you will automatically possess two important centers instead of one. 
you will then have a visual power that you have never had. You will be able to read much faster, whatever speed reading system you employ, because you will see with four eyes instead of two. When you now look at a word on a page, you do so with your conscious mind. The primitive sight center, when awakened, will look at the characters first automatically and instantly increase the amount of visual material the retina photographs at the same time. Exercise 1. How to study a subject faster and not leave out any details. By reading in a hurry, you can only absorb the general outline of a book. By reading classic textbooks and other books that require in-depth study, even in a hurry, you cannot leave out the details because they are the real substance of the subject. The detailed subject matter is really the most important part for a practical study. General matter simply gets you an overall idea, and this exercise teaches you how to use the primitive center of view to help you study faster without leaving out the details. Open an indigestible book in the middle to be sure that you will not easily understand it. Choose any paragraph and read it in the following way. Take a look at the word imprinted in the first half of the line. Read it and quickly pick out the meaning of the words that immediately precede and follow it. Then choose a word imprinted in the second half of the line and do the same thing again. This is the means to grasp the entire meaning of the line without leaving out the details. Do this slowly at first to develop the center of primitive sight. Let the eyes see clearly and perfectly on all sides. Then do it faster and faster. Finally, do it for the whole page. Your aptitude for reading and understanding a difficult subject will increase to a great extent. Now you will develop the great visual center and increase your visual powers even more. The important parts of the great visual center and how they work for you. The great visual center occupies the largest part of the cortex at the back of the brain. There are two divisions that physiologists call the visual sensory region and the visual psychic region. For simplicity, we will call them the visual image receiving region and the command distribution region. One division. The visual image receiving region of the great visual center receives visual images from the retina in the form of nerve electricity after they have passed two nerve junctions. They convey to it impressions of colors, shapes, motion, light, and transparency that have been photographed by the retina. These different impressions are recognized and determined by the conscious mind. To come to recognize and identify them, you need the help of the command distribution region of the great visual center. Two division. The order distribution regions of the great visual center surrounds the largest part of the visual image receiving region. It is responsible for developing in detail the images it receives from the image receiving region and integrating them to past experiences. This process leads not only to recognize, but also to identify all that you can see. The region of order distribution also determines the position of the objects you observe in space. It forces your eyes to move to arrive at these results by ordering your eye muscles to adjust the direction of your gaze. Just as the reflex center of vision, it keeps your eyes fixed on an object when you turn your head in an opposite direction. How to develop the visual center by placing it under the control of psychic power. 1. By increasing the faculty of recognizing, determining, and identifying colors and shapes, you will acquire a truly artistic eye or improve it if you already possess it. You will appreciate the arts, nature, and fashion. Also in business, you will be better able to interest the public and individual contacts. In any occupation worthy of the name, you will need an excellent understanding of color effectiveness, and you will need to form it if you want to get to the top quickly. This applies not only to the artist or the tailor, but also to the executive, the dentist, the lawyer, the priest, the inventor, the merchant, and the soldier. 2. By knowing how to better recognize, determine, and identify movement, you will be able to become excellent in specialties and sports that demand movement skills. 3. The same thing applies to light and transparency. Improving this faculty will enable you to see more deeply through the light and the dark. The benefits you will gain are too numerous to list. Exercise 1. 
How to make a mental picture of people and objects that you have seen for only a few moments. Take a quick look at a person, car, or object in the street. Then look away and quickly describe what you saw in detail from head to toe. Verify and check to what extent your image is accurate. This aptitude for reproducing exactly what you saw at first glance is invaluable to you in business, social, and artistic life. Exercise 2. Take a look at a photograph of an athlete performing a specialty in which you would like to triumph. Look away and describe what you saw. Check the accuracy of your description. What does not match the photograph is generally the error that haunts you in that activity. This is the great use you can make of the great visual center when you place it under the control of psychic power. How to achieve a more penetrating view. Exercise 1. Observe a bird flying at a distance in the clear sky and try to see it motionless, even after it has disappeared. Since at a distance, the bird appears smaller and smaller, send a flare command of psychic power to the eyes and force them to continue seeing the bird as if it were not becoming smaller at all. Force the eye muscles to sufficiently change the shape of the lens so that they can see even farther than before. Even after the bird has disappeared from sight in the sky, it is still there flying. If your eyes had a longer focus, or if you used binoculars, you could still see it. So keep looking at the spot where the bird disappeared, and imagine that you still see it flying. By doing so, you provide the sensation recording center with the idea that you wish to awaken its ancient use. Exercise 2. When you spot a sign that is too far away to read, try to decipher it as in exercise 1. Exercise 3. Try to distinguish windows on houses so far apart that you can barely glimpse them, doing exactly as in exercise 1. Exercise 4. Try to read the exact time on distant clocks as you did in Exercise 1. Exercise 5. Restart Exercises 1 and 2, looking through the fog. Exercise 6. Try to define the color of a person's eyes on the sidewalk before you are close enough to determine it exactly. Do this as you did in Exercise 1. Exercise 7. Now hold a page printed in small print about 30 centimeters in front of your eyes. Bring it closer and closer to your eyes so that the characters appear double. Now look while staring at a single word. With simple psychic power, force your eyes to stop seeing double and to see the word clearly again. In doing so, you will feel the brain become hard as steel, but it is but the muscles of the eyes that are subjected to a Herculean effort. Repeat the experiment with even smaller characters. Exercise 8. How to increase visual power by psychic power. Place two objects on the other side of the room, facing each other. Bring them closer and closer together, until the one in front hides the ones behind. Then try to see with your imagination what is behind. Abstract. In addition to awakening the primitive vision center, you considerably improve vision. In addition, by improving your eyesight, you can advance in your profession. You will thus increase your earnings and at the same time your joy in life. How the Primitive Sight Center and the Great Visual Center see for you. Colors do not really exist, they exist only in the conscious mind. The external world produces them through vibrations in the ether of different wavelengths. The word color actually means sensation and refers to a particular wavelength or combination of wavelengths of a visible ether vibration. When ether vibrations of a wavelength of about 0.00079 mm strike the retina, they create nerve electricity that stimulates the mind to interpret them as red. The same thing applies to all other wavelengths. Each one produces a specific result in the conscious mind. By mixing two or more colors, other color sensations can be produced in your mind. To summarize, no color image is formed on the retina through what it photographs. The color you perceive is only an interpretation of the conscious mind of what you see. The Young-Helmick theory is the best-known theory on color vision. 
it places the analysis of color in the retina. Then the analysis is sent by retinal action currents to the primitive vision center. There the different types of nerve electricity from the different vibrations of the ether are isolated and are then connected to the great visual center and interpreted in the conscious mind into different colors. How to rejuvenate the eyes daily. When nerve electricity is branched, it is called the light effect. When it is interrupted, it is called the off effect. The nerve electricity that arises in the optic nerve when it is interrupted has confused physiologists because no other nerve in the body reacts in this way. With all other nerves, the nerve electricity disappears immediately when it is interrupted or when the stimulus causing it ceases. Instead, with the optic nerve, the nerve electricity becomes even stronger. The explanation for this phenomenon now seems clear even to physiologists. When nerve electricity is interrupted in the optic nerve, this means that the retina does not perceive any light, only darkness, and is therefore no longer stimulated to create retinal action currents. Nevertheless, darkness, in the life of an animal, is no less important than the perception of light. A shadow or dark effect in the visual field could indicate food or the approach of the enemy. Thus, darkness is not the time for the animal to rest or sleep. It adapts accordingly to black by regenerating visual purple, and this increases retinal irritability a millionfold. A weak light that had previously made no impression on the animal's retina will now trigger vigorous retinal action currents. The animal has become much more vigilant than before. This fact is of paramount importance because it brings out the advantage of closing the eyes and letting them rest several times a day. This gives the retina a chance to increase its sensitivity and the strength of its nerve electricity when the eyes are opened again, allowing them to see better. Evidently, it is preferable to lie on the back a few minutes at a time and to cover the eyes with something black so that light can hardly reach them and thus the retina can recharge its nerve electricity in the shortest time possible. Wearing smoked goggles when the sun is too strong or even in artificial light will gradually do the same thing to your eyes. Lecture 11. How to place the primitive hearing center under the control of psychic power. What the primitive hearing center can do for you. The primitive hearing center is the eighth important part of the primitive self-consciousness. It consists of the middle geniculate body on each half of the brain. The main function of primitive hearing is spatial differentiation. Spatial differentiation is the faculty of perceiving differences and distinctions in space according to frequencies of sound. The bot, in this regard, is phenomenally gifted. The human ear is most sensitive to sounds varying between 2,000 and 5,000 cycles per second, that is, up to the highest two octaves of the plane. The maximum sensitivity for tones is 2,700 cycles per second, but the bot can pick up frequencies of 98,000 cycles per second. By means of the supersonic cries it emits and the reception of echoes of these sounds on objects it encounters during flight, the bot is guided and is able to avoid collisions. It possesses a natural radar station. If you wanted to hear such high frequencies, you would have to develop the primitive hearing center to a very high degree. Some succeed by developing the electricity of the cochlea. The electricity of the auger. The cochlea is a tubular, spiral-shaped structure in the inner ear. It contains the microscopic hair cells and other structures of the cochlea. When a sound reaches the hair cells, it sets them into vibration. As a result, energy is transformed in the auditory nerve ends surrounding the hair cells into nerve electricity. The nerve electricity passes through two nerve junctions on the way to the hearing reflex center, and another to go to the primitive hearing center, and yet another to go to the great auditory center. Physiologists have discovered with amazement that another inexplicable current is produced along the auditory nerve, independent of the current of nerve electricity. This fact was discovered by doing experiments on an animal from which the brain, except the cerebellum and the lower projections of the temporal lobe, had been removed. They found that words and sounds were faithfully reproduced when electrodes were placed on the auditory nerve and connected to a telephone receiver or speaker. 
They also discovered two distinctly different components in the nerve electricity of the auditory center. One, the real auditory nerve electricity that came from the sound energy reaching the hair cells in the cochlea was transformed into nerve electricity. But it was the second component that made them astonished. Two, it consisted of a new unsuspected and unexplained electricity that was generated by the same sound waves on other non-nerve structures within the cochlea. Physiologists called it electricity of the cochlea. The mystery increased because no apparent function was identified in the electricity of the cochlea. Physiologists consequently accepted it as an accidental occurrence of auditory function. But in nature, nothing is accidental, and there is always an explanation for every phenomenon. In truth, often the explanation is a combination of several explanations. Moreover, hearing can be lost if the electricity of the cochlea is suppressed. Therefore, the electricity of the cochlea certainly contributes in an important way to the functioning of hearing. The Mysterious Power of Cochlea Electricity No function has yet been discovered for the larger part of the lobe. It is neither the conscious nor subconscious mind, and is necessarily some other mind in relation to psychic power, since it cannot be something that man knows. Moreover, there is much evidence in favor of this conception. The electricity of the cochlea differs in many respects from true nerve electricity, except that it exerts its influence on the body from the brain, instead of from the psychic power center in the forehead and temporal region. This is why the great auditory center has a special psychic power center. The Ten Differences Between Cochlea Electricity and Auditory Electricity 1. In general anesthesia, sleep, hypnotic sleep, or psychic trance, true nerve electricity is abolished but the electricity of the cochlea remains. It is therefore the only electricity present in you when you are unconscious. 2. When the cochlea is cooled, the true auditory electricity decreases, but that of the cochlea does not. It is therefore natural for it to behave independently of true auditory nerve electricity. 3. If the blood supply to the brain is suppressed, True auditory electricity and cochlea electricity are abolished at the same time, which indicates that the electricity of the cochlea is controlled by the brain because the brain tissue ceases to function when oxygen is suppressed. 4. Immediately after death, true auditory electricity disappears long before cochlea electricity. Evidently, the electricity of the cochlea is not under the control of the conscious or subconscious mind Otherwise, it would disappear immediately after death. Only something that is beyond the conscious and subconscious mind can exist after death, something like the primitive self-consciousness. 5. Cochlea electricity is produced much earlier than true auditory electricity when sound waves reach it. Cochlea electricity has a much shorter latent period, which indicates that the producer of cochlea electricity is better prepared to create it because its aptitude does not disappear, even when you are under general anesthesia or trance. And its producer must be the subconscious mind, but also the primitive self-consciousness, because these are the two minds that never sleep. 6. True auditory nerve electricity can be recorded in you only by the auditory nerve or by some other part of the auditory pathway, such as the hearing reflex center, the primitive hearing center, and the great auditory center. But electricity from the cochlea can be recorded anywhere in the inner ear or skull, provided the amplification is adequate. The reason lies in the fact that the power emanating from the lobe is not confined to the auditory nerve, as is the case with true auditory electricity. It may also be a part of the structures of the primitive self, and is consequently branched through the whole brain and can be registered anywhere in the skull. 7. Cochlea electricity has much more tendency to spread through body tissues than true auditory nerve electricity. 8. True auditory electricity synchronizes with sound waves up to a maximum of 3,000 cycles per second. Cochlea electricity synchronizes with sound waves up to 20,000 cycles per second. This fact proves that the electricity of the cochlea is under a certain power of mind 
that is considerably stronger than the conscious mind. 9. True auditory nervous electricity can be created by addition. That is, it will be produced even if the waves of sound reaching the cochlea are too weak, but repeated a certain number of times. However, this is not the case with cochlea energy, because it is produced when the initial sound wave reaching the cochlea is strong enough to create it all in a row. It would require a powerful command of psychic power to be produced in any other way. 10. Cochlea electricity consists of piezoelectric currents, such as those generated by pressure on a quartz crystal. These currents are monstrously intense, which is no doubt why many hysterics are extraordinarily sensitive to all sounds. Noises disturb them to the point of causing them pain. Their hearing can become so fine that they can distinguish whispered sounds through many closed doors. Some experiences have shown that their perception of sound can be 16 times greater than that of a normal person. Hysterics fantastically increase their auditory acuity not by conscious or subconscious mind, but by the electricity of the cochlea, increased by the orders of the psychic power of the terrified mind. The electricity of the cochlea is astronomically more penetrating than any other electricity, and through it one can develop and acquire incredible hyperacuity. The Benefits of Controlling Psychic Power Over Cochlea Electricity even if you place 1% of the cochlea electricity under the control of psychic power, you will reap incredible benefits in daily life. Here is one resulting from the acquired hyperacuity. 1. Hearing will become finer. Since 50% of people are to be considered to have some deafness, anything that can improve hearing by natural methods is more than appreciable. 2. This will increase your success in society because you will be more variant in syllabic inflections when hearing will be sharper and elocution more effective. Your popularity will increase because you will be more pleasant, sweeter, more caressing and more intimate. 3. This will greatly increase the aptitude for following music, singing and pleasant conversations. 4. You will hear conversations from afar and learn more about humanity without making any effort. You will hear more easily those who speak softly. Generally shy and fearful people speak softly and are difficult to understand. If you understand them more than others, you will make friends with them and be able to help and advise them. 5. In many occupations, a fine ear is indispensable and an economizer of energy. The nurse and the doctor must listen to the pulse of the sick. The speaker must perceive the smallest noises of disagreement among his hearers, the actor the slightest noises among the spectators, the salesman the smallest hesitation in his customer's voice. 6. Since it is possible to record the electricity of the cochlea in any part of the skull, this could help those with deafness resulting from bone transmission. 7. When there is danger, when you are out late at night, or there is a wanderer in the house, or you are serving in the military in a wooded region, or you are on sentry duty, or you are on night watch. Hyperacuity can save your life, you and others. The Three Steps to Acquiring Hyperacuity To acquire hyperacuity you must 1. Increase the auditory range of the primitive hearing center. It varies between 500 and 8,000 cycles per second, and you must try to increase it to 20,000 or more up to the synchronization frequency of the cochlea's electricity. This will increase the hearing acuity by four times. 2. Increase cochlea electricity by listening to sounds more zealously so that. 3. More cilia cells are stimulated and more intensely. You carry out these three stages through the control of the psychic auditory power of the electricity of the cochlea, as you will learn in the next chapter. In doing so, you automatically intensify the functions of the primitive hearing center, and thus have four ears instead of two. How to develop cochlea electricity under the control of auditory psychic power. 1. Since cochlea electricity occurs even when you are under general anesthesia, asleep or in a hypnotic trance, this means that it can best be controlled for auditory exercise by parasympathetic nerves. Two. 
Since cochlear electricity is produced long before true auditory electricity when sound waves reach the ear, it can be well controlled if the exercise is short enough not to sensitively stimulate auditory nerve electricity. 3. Since the electricity of the cochlea can be recorded anywhere else in the skull, as long as the amplification is adequate, you will gain advantages if you perform the exercise with cotton in the ears. 4. Since the electricity of the cochlea can synchronize with sound waves up to 20,000 cycles per second, even though the primitive hearing center has an auditory range of only 8,000 cycles per second, it is preferable to exercise your hearing with sounds that it can barely discern when you have no cotton in your ears. The electricity of the cochlea can then rely on no other help than that of the primitive hearing center. 5. Since cochlea electricity does not increase by addition, but it is the real auditory nerve electricity that does it, do not do exercises too quickly, one after the other, because this would produce auditory electricity and unintentionally help the cochlea electricity. Summary Follow carefully the five rules we give you when doing the exercises to develop and place the electricity of the cochlea under the control of psychic power. 1. Rule Sit comfortably in your room and use the psychic arc to stimulate parasympathetic nerves. 2. Rule Do not do each exercise for more than 2 seconds. 3. Rule Curate your ears with large cotton swabs. 4. Rule Do the exercises with sounds you can barely hear when you don't have cotton in your ears. 5. Rule Count near 7 seconds before starting one exercise again or doing another. Exercises to develop the electricity of the cochlea and bring it under the control of auditory psychic power. Exercise 1. Sit comfortably in your room with cotton in your ears. Listen to something you heard very faintly before, like the tick-tick of a clock, and force your ears to hear it with the same intensity as before. Exercise 2. Set the clock farther away and start exercise one again. Exercise three. Do exercise one again by placing the clock farther and farther away. Exercise four. Start exercises one, two, three again with another object or noise so that you don't get used to the tick-tock of the clock. In these four exercises, do not forget to apply the rules from the previous chapter. Exercise 5. How to place the electricity of the cochlea under the control of auditory psychic power. Do exercise 1 again. After doing this for a second, fire a rocket command of the psychic power at the auditory nerve, ordering it to listen with greater intensity. The amount of electricity in the cochlea will increase quite a bit immediately. Immediately afterwards, hold your breath, close your eyes, and visualize the pulse of the clock pounding through the skull to the auditory nerve. A second later, lie down completely so that the true auditory nerve electricity is not sufficiently stimulated to help the cochlea electricity. Exercise 6. Wait 10 seconds, then start exercise 2 again. This time, send a rocket command of auditory psychic power, even stronger to the auditory nerve. You need it to hear as well as in exercise 5. Exercise 7. Wait 10 seconds, then start exercise 3 again. Send a rocket command of auditory psychic power so strong so that the whole body will go into tension while you remain completely relaxed by means of the psychic arc. The electricity of the cochlea develops more rapidly when the parasympathetic nerves are under control. Exercise 8. Start again with exercise four. Performing all these exercises will improve your hearing tremendously. Abstract. As with the eyes, these exercises improve hearing. If your hearing is normal or above normal, you will discover new universes. In business as in pleasure activities, a fine ear is of utmost importance. Lesson 12. How to use the self-aware healer to bring others under your psychic power. The daily use of the self-aware healer. 
Making a person comfortable is perhaps the most effective means of bringing them under the control of your psychic power. How are you doing today? Looking good. How is your wife or husband or son? You look tired today. Are you not feeling well? These pleasantries and many others indicate that people have always shown interest in the health of others as well as their own. And this is for the simple reason that at one time or another everyone gets sick. Most people chronically suffer from headaches, stomach ailments, liver ailments, heart ailments, sinusitis, melancholy, and other limited ills that don't force them to bed. Many individuals feel unwell, and your attitude to help them feel better when you meet Themas, a truly comforting secret power. You can, if you wish, perfect this attitude. Even among the apostles there were some gifted to perform certain miracles, and others to perform different ones. Many among them were gifted to heal psychically, others were not. Everyone possesses some dispositions in this regard, or possesses at least all they need to develop them for the control of psychic power over others in daily life. The Four Points of the Self-Aware Healer If your dog, your child, or a beloved being is hurt or sick, you feel that you could relieve him or her from pain or illness. As a child, when we get hurt, we look for mother and her caresses. Perhaps she has no healing talent with anyone other than her child. Instinctively she employs the healing self with her son, caresses the wounds and orders them to heal. You have absolute confidence in her power to heal. Without such conditions, psychic healing is impossible. Similarly, you and the other person must reach a certain degree of harmony in your relationships before the self-conscious healer can act. Thereafter, take more steps and you will have the other person under the control of psychic power. The four steps for the healing self-conscious are 1. First establish relationships with the other person. 2. Project infrared beams onto it by means of brain antennae. 3. Transmit your body's surplus of electrons to him with your hands. 4. Projecting visualized forms of healthy organs by means of brain antennae. These four points will now be explained, and we will teach you how to use them. Point 1. Treatment of the torso is the easiest means of establishing relationships with the other person. Most of his or her ills, including headaches, originate in one of the parts of the torso such as the stomach, heart, lungs, liver, intestines, colon, rectum, kidneys, bladder, and uterus. If you meet John or Joan immediately project the torso treatment to him, even before you say a word. Exercise. How to quickly establish mutual relationships with others. You meet McKelly on the street, in the office, or at a meeting. Immediately visualize her body from head to thighs as she secretes acetylcholine at each nerve junction. Or visualize only his torso and think at the same time of something you wish to eat. Hold this vision for two seconds. This mental image will be immediately telepathized in Michael's mind. It will be the image of a pain-free torso, because the acetylcholine emitted by the nerves gives a sense of pleasure and not pain. Michelle's conscious mind will then ignore all the pain sensations it receives from the sensation recording center that originate in the torso or were caused by it reflexively, such as a headache of stomach origin. So, Michael feels better immediately and remains eager to meet you again. You have thus created a new relationship very soon. Point 2. Next time, start conversations with him. If he already feels well, you will no longer be able to influence him with the torso treatment. The healing self is most effective on the person who is not feeling well. If he is ill or reveals his real or imagined affliction to you, send him by means of the cerebral antennas, a burst of infrared rays supported by an extraordinary force of photons. Point 3. If Michael is bedridden and you visit him, fill him with electrons by applying your hands to him with light touches. Do not look at your hands as if they were tentacles. Imagine them made only for caresses. Exercise 1. How to subdue the favorite animal with light touch. Use light touch first with the favorite animal we will call Prissy. 
If the touch is brutal, Prissy will try to avoid it. If the touch is gentle enough, Prissy will rub against you to be petted again. If you stroke it lightly continuously, it will fall into a kind of semi-hypnotic state. If it is a cat, it will half-close its eyes and purr. The dog wags its tail and licks your hands. Prissy will prefer to be stroked on the back, neck and belly. When you touch sick, McKelly make use only of your fingertips. They will more easily transmit your body's surplus of electrons and infrared radiation to him. Pretend you are feeling Michelle's pulse, and this will enable you to touch him only with your fingertips and transmit the power of the healing self to him. Since the electric current goes from negative to positive, the electrons will pass from you being healthy, negatively charged, to sick Michael, positively charged. Point 4. If Michael is not in bed, you will have little chance to practice light touch on him. Thus, when he has confided to you what ails him put into practice on him, the visualized healed organ. With it you will locate the diseased organ and arrange a healthy organ in its place. This will have a miraculous effect on Michael. It is the quickest way to draw his attention away from the organ that troubles him and will make him think of nothing but you as a valuable help. How to create the visualized healed organ You will certainly have seen the organs of an animal's body at the butcher's. You will have seen the liver, stomach, heart, kidney, and perhaps the lungs. The intestines, colon, and rectum are the extension of the stomach and make up the digestive tract. You therefore have an idea of how these visceral organs are arranged within the torso. The lungs are in the chest slightly to the left of the midline. The liver is in the right side below the lower ribs. The stomach is below the lower tip of the sternum. The intestines are between the stomach and the umbilicus. The colon is like an inverted U in the belly. The rectum is in the posterior groove. Common organic diseases have their origin in these visceral organs. Consequently, it is these that one must learn to visualize as healed organs. Exercise 1. Look fixedly into the void and visualize the organs mentioned one by one. If you don't remember them, go to a butcher's shop and look at them again. Exercise 2. Look fixedly at your image in a mirror, directing your gaze to those parts of the body where each visualized organ is more or less located. Imagine these parts in perfect health. Note. Do not forget to reverse the angles of your body when you look at your image in front of the mirror as you do when you look at another person when you meet him or her. Exercise 3. Now visualize each visceral organ in operation, the heart receiving blood from one valve and pouring it out of another, the liver producing red blood cells to enrich the blood, the lungs filling with air and pumping oxygen into the blood, the kidneys filtering the blood, the bladder containing clear, clear urine, the rectum as a soft tube by which solid debris is pushed out, Exercise 4. Close and open your eyes. Look this time at the image in the mirror as if it were Michael's. Imagine a healthy red liver floating in the air. Thanks to a rocket command of psychic power, implanted in Michael's side so that it immediately replaces the diseased one. Exercise 5. Do the same thing with the other visceral organs. Make sure that you can visualize any organ and substitute it for the diseased one. This process is the self-conscious healer. Start applying these four points on people as soon as possible. You will find them extraordinarily effective. Lecture 13. How to achieve what seems impossible thanks to body electricity and brain antennae. The human lamp. P. It is well known that some beings can illuminate darkness by creating shadowless light on their own. Some bacteria emit not only heat, but also visible light rays. In 1923, Gerwich discovered that cell divisions were stimulated when, as it grew, the tissue of a plant was exposed to the root tip of an onion. By appropriate means, he showed that radiation was emitted from the onion root tip and that these rays stimulated mitosis, division and multiplication in the cells. Thus it cannot be ruled out that the power to create light exists latent in all matter, living and dead. Light is created by heat, 
and all living or dead matter can create heat by organic, chemical, or atomic processes. You have been shown that muscles and nerves react electronically, that the whole body reacts electronically and produces radiant heat and infrared rays. It is therefore possible for those who are totally master of psychic power to develop this heat 100 times and thus create the human lamp. How to create a human lamp? The electrical organs of fish, such as eels and torpedoes, can cause an electrical discharge that in some cases measures between 300 and 800 volts. Their electric organ consists of structures in the form of plates arranged in series or columns that are supposed to come from the embryological evolution of end plates of a skeletal muscle. One side of each plate is innervated and acquires a negative charge when the animal gives an electrical discharge. The other side acquires a positive plus charge. High concentrations of cholesterol, the enzyme that dissolves acetylcholine, are produced in these electrical organs. Thus, acetylcholine is intimately associated with electrical discharges in these electric organs. In some species, acetylcholine also accompanies the conduction of nerve electricity along the entire nerve, and not only at the junction point. Consequently, the production of acetylcholine is absolutely necessary for the nerves and electric organs of these species to produce electricity. How then can you create a human lamp? Evidently by releasing acetylcholine not only at the junctions, but along the entire length of the nerve body. How is it possible to accomplish such an incredible thing? With the psychic antidroma. The miracle of psychic antidroma. When the message for the brain reaches the end of a nerve segment, it cannot bypass the junction of nerves unless the nerve ends secrete acetylcholine. And, according to the bell Magendi law, nerve electricity in a message-carrying nerve segment can only circulate in the direction of the direction of the brain and never in the opposite direction. Nevertheless, in 1876, Sticker reported the existence of antidromic nerves. In other words, he had discovered that nerve electricity could also circulate, in certain types of nerves, in the opposite direction. But his discovery was ignored. Later Bayliss took up the matter again and concluded that Sticker was right. Nerve electricity in a nerve segment can circulate in the opposite direction. The moment it reaches the nerve junction, it can reverse direction and send back the completely different message. Bayliss and Langley called such nerves antidromic i.e. going against the current. In the limbs, such nerves pass mainly through the blood vessels of the skin and muscles. They can create the human lamp because it is the skin that casts the light rays and glows. Bayliss and Langley also found that antidromic messages could be provoked by electrical, thermal, or mechanical stimuli. You already know that the hysteric can produce any physiological reaction in his own body because his psychic power command even when used negatively, is a powerful stimulus. The same thing applies to the psychic antidroma. You too can reverse the direction of nerve electricity in a nerve with an order. This nerve segment will then hold back at the junction point, pasatycholine producing to allow nerve electricity to bypass the junction point, which will send the message back to the starting point. The resistance that this antidromic nerve electricity encounters in the body of the nerve segment results from the creation of an astounding amount of energy and heat. As a result, the skin gets rid of an abnormal amount of radiant heat and infrared rays. This is the psychic antidroma. The hotter and shorter the infrared rays are, the shorter and brighter their waves will be in the darkness. By increasing the energy and heat produced in the nerve bodies by a large number of times, the human lamp can be created. Exercise. How to develop psychic antidroma and create a human lamp. Sit comfortably in your room and dip one hand into a bowl of very cold water. A message will immediately rush over your message carrying nerves to the brain. When it reaches the junction point in the column, it will skip it and leave for the sensation recording center. Along this run, the nerves will have produced a negative charge of nerve electricity but do not let the sensation center spread the message all the way to the conscious mind, because either it would order the conscious mind to accept the cold sensation coming from the hand as less cold than it actually is, 
or it would issue an order to the arm muscles to retract the hand immediately from the cold water. To prevent this, at the very moment you put your hand in cold water, launch a rocket command to the sensation recording center for it to convert the cold sensation it receives from your hand into a sensation of intense heat. If the rocket command is powerful enough, an antidromic effect will occur on the message. Stop it and return it to its place, generating a negative charge of nerve electricity along the message carrying nerve to the skin of the hand and bringing the order to feel intense heat. Practice this exercise and multiply the rocket command transmission force of psychic power to arrest and convert the message until the cold hand feels warm. This is the way to begin to create the human lamp. This exercise will develop in you the faculty to produce bodily heat at will with incredible rapidity. Exercise to use psychic antidroma for current purposes. Exercise 1. How to revive fading love thanks to psychic antidroma. Your wife or husband no longer seems as ardent as in the past. This very evening begin to exercise the psychic antidroma. Its message of coldness has already reached the sensation center and produces along its course a negative charge of nervous electricity. Now launch a command rocket of psychic power at the sensation recording center, ordering it to convert the cold sensation into one of burning desire. The command rocket will immediately cause an antidromic effect against the coldness message, causing it to return along the same nerve with a command message of burning desire. The clash between the two types of message will trigger so much heat that it will accumulate on the surface of the skin so as to overcome the other's resistance. Exercise 2. How to quickly overcome another person's defenses against you through psychic antidroma. Remo acts socially or in business in a suspicious manner. You feel this unnerving control from him. It is time to employ psychic antidroma on him. You send a rocket command of psychic power to your sensation recording center, ordering it to convert your hot antagonism into calm and cool bloodedness. This causes a real battle in your nerves, and the heat produced reaches your skin and this subdues Remo. How the psychic power center can keep you young. Examples of humans living to incredible ages, some up to 300 or 400 years, rise to a fairly significant number. In many of them, after passing the century, hair of natural color resurfaced, skin rejuvenated as well as sexual activity, so that they proved 40 years younger. Many of them who lived more than 200 years were fortunate enough to experience these rejuvenations two or more times. Since these automatic rejuvenations are under the influence of the primitive self-consciousness, they are undoubtedly provoked by the attainment of a fairly strong primitive self-consciousness or they are caused by the psychic reaction of the aging endocrine glands. Such an influence would certainly be accompanied by complete automatic rejuvenation if the individual's organs and blood vessels were still normal. The key to longevity is to never accept old age as inevitable. Think and feel as if you were younger than you are. Never think that you are older than 28 or 30. You have to eat and live well to feel young but you also have to keep launching rocket commands of psychic power to the primal self-consciousness to remind it that you are always young. This forces him to keep you much younger than you actually are, just as the hysteric determines him to keep him sicker than he actually is. How to rest in the dead man's pose. Significant rejuvenation and longevity will be greatly helped if you prescribe rest twice a day, one half hour at a time. Such rest relaxes you and prevents you from feeling dejected. The best times for these half-hour rest periods are generally before meals. Exercise Take off your shoes and lie on your back with your legs spread wide. Extend your feet and let them go naturally outward. Stretch your arms along your body. Close your eyes and cover them with a black cloth to avoid any light. Irritated eyes are one of the prime causes of tension and cause abnormal loss of electrons. Now stretch every muscle in the body. Let the whole weight of the body rest on the bed and on the ground. Lying on the sand is excellent. Or lie on the bed by placing a board between the mattress and the bed frame. Do not use the pillow if the mattress is too hard under your head. Put a two-inch layer of foam rubber. Rest perfectly still. 
This dead man's position takes tension off the muscles, rests the nerves, and rapidly recharges the body with electrons. In other words, resting the muscles precedes resting the mind. The head down position and its advantages. If you can support yourself on your hands with your feet together, leaning against the wall several times a day when your stomach is empty, you will make more blood flow to the brain and help the capillaries of the brain to stretch permanently. Narrowed brain capillaries are a threat of attack. You age your blood vessels, particularly those in the brain. Note. If you seriously suffer from myopia, do this exercise moderately. Increasing blood circulation to the eyes increases intraocular pressure and stretches the eyeball. This increases myopia. Increasing one's electrical potential. Fresh foods are very important for health and thus for longevity. Foods in their natural state act as electrolytes in the body. To be more explicit, they can conduct an electric current as well as be decomposed by it. Everything is electric in nature, including man's organism. The atmosphere is electric and has a positive charge, plus, and the earth has a negative charge. The interaction of the positive charge of the atmosphere with the negative charge of the earth makes all life possible. Man, consequently, must possess electrical potential because he is a living thing. He is composed of two positive and negative charges, but he is negatively charged. When he is not in his normal charge, as you know, it means that he is ill. The body is constantly immersed in a sea of electrical energy from which it draws life. You absorb this energy through numerous channels, all of which lead directly to the body's cells. These channels are the liquid foods you consume, the air you breathe, and in addition the nervous system. To improve health, you must increase your electrical potential. Psychic power can be projected more energetically when the body is rich in electricity. Pure air, fresh foods, rest and control of the primal self all increase the electrical potential in the body. This gives you increased muscle tone and a feeling of inner strength. This results in great confidence in everything you are about to do. Why you can perform miracles. The powers of molecular action. Miracles are possible to be performed. Life is a colossal visible cloud as large as the entire universe. It penetrates and is therefore part of everything. Men all agree that there is a unity that penetrates every apparent form of life. They all agree that material forms, forces, energies, and principles must come from this principle. Since cyclomancy primarily seeks a scientific understanding of all mysteries, we shall call this unity molecular action. Everything is therefore related to molecular action. Everything depends on and derives from it. You can therefore influence everything you can desire, because everything has molecular action as you do, and is therefore related to you. Through molecular action, you can control what you want. Time, space, cause and effect do not exist in the eternal. Everything is molecular action. This is the reason why miracles are possible. If you sufficiently control the molecular action of everything, you can perform miracles. In physics and chemistry, the molecular action of different substances is controlled by changing their temperature or mixing them some other substances with which they react. They are also controlled by electricity, light radiation, magnetic attraction or repulsion. There are other means used by the mind, which we will explain further. The latent power that abounds in everything. Everything in the universe is alive from a molecular point of view. The molecules of any matter, living or dead, are in constant motion. They are always attracted or repelled by one or more molecules. The molecules of matter may split and their parts recombine with other atoms and molecules and form new molecules, but they always continue to be in motion. Ice can turn into water, water into steam and steam into water, but it is still matter formed by molecules in action. When matter is a pure element such as calcium, it consists only of atoms of that element. But since most matter exists in combined form, it is more practical to call unity molecular action. You can perform miracles if you control the power of molecular attraction, 
that binds the molecules of influenced matter together. The power of psychic power control over matter. Now you know how to exercise control of psychic power over objects and situations. All you have to do is establish molecular psychic contact with them. And this is possible because everything is composed of molecules in action. How to establish this contact? By varying the temperature and pressure of the projection of psychic power. In a solid, the molecules are evidently more numerous and thicker than in a liquid or a gas. A solid contains many more molecules than a liquid. Ice and water are perhaps the only exception because ice expands. A liquid contains many more molecules than a gas. The molecular velocity of a solid is consequently less than that of a liquid or a gas. When a substance is cooled, the opposite phenomenon occurs. Its molecules shrink to such an extent that the substance sometimes changes shape. Then a gas becomes a liquid and a liquid a solid. The same thing happens with sound. When the frequency of a sound is increased, the tone goes up. When the frequency is decreased, the tone descends. To perform a miracle with a certain substance, you have to change the projection of psychic power to such a degree that it collides with the molecular concentration of this substance. You will then influence as many of its molecules as possible. If it is a gas, you must accelerate your projection of psychic power. If it is a solid, you must delay it. The following exercises will show you how molecular action can be controlled by psychic power. Exercise for Molecular Psychic Contact Exercise 1. How to make molecular psychic contact with a liquid or gas. Sit and look at water or air and apply the psychic arc to them as intensely as you can. The hotter the psychic arc is for the air, the better, because its molecules move faster and farther apart from each other. The exercise will perfect your aptitude for projecting hot psychic arc, and you already know how you can use the psychic arc in current life. Exercise 2. How to make molecular psychic contact with a solid. Sit down, look at a solid object, and apply the violent arc to it as intensely as you can. The violent arc heats the inside of the body just as fever does, but like fever it cools the skin considerably. The projections of the violent arc, reinforced by psychic power, transmitted by the horns of the brain, will vibrate in correlation with the molecules of the solid. Molecular Eyes How to Dissolve a Cloud Some individuals in possession of psychic power have developed the power to dissolve a cloud. Let us first recall how a cloud is composed. 1. There is an air mass in the sky that contains sufficient moisture to saturate it. 2. In the cold part of this air mass, a warm air current enters. 3. The temperature resulting from this union of cold air and warm air will be lower than the humidity that already saturates the air. 4. As a result, more moisture is formed. Thus, there is too much moisture in the air mass. 5. This excessive moisture immediately condenses around floating particles and forms a cloud. To dissolve this cloud, you must raise its temperature and evaporate its excessive moisture. You must then cast hot rays on it thanks to the psychic antidroma. Exercise For this exercise, be perfectly rested. Before beginning it, do some exercises for five minutes to warm up and begin to produce excessive body heat. Now, gaze fixedly at a cloud in the sky and direct your gaze to the blackest point. It is at that point that the greatest amount of moisture is concentrated, and it is from that point that rain may begin to fall. Take slow, deep inhalations and fill with electrons. Now do the psychic antidroma, intensifying to the maximum. Great heat and energy gather on your skin, and you experience a feeling of unsurpassed power that regularly increases to explode in your chest. Then blast this fireball in the direction of the sky and make it enter the cloud by means of another rocket command of psychic power from the antennae of the brain. Do this four times, as if you were bombarding a fortress. Complete this exercise with visualized shapes. Imagine the cloud heating up and its blackest point melting. 
Project this visualized shape onto the cloud. Continue projecting visualized shapes one after another until it dissolves. Conclusion Evidently you will not achieve any perceptible success with this exercise. You will have to increase your psychic powers at least 100 times before you succeed. But the exercise will develop your primitive self-awareness for practical purposes. The Power of Words Many miracles are more easily performed with the help of words, so do not be reticent to direct the orders of psychic power with the help of words. As absurd as it may seem, superhuman beings psychically have caused earthquakes, storms, floods with the power of words. Words give visualized forms a more realistic substance because you imagine it more dynamically, even when you describe it to yourself. Proper words, repeated to yourself, can prove as effective as those of the hypnotist. Lecture 14. How to develop the vision of psychic power and reap incredible benefits from it. The vision of psychic power is the ninth important part of the primitive self-consciousness. It is also one of the most surprising parts. The Miracles of Psychic Power Vision Through the vision of psychic power, amazing things can be accomplished. Even using only one part of it, the psychic master sees through a wall, steel, or stone, and can know what is happening in the next room or in a nearby place. Through the vision of psychic power, he can read passages from closed books and see the contents of locked safes. He sees inside the human body and, if he knows the pathology, can diagnose diseases. He can peer into the depths of the soil on which he walks. He can discover deposits of minerals, coal, oil, and underground streams. It can magnify like a microscope, finally, physical or astral particles, up to a thousand times larger than the microscope. It can finally see inside the atoms themselves. The vision of psychic power is an incredible accomplishment, but nevertheless, it has some limitations. It diminishes and disappears completely beyond a certain distance. This distance varies according to the degree of development of the unconscious personality and according to the power of the projection of the vision of psychic power. When using the vision of psychic power, developed to a high degree, you look through the earth you do not see as clearly as when you look through a glass. You see as if you were looking through a body of water or through a light mist. You can see through the earth, but what you see inside fades with distance until it disappears. Adding the astral tube to the vision of psychic power, as you will learn later, can achieve better results. The six means of acquiring the vision of psychic power. As Eastern occultists state, psychic power vision is the faculty of making one's visual power small or large. You will achieve this by greatly varying your visual apparatus, making use of six means, three normal and three for psychic masters. The first three means those normally used are 1. Vary the convexity of the ocular lens. 2. Vary the convergence of the eyeballs. 3. Vary the thickness of the pupils. You are to add the fourth half. 4. Looking through the intermolecular ether. Eleventh and sixth means are for the most experienced psychic masters. 5. Lengthen or shorten the eyeball by the muscular force of the eye and make the retina move back and forth as the mollusk does. 6. Move the lens of the eye itself back and forth, what humans do when photographing with a lens. Like the first three, means can give you the vision of psychic power. The three means normally employed can work to give you the vision of psychic power by greatly improving near and far vision, as described below. 1. How the normally employed means 1, 2, and 3 work when you look at a nearby object. A. When you look at a near object, the lens of the eye increases in convexity. B. The eyes converge or approach each other to look at the same object at the same time. C. The pupils contract and reduce the color and amount of light reflected into the eyes from the object so that you can recognize it more easily. The closer the object is, the more light and color reflected in the eyes. 2. How the normally employed means 1, 2, and 3 work 
when you look at a distant object. A. When you look at a distant object, the lens of the eye decreases in convexity. B. The eyes diverge and widen to give you two more parallel views. The two eyes can then look at the same object at the same time. C. Your pupils dilate and increase the color and amount of light reflected back into your eyes from the object so that you can recognize it more easily. How to develop the vision of psychic power by the three means normally employed. To develop the vision of power, psychic by the three means normally employed, faithfully perform the following exercises. The exercises will automatically vary the convexity of the lens, the convergence or divergence of the eyeballs, and the thickness of the pupils. Exercise 1. How to develop the lens of psychic power vision and improve near vision. Open a book and look at any letter. Do not look at the letter as a whole, but separately at each line or curve of its outline, so that your eyes will converge on the fineness of the features. Now, send a rocket command from the psychic power center to the great visual center, ordering it to visualize the letter as if it were twice as big. Also send a second rocket command to the organ control center, ordering it to stimulate the parasympathetic nerves. This is carried out by the psychic arc. Then, after launching the second rocket command, think of a plate you desire, and the nerves will dominate your body and make the eyeballs converge and the pupils contract even more. All these changes will increase your near visual acuity. This exercise will be even more useful to you if you are presbyopic or tire your eyesight when reading. The psychic master persists in this exercise until he can enlarge characters that are too small to be read. Subjects in a state of hypnosis can read much smaller characters than people in a normal state. Exercise 2. Do exercise 1 again with more letters and then whole words. Exercise 3. Do exercises 1 and 2 again with smaller and smaller characters. Exercise 4. How to develop the lens of psychic power vision and improve distance vision. Look at a distant object that you can barely make out. Choose something that has a certain width such as a tree or a car, and look at both ends of this object at the same time to keep your eyes from converging. Keep the visual axes as parallel as possible. Doing so should bring the eyes closer to their resting position. Now send a command rocket from the psychic power center to the great visual center, ordering it to stimulate the sympathetic nerves. This is achieved with the violent arc. The violent arc consists of focusing on something that makes you furious. This stimulates the sympathetic nerves that secrete sympathine and dominate your body. They then cause the lens of your eyes to flatten more, your eyes to diverge more, and your pupils to dilate. These changes will increase your distance visual acuity. This exercise will be even more useful to you if you are nearsighted and cannot see clearly at a distance. The psychic master persists in this exercise until distant objects are greatly magnified. Subjects in a state of hypnosis can see extraordinarily far with their naked eyes. Exercise 5 do exercise for again with other more complex objects, such as a tree with small leaves. Then try to count the leaves. Exercise 6. Do exercises 4 and 5 again with increasingly distant objects. How to develop the vision of psychic power with the 4 medium. The fourth means is to look through the intermolecular ether. Since the ether penetrates everything, to see through solids, you must see through the space of the ether between the molecules of this solid. Such a degree of vision can evidently only be attained by the one who has decided to become a psychic master and who will develop the unconscious personality a very large number of times, overcoming the resistance of the nerve junctions. For you, increasing the primitive self-consciousness by only 1% would be equivalent to increasing it by 100% of what it is now. The acuity of your vision would gain tremendously which would enable you to retain exceptional vision until the end of your days. Many people lose visual acuity as they age. The reason for this is not only pathological, it is also due to the neglect of making your eyesight work regularly. Sharp eyesight makes you feel young and full of life, 
and leads others to consider you much younger than you are. Therefore, do these exercises scrupulously, and you will get excellent results. Exercise 1. The Honeycomb Exercise Take a 30 cm square piece of cardboard. Punch many holes like a honeycomb. Make holes about 3 mm in diameter. Glue the cardboard to a dark surface so you can see the dark tint through the holes. Sit a short distance from the cardboard and look at the dark dots through the holes. Do the exercise again by sitting farther away. Sit so far away that you can barely make out the separation of the holes so that you see an almost united surface. Now begin to develop intermolecular vision by applying the double command of psychic power. 1. Launch a rocket command from the psychic power center to the great visual center and order it to greatly enlarge the cardboard image in your retina. 2. Launch a second rocket command at the organ control center and immediately apply the violent arc to stimulate the sympathetic nerves. Just think of something that fills you with anger and your eyes will automatically diverge and pupils dilate. The holes in the cardboard will reappear and you will again distinguish the cardboard around them. Exercise 2 When you excel in exercise 1, Repeat it with another cardboard box with holes only 1.5 millimeters in diameter. Continue this exercise by placing yourself at greater and greater distances. Successful performance of this exercise will demand considerable development of your visual acuity, up to four times your initial acuity. Exercise 3. Whenever you get a chance, look at a muddy pond and try to identify everything on the bottom. Note. You practice looking at a dark surface between cardboard holes because the intermolecular ether is dark. It consists of waves that change rapidly in relation to the movements of myriads of molecules passing through it. Continue these exercises with smaller and smaller holes until you paste a handkerchief onto the dark surface, trying to see through the meshes of the cloth. But it is not necessary to reach this result. Be content to develop 1% of your unconscious personality and you will be greatly rewarded. The five and six means for the miraculous vision of psychic power. The fifth and sixth means are those that the psychic master uses to effectively realize the vision of psychic power. They will be described briefly since they are difficult to control. The five middle. The psychic master can lengthen or shorten the eyeball at will and multiply near and far vision to considerable proportions. Physiologically, you can lengthen the eyeball rapidly to a certain degree by supporting yourself on your hands with your feet leaning against the wall for a minute or so. In this position, the eyeball fills with a large amount of watery humor. The same state is produced in humans following prolonged periods pathologically during diseases such as glaucoma, thyroid goiter, and hysteria. But the psychic master does not lengthen or shorten the eyeball by changing the amount of aqueous humor in the eye. He contracts and relaxes the extraocular muscles and can achieve the purpose without any harm. The sixth half. The sixth and final means of psychic power vision consists of moving the lens of the eye back and forth as one does with a camera. It is very difficult to gain mastery in this exercise. You already use it in the five half to a certain degree when you lengthen and shorten the eyeball but perhaps you would do better to abandon the sixth half to the psychic master. Note. When you are self-intoxicated, there is a high self-concentration of gluten in the lens of the eye, as well as thermostable protein residues. Consequently, you need an inhalation of oxygen to keep these substances in balance. In other tissues, such a balance plays a secondary role during an auto-intoxication. When performing these exercises, Try to do them in well-ventilated rooms. The best foods for developing eye power should contain a high concentration of potassium. Lesson 15. How to develop psychic power hearing and reap prodigious benefits. The indisputable proof of the hearing of psychic power. Psychic power hearing is the tenth and final part of the primitive self-consciousness. The hysterics hearing can become up to 16 times finer than that of a normal individual. The main cause lies in the fear of persecution and complete distrust of people. 
It is not because of abnormal control of a conscious or subconscious mind that the hearing becomes so fine, because all attempts made to improve hearing in normal people have failed. There is no doubt, then, that it is another power that performs this miracle in the hysteric. It is therefore the hearing power of psychic power. The hearing of psychic power. The anatomical structures of psychic power hearing are the auditory nerve and the temporal lobe, namely the lower parts of the brain. The part of the auditory nerve affected by psychic power hearing is the electricity of the cochlea, but the two parts of their temporal are also affected. That is, the great auditory center and the psychic power auditory center, which makes up the various unidentified regions of the lobe cortex. You already know how to increase the electricity of the cochlea by controlling the psychic power. Now study how to arrange the great auditory center under the control of psychic auditory power. Add to that the electricity of the intensified cochlea, and you have the hearing of psychic power. The composition of the great auditory center. The great auditory center is located in the cortex of the temporal lobe, which includes the lower parts of the brain. It receives only sound waves at the same frequency as those of the original sound. This is so because the nerve electricity that reaches it at the end of the journey from the ears is greatly reduced. That is why your auditory acuity cannot be compared to that of the bot. But it has the resources to match it. All you have to do is awaken this tenth part of the primitive self-consciousness, and this you will achieve by eliminating the resistance of the many points of conjunction with. 1. A giant creation of cochlea electricity. Send a rocket command from the psychic auditory power center to the ears, ordering to multiply the cochlea electricity in the auditory nerve. 2. An immediate deployment of the radiating psychic arc, which fills the junction points with acetylcholine and effectively reduces their resistance. Exercise 1. How to increase the sensitivity of hearing of the hair cells of the cochlea. Strain your ear to discern individual sounds that escape the chaos of a group of people talking some distance from you. At first catch only a few syllables, then a few words. Now you launch a rocket command of psychic power to the ears, ordering to multiply the electricity of the cochlea in the auditory nerve. To this add an irradiant psychic arc and intensify it until it propagates to the whole system. Individual sounds in the group will regularly become more intense and more distinct to your ear. Exercise 2. Do exercise 1 again, gradually increasing the distances. Exercise 3. Open the radio or television and listen to a few words. Half a minute later, adjust it to a lower tone and listen again. Continue until you can barely hear it and launch a powerful rocket command to multiply the cochlea electricity, having it immediately followed by a radiating psychic arc. Adjust the radio or television to a lower tone still, and you will intensify the rocket command of the auditory psychic power to the cochlea electricity and the irradiating psychic arc. Exercise 4. How to hear before you really hear as the blind do. As you lie down in the evening, remain lying down and listen for the most imperceptible sounds. The whole body lies down and rests quietly as you stretch your ears to perceive the faintest sound. You can easily train your ears to listen so intensely to a sound with your muscles. Thanks to this faculty, you can one day save your own life or the life of another. So, lie still and motionless in the middle of the night, when all is calm, and launch a rocket command to the sensation recording center to feel the smallest pressure of a sound wave against your open hands. When a sound wave of a frequency beyond those you can easily understand reaches the hair cells, it will be picked up by the skin of the hands and sent to the sensation recording center. From there it will be automatically diffused to the cortex, and this will command the muscles of the hands to react to the pressure by instinctively tightening them. The important fact is that in this nerve tract, the sound wave electricity need only overcome two junction points instead of four. In spite of everything, the nerve electricity of the sound wave will not benefit in this nerve tract from the electricity of the cochlea because this will not be transmitted by the auditory nerve. It will have to overcome only the resistance of two junction points instead of four, 
and thus the muscles of the hand will be stimulated in a very powerful way. You will not hear the sound with your hand, but you will hear something happening. The muscles will alert you to the sound even before the ears. You have given ears to the muscles. The blind man develops this aptitude to a much higher degree than normal. Exercise 7. When you are in bed, try to hear the faint sound of the breathing of someone sleeping in the next room, the passing of a vehicle, or the song of a distant bird. Exercise 8. Do exercise 7 again, trying to hear sounds covered by other sounds. The least important parts of the primitive self-conscious. The remaining but less important parts of the primitive self will be summarized now. They are 1. The rhinencephalon, the olfactory center in the temporal lobe. 2. The pineal gland, the epiphysis at the base of the brain. 3. The uncertain zone. Its nerve connections are poorly known. 1. The olfactory center. The rhinencephalon represents the oldest part of the telencephalon. It constitutes almost the entire brain in fish, amphibians, and reptiles. It is weakly developed in relation to the rest of the brain, but you possess an olfactory correlation center and a reflex olfactory pathway. The rhinencephalon includes all those portions of the brain that are involved in receiving and conducting olfactory impressions. In humans, some of these portions have been reduced to a thin leaf, while others have become too large and have been covered by the development of neighboring regions of the brain. The olfactory center is located in the temporal lobe. 2. The pineal gland. The pineal gland is a small gray-red conical gland located in the depression existing between the two upper colliculi. The pineal gland represents the rudiments of a photosensitive organ that exists in certain reptiles and other small vertebrates. In the Hatteria, a New Zealand lizard, the pineal eye is located at the surface in the middle of the head and is thought to serve as a light and heat receiving organ. Its function in humans is unknown. 3. The Uncertain Zone It is the central lobe. Its nerve connections are little known. Conclusion in less organized vertebrates, the spinal cord, which is the lowest level of nervous development, has considerable independent activity. Consequently, it should really be called the original primitive self-conscious. It is still part of the present primitive self because all the nerves that govern the body pass through it to get to the brain. The gradual increase in the complexity of life, as seen in the frog, dog, monkey, and finally man, is due to the corresponding increase in the size, and especially in the complexity of the cerebral cortex, and its influence and control over the lower levels of nerve development. Thus complexity develops the thinking mind and numbs the primary centers. The higher nerve developments do not supplant the lower ones, they act through them just as the brain acts through the spinal cord. To develop the unconscious personality, you must give independence to these lower levels of nerve development especially the ten important parts of the primal self, and then control them through the psychic power center. You are now ready to study physio-astral cyclomancy. Lecture 16. How to place the aura and its psychometric power under the control of psychic power. That which controls the physio-astral powers. The aura, the astral body are not under the control of the conscious mind, or even under that of the subconscious mind, because the latter disappears immediately with death, while the primitive self-consciousness survives it for a time. The aura and the astral body must then be under the control of the primal self-consciousness. To gain control of psychic power over the aura and astral body, you must therefore develop the primitive self-consciousness, and later use it to bring these parts under the control of psychic power. Now you are ready to learn physio-astral cyclomancy. How to use the aura for psychic power control. The aura and the astral body come from the body and consequently are made from the body by means of the powers of the body itself that you have already studied. They are incredible only because they accomplish that which disturbs the imagination. But there are no mysteries surrounding them. 
learn to use them without fear. The aura and its composition. The aura is a nebulous extension around the body that accompanies you everywhere. It is invisible to the uninitiated eye. It changes shape, size, and color according to the state of the mind and body. But in reality, it is but the combination of the four forms of bodily emissions. For this reason, it is strongly conditioned by the different waves of the brain and the acetylcholine or acidity of the blood. The aura is a gas or plasma and is composed of 1. H2O, water and sweat. CO2, carbon dioxide in sweat. 2. Radiant heat. 3. Infrared rays. 4. Radio waves, electromagnetic radiation. 5. Magnetism, preserving it around the body. 6. It is acidic or alkaline according to the body's particular physiology and brain waves. 7. The aura is very sensitive to mind and psychic control. It does what the mind thinks. It is always willing to follow the instructions of the mind or body. The importance of alkalinity or acidity of the aura. Alkaline elements give a greater imprint to the aura, which has a remarkable effect because it prolongs youth and delays old age. An acidic system contains an excessive amount of products exploited in the blood, such as non-protein nitrogen, carbonic acid, creatine, etc. An alkaline system contains these products in less quantity and demands less from the heart. Thus, the heart must pump less blood through the lungs to oxygenate the exploited gaseous product found there. When your system is acidic, you not only feel older because your heart works harder, but also because you are physiologically older than you would be if your system were alkaline. In other words, the aura is related to biological life until it separates from the body, which happens at the end of life. When you are sick, the aura becomes more rarefied and it detaches as if it is about to leave the body. When you are well, the aura clings to the body with greater determination, just as electrons do. When the system is alkaline, the mind is clear, fresh and vigorous, and psychic power is developed to the fullest. Control over the aura is then also very secure. When the body is sour and the mind loses its vigor, psychic power wanes and control over the aura diminishes. When you are unconscious or weak or asleep or near death, the aura separates from the body and hangs a meter or two above you. The body has then lost much of its magnetism. To masterfully control your aura, you need mental vigor to launch explosive psychic rockets. You need an absolutely rested mind and body and an alkaline system. Note, the terms acid and alkaline employed physiologically mean that the blood has used a large part of its alkaline or acid reserve so as to maintain its normal physiological state, which we commonly refer to by the sign. The blood itself always remains sufficiently normal, except in extreme cases such as uremia. When the blood has used much of its equilibrium reserve, the body strives to replenish it by the frantic movements of deep breathing in the case of acidity, or by feverish activity in the case of alkalinity. You can use your aura very effectively in quite a few other ways. One of the most remarkable for current life is the psychic spear. The psychic harpoon. A young man projected photons of infrared rays so powerful that they pushed his aura so far that he reached a girl walking 20 feet in front of him as if he had a giant hand. When the girl turned around and saw no one who could touch her, the aura vanished. It was evidently an abuse of the psychic harpoon. Exercises to develop the psychic harpoon. Exercise 1. How to amaze and amuse your girlfriend or wife with the psychic harpoon. The next time your wife walks ahead of you in the street, look at her intensely and imagine that your aura surrounds her like an invisible thick sack. Now apply the irradiating psychic arc to your body to increase the heat on the surface of the skin. Finally, with a terrible rocket command of psychic power, launch this heat by means of the antennae of the brain so that it prolongs fear until it touches the person in question. Ella will immediately look around and have the sensation of having been touched. 
Exercise 2. How to develop a mighty psychic harpoon. Sit quietly in your room and look at an object on the other side and repeat the exercise on that object. But regularly increase the strength of the rocket command of psychic power as well as that of photon power. You already know how to increase the power of your commands. Lesson 2. To increase the power of photons, reapply the irradiant arc to your body to increase the heat of your skin. Then gather this heat into the antennae of your brain ready to be launched. Exercise 3. How to use the psychic harpoon to tame a threatening person. Someone approaches you with a threatening tone. Detonate a rocket command of psychic power through the horns of the brain to propel your aura up to him in sac form. Your pupils will automatically droop like a cat's and add hypnotic power to your gaze. Your eventual attacker will automatically feel all strength leave him. Practice the psychic spear, and with training you will be able to project it more often and more intensely. With it you will be able to force someone who does not know you, especially on a sentimental level, to notice you, just as we will explain in the next chapter. Exercise 4. How to compel someone who does not know you to notice you with keen interest. Your heart urges you to take an interest in Julia, or Henry according to gender, but she shows little interest in you. Your eager attempts to converse with her are not well received. Nevertheless, you think that she would be yours if you could only provoke in her an irresistible interest in you. The psychic flake is the ideal means to achieve what you desire. The next time you are in its presence, look intensely at it and imagine your aura enveloping it as if in an invisible sack. Now, apply the radiating psychic arc to your body and increase the warmth of your skin. Indy launched the heat of your body with the horns of the brain by means of a terrible rocket command ordering it to be fascinated by you, and reinforce the rocket with a terrible jet of photons so that it envelops it with the aura until it touches it. Send a second, more powerful flare, if necessary, and she will look around as if you have touched her. When she notices that you are too far away to touch her, she will feel a strange interest in you. She will therefore have noticed you. From this moment on use mental dominance over her. How to use psychometrics to control psychic power. Psychometry is the faculty of telling the story of an unknown object by psychic means. Through it, Chalky described the lives of people who were totally unknown to him. Psychometry is an incredible physio-astral power. On the basis of it, a woman described scenes from centuries past, holding in her hands a stone collected from the ruins. What is the basis of this extraordinary faculty? It sometimes happens that the human aura imprints its biography on everything it comes in contact with, and this impression can remain on the object even for centuries. To acquire the faculty of psychometry, you must learn to sensitize your being to the molecular action of the aura imprinted or attached to the object. Learn this with the following exercises. Exercise 1. How to establish the past history of an object by simply holding it in your hand. You receive a gift from your husband or your wife, but you have good reason to believe that it was purchased and offered to someone else first. You do not want your spouse to think you suspect this so you apply psychometry. Sit in a quiet, dark room and hold the gift lightly in your hands. Close your eyes and empty your conscious mind so that the psychic power center can adapt to the molecular action of the aura that is imprinted or attached to the object, i.e. the aura of the third person, if any. Remain still and throw a psychic spear at the object through the brain's horns. Your aura will penetrate every astral particle of the aura attached to this object. Two seconds later, with a command from the psychic power, begin to bring the psychic harpoon back to you through the skin of the hand holding the object and let the object bring you the sense of the molecular action it carries. Hold your breath to help you maintain absolute stillness and let the sense penetrate your skin and stimulate the nerve electricity of the message-carrying nerves. The first few times you attempt these experiments, you will feel nothing but gradually you will become aware of a vibrating sensation that slips into your arms up to your spine as the nerve electricity increases in the message-carrying nerves. Always keep the conscious mind totally empty so as not to interfere with the message. The sensation you feel is different from any you have felt up to now. 
it keeps moving to the center of the psychic power. And then, all of a sudden, you will feel as when you unexpectedly remember a name you have been trying to recall for a long time. You experience a series of sudden, abrupt whispers in the conscious mind as messages flow in one after another from the psychic power center to discuss their interpretation to you. Suddenly, a vague image of something appears through the void of the conscious mind. It becomes clearer and becomes evident in something that has meaning in the appearance of still or moving forms. This may also appear in the form of an actual scene. Describe what exactly you see, and you will have extracted the past history of this gift by simply holding it in your hands. Exercise 2 Repeat exercise 1 with different objects, lent objects belonging to different people, and try to get as much information about them as possible. To improve the results when creating the vacuum in the conscious mind, stretch the muscles from head to toe. Stretch your eyebrows, cheeks, jaws, neck, arms, hands, shoulders, trunk, legs, and feet first. Try to feel as if you are lifeless while holding the object to be analyzed in your hands. Exercise 3. For even better results, place your hands on your knees, holding the object against your legs with one. Do not tense your muscles, even those in the hand holding the object. Cross your feet and let your knees go outward naturally. Do not rest your feet with the sole on the ground, but let them rest prone on the outer edge. Stretch your neck, but do not let your head fall forward onto your chest. This would interrupt the circulation of blood in the body. Completely relax the mind and body so as to present the slightest barrier to the arrival of messages from the aura imprinted on the object. Exercise 4 how to know what takes place at a given time in a certain place. Hold in your hands objects that are related to distant scenes, such as a piece of metal, a plant, etc. Apply the techniques learned in previous lessons and try to probe what is happening in those places at that given time. Exercise 5. How to find and or deposit. Hold in your hands a sample of or originally discovered in the same location where you are doing the experiment. Close your eyes, create a vacuum in your mind and relax your muscles. Unleash a psychic harpoon at the substance and let it penetrate every astral particle of its aura. Two seconds later, begin to withdraw the harpoon through the skin of the hand holding the object and drag the metal aura with it. Remain still and try to feel the molecular action of the aura as it penetrates your skin and stimulates nerve electricity in the message-carrying nerves. At first you feel nothing but soon you will notice a slight itching in your fingers. The sensation suddenly ceases, but gradually you experience a vibrating sensation rising from your arms to your spine. Do not stop the information from the aura of the substance. Do not stop the messages directed to the mind, thinking of something else. Keep your mind clear and your muscles relaxed. All of a sudden, a series of abrupt rattles hit the mind as messages flow in from the center of psychic power. You have your eyes still closed when a vague image appears in the emptiness of your mind. Little by little, it becomes clearer. You begin to see the earth, the rocks, the trees. The image becomes clearer, and a distinct panorama reveals itself to your eyes. If you already know the place, you will know where it is. Otherwise, you can visit some suspicious places and still discover it. Samples of the same substance possess the same molecular action, and there is a radio wave connection between them, especially if they are close together. The psychic power center will sense this connection because when you are on the spot where the ore is buried, the hand holding the sample will shake violently. Psychometry and the Past History of Objects with psychometry, you will be able to describe scenes related to objects from thousands of years ago. Psychometry through old letters. Look in a crate for old letters and try to psychometricize them. After some practice, you will be able to derive a great deal of information. Psychometry can take on great value for you in your current life. If you love to write stories, it will help you uncover surprising mysteries and intrigues. It can reveal much about a person's past and his or her true character. It can help you discover a rich deposit. It is a physical astral activity that you need to develop. 
Physiologists state that in ordinary vision, you no longer perceive the colors surrounding images because you have come to ignore them. Such colors are undoubtedly the colors of the auras of objects photographed on the retina. Lecture 17. How to develop and use the astral senses to control psychic power. The importance of the astral senses. The astral senses are superphysical senses, that is, in contact with spheres above the physical level. They are related to the astral body, just as the physical senses are related to the physical body. The astral body, according to Webster, is a supposed mind or double of the human body, capable of leaving it at will. This happens with your body. It carries your form and does not leave it permanently except when you die. The astral senses are linked to it and allow you to receive impressions on the astral or spiritual plane, just as the physical senses allow you to receive impressions on the physical plane. The astral senses are the counterpart of the physical senses and do the same thing, but on a different plane. A psychic contrast occurs on the physical and astral planes. On the physical plane, however, psychic communication is less continuous and precise because you have lost the full use of the primitive self-consciousness. On the astral plane, psychic communication is clear, continuous, and sure. Like the average individual, you use the astral plane only occasionally, but the master psychic can switch between the physical and astral senses at will. He can also function on the two planes at the same time. This attitude, which is very difficult to achieve, is called physio-astral. Also, it is not necessary to travel in the astral body to use the astral senses. In clairvoyance, astral vision, psychometry, you always remain in the physical body, but you derive information from the astral plane through the astral senses. Unless you are a mystic born, you cannot expect to achieve the smallest result on the astral plane before you have manifested some mastery of the physical senses, or of some higher power, as you did in the previous lessons. But, having already done so, you are ready to add the incomparable power of the astral world to the primitive self-consciousness. How to place the astral senses under psychic control The easy way to bring the astral senses under the control of psychic power is to develop two important astral senses. One, the sense of the presence of living things. Two, the psychic sense, the center of psychic power. The former is primarily a protective sense. Like the primitive self-consciousness, it is in a state of hibernation in civilized man because it has felt less useful than in the past. But soldiers at the front need it when the enemy is near, and so do prisoners of war when they attempt escape. In cities where crime has increased singularly, you regularly need the sense of the presence of living things to warn you of possible physical danger. Thanks to this sense, you cannot be lured into a pitfall or easily attacked from behind. The sense of the presence of living things is essential to projections of psychic power because it intensifies the radio waves and enables you to establish contact with the living thing more easily. Exercises to develop a sense of the presence of living things. Exercise 1. How to protect yourself against the threat of a hidden assailant. Sit in a quiet park or town square and close your eyes. Keep them closed for 5 to 10 minutes until you hear someone approaching. Then hold your breath and remain absolutely still. Strive to pick up the smallest noise near you and try to feel how far away this person is from you. Throw a psychic spear to feel the molecular action of his aura and immediately retract it into your psychic power center. You will be surprised how quickly you progress in this exercise. Exercise 2. To perfect exercise 1, repeat it by dividing it into many small parts. Close your eyes, freeze with a deep breath, and listen for different noises near you. Calculate exactly where they are coming from. Then open your eyes and verify your calculations. Then do the exercise again with more and more distant and indistinct noises, and in this way you will train your mind to become exact in establishing the distances and origin of the noises which automatically trains the subconscious mind and the psychic power center to do even better. Exercise 3. Do exercise to again applied to moving objects. 
With your eyes closed, calculate the exact speed of a vehicle and determine where it will be a second or two later. Then open your eyes and check your accuracy. This exercise is of great value in determining the speed of an advancing invisible enemy and in choosing the best position for the astral tube. Exercise 4. How to know who an individual looks like before you have seen him or her. Do exercise 3 again. With your eyes closed, imagine who the approaching person looks like. Launch a psychic spear and send him your aura in the form of a sack in which you wrap it to get a model of his figure. Indy feel the molecular action of this pattern and bring it back to the center of psychic power. Then check and verify the reality. With this exercise you will be able to see into people's current lives before you have met them and be better prepared to meet them and manipulate them to your advantage. How to use the astral tube for psychic power control. We now come to one of the greatest discoveries for sending or receiving messages on the astral plane. It is about the astral tube. It is a tube that you form in the air or ether by means of psychic power commands and photons sent or received by you. The astral tube begins with two narrow tubes with thick astral walls, about 1.80 meters long, that start from the eyes. The aperture of each tube should be no wider than the diameter of the pupil of each eye. Light rays are kept compact in the tubes and remain so until they reach their destination, without scattering thus keeping their power intact. When the psychic conditions are ideal, in a slumbering, sleeping state of mind, you discharge upon the subject to be influenced, an order of psychic power with the infrared rays and radio waves concentrated in these two small tubes, and it will dig a channel of electrons into the air and astral atmosphere. This channel is the astral tube, and it immediately becomes an easy path for sending or receiving psychic impressions. It actually consists of two small channels that gradually approach each other and meet when they reach their destination. The astral tube intensifies the projections of psychic power to a very high degree, and messages and orders are conducted to their destination with great vigor. This is also true in the case of you having to receive messages and orders. If you try to see, hear, or read the thoughts of others at a great distance, you will see and hear them more easily with the astral tube. A great advantage of the astral tube is that to use it, you do not need to fall asleep or be in a trance. It is also very practical in daily life to be able to communicate with others by thought alone. Therefore, practice the following exercises assiduously. Exercise 1. How to create the astral tube for the projection of psychic power. This exercise can be done standing, sitting, or lying down. The best position, however, is lying down, because you can better economize your physical energy for the exercise. So lie on the bed with your eyes closed, as you did for psychometry. Now create two thick tubes of astral material of 1.80 meters each. Apply the irradiant psychic arc to the whole body. Visualize a delicious dish by intensifying the image each time saliva comes to the mouth to warm the skin. Gather this heat in the horns of the brain and detonate a violent rocket command and your eyes will launch the irradiant rays with a Herculean charge of photons through the two narrow channels, releasing a huge mass of electrons into the air. Aim the astral tube directly at the brain horns of the subject to be influenced. Strengthen the power of the rays by sending rocket commands through the astral tube itself. A feeling of rigidity will occur between you and the subject, as if the tube were a hard, opaque, rubbery substance that creates a direct channel of communication between you. Exercise 2. How to project messages through the astral tube. Now project your message onto John or Joan. In your retina, it is converted into energy and heat and then into radio waves. From the retina you launch these radio waves through the astral tube onto the subject. Because the astral tube retains the parallel radio waves at the beginning of the journey, as you already know, they retain their compactness and intensify the message hundreds or thousands of times, like a laser. But you still double the intensity of the message with a rocket command of psychic power to double the power of the photons of the radio waves and shorten their length. When radio waves reach John or Joan, they break into their brain antennae and are converted into nerve electricity. 
The shorter the waves are, the more the optic nerve fibers are charged with nerve electricity, and the more intensely the effects of the message will be recorded in his or her psychic power center and then spread to the mind. Intensify the projection of your message through the astral tube by doubling the photon strength of your radio waves. Exercise 3. How to receive information from another person through the astral tube. As in exercise 2, lie down completely and close your eyes. Create an astral tube between you and John or Joan and send him or her a rocket command of psychic power, ordering him or her to immediately get in touch with you through the tube. Now, suck in your rocket command of psychic power so that it returns to your brain antennae and visualize the retina as it receives it and transforms it into nerve electricity that rushes through the optic nerve into the psychic power center. A radio wave message will be immediately sent from John or Joan. Start the exercise again by tripling, quadrupling the speed of his response in order to intensify the return suction of your rocket command from the subject to your brain antennae and thus accelerate his reaction to you. How the snake uses the astral tube to catch prey. The astral tube is basically what the snake instinctively uses to paralyze and even kill birds and small mammals such as squirrels. The snake does not try to hypnotize them. It merely looks at them and projects in their eyes its desire to devour them alive. It can be said that an order of psychic power rushes at the prey to crash it with the force of photons. Then the rocket is led back through the astral tube to the brain antennae of this greedy snake with such intense aspiration that the prey already thinks it has been devoured. This explains the sense of helplessness that strikes the animal even before the enemy has made a movement to attack. The snake then holds its mouth open and the subjugated prey rushes in without resistance. How to develop the astral microscope. With the astral microscope, you can see through everything. But, like all astral things, it is possible that you may never be able to use it. But even if you fail right away, you may succeed later. Here are the next steps briefly outlined to create the astral microscope. 1. Sit quietly in your room, close your eyes, and lie down as you did with psychometry. With the astral material, which will be described in a future lecture, create two astral lenses in front of you, one in front of the other, like a microscope. 2. Help them realize themselves in you by representing the light misty matter solidifying into two astral lenses. 3. Create the convex astral lens 5 cm in diameter and place it about 2.5 cm in front of you. 4. Make the second lens of a diameter corresponding to half the diameter of the first lens and place it about 50 centimeters in front of you. 5. Enclose the two lenses in an astral tube no longer than 75 centimeters, otherwise the image would be too large and spread too far across the retina, appearing blurred. This is the astral microscope. How to look through the astral microscope. 1. Hold a piece of cloth in front of you. 2. Focus the astral microscope and try to see through the mesh of the cloth. To do this, look through the top edge of the large lens that is toward you. Then, let the visual rays spread out to look through the small lens further away. 3. Complete everything with a double command of psychic power by launching a first rocket to enlarge the meshes five times. Immediately reinforce the order with a second flare at the organ control center to adjust the eyes in close-up vision. As you progress, look for more difficult views with the astral microscope. It is not only an exercise for the eye, but continues to develop the unknown personality. How to develop the astral telescope With the astral telescope, you can see at unlimited distances without the astral body leaving the physical body. But of course, you do not see as well as when you travel in your astral body. The astral telescope is subject to disintegration or interference from other astral currents or concentrated projections of another astral tube because the astral plane is constantly crossed by currents a to counter currents of infrared and radio wave projections. Nevertheless, with the astral telescope you can, even at great distances, discern the aura of the emotions and most thoughts of the people you observe. Consequently, it is a personality power worth developing. 
The various steps to get to the astral telescope are concisely laid out in the following exercise. Exercise How to see what the wife or husband is doing more than 3,500 kilometers away, thanks to the astral telescope. 1. Sit quietly in your room, close your eyes, and stretch from head to toe. With the hazy astral material, make two astral lenses, like a telescope. 2. Represent the light nebulous matter exuding from the face that solidifies into two astral lenses. 3. Make the nearest astral lens 5 cm in diameter and place it 15 cm in front of you. 4. Create the second astral lens about twice the diameter of the first and place it 5 feet away from you. 5. Close the two lenses in the astral tube. This is the astral telescope. Like looking into the astral telescope. 1. Visualize the place where you think your wife or husband is at a given time. 2. Point the astral telescope at that location and try to see it. Look through the bottom edge of the nearest small lens, then let the visual rays spread out to look through the farther large lens. 3. Complete this with a double command of psychic power, pulling a first flare to enlarge the image five times, and a second to stimulate the nerves with a violent arc to accommodate the eyes to look away. If your wife at that time is not in the supposed place, you will not see her. If she is accompanied by someone, you will know who the person is, but you will not be able to hear what they are saying. You will also have to point the telescope several times before you can interpret what is happening. The exercises given to master the astral microscope and astral telescope will gradually make the use of glasses unnecessary. How to Develop Radioscopic Eyes A human being can acquire radioscopic eyes, X-rays, because the human body is radioactive. However, this fact in itself is of minimal importance. More important is to establish a mechanism with the body's emanations that reproduces the X-ray generator. You produce them outside the body by the means you have already learned, by projecting mighty photons from the brain antennae through the astral tube. But now you will have to use the astraltronic half cone. You will learn the reasons for this in a moment. To create X rays outside the body, follow these instructions 1. Create a semi cone astral trunk like a giant lampshade from your forehead. Let it extend downward at an angle of about 30 degrees and for a length of 20 centimeters, that is, long enough to reach the middle of your nose. 2. Now project a current of electrons with a command rocket that rushes out, starting from the psychic power center, passing through the brain antennae. 3. Multiply the speed of the rocket with a large thrust of photons unleashed at the same instant. 4. When this furious torrent of electrons hits the inclined surface of the suspended truncated astral semicone, it is immediately blocked and the electron energy is abandoned and mutated into another form of energy. Less than 1% of this new energy is used to produce the X-rays. The larger amount is converted into heat. With normal electricity, the shock of such heat is enough to melt any metal. That is why the X-ray machine uses a rotating brake disc to reduce the concentrations of this heat on the target. Needless to say, in order to possess radioscopic eyes to see through the human body, you must devote your whole life to training as the psychic master does. You will have to multiply the unknown personality a great number of times in order to be able to pass the junction points of nerves without losing nerve electricity. Then you will be able to see through the human body with radioscopic eyes. By training for the acquisition of the radioscopic eyes, you will at any rate obtain a heat of penetration that will quickly subdue people's resistance. How to Acquire Astral Hearing With astral hearing, you can hear voices at great distances. When it is combined with astral vision, it is incomparably effective. Moreover, you can make use of it while awake and conscious, whereas you cannot make use of the astral body except when you are asleep or in trance. Exercise To hear from someone more than 3,500 kilometers away. Sit quietly in your room and stretch from head to toe. Create an astral trumpet on the outside of one of your ears. 
When you normally listen to a noise, you automatically listen to it as if the two ears were but one. Just as when you look at an object, you look at it as if the eyes were but one. Create the astral trumpet as you did for the astral pipe. But create it in the form of a trumpet that starts small at the ear and enlarges to a maximum of 1.20 meters in length and 60 centimeters in diameter. Now send a command rocket from the center of psychic auditive power through the auditory nerve in the opposite direction of nerve electricity, ordering the hair cells of the cochlea to receive sound from the place where your wife or husband is now. The ear can react to variant sound waves between 16,000 and 20,000 cycles per second, and within these limits, you can distinguish about 11,000 different tones. Immediately create an astral tube in front of the eyes and launch a rocket command of psychic power through the cerebral antennae to your wife and get in touch with her psychic power center, commanding it to send you her words. The radio waves of his words will be immediately sucked in by your astral tube. But break the tube when you feel that the radio waves are close to you and suck them into your ear through the astral trumpet. They will enter the ear up to the hair cells of the cochlea and stimulate the true auditory nerve and the electricity of the cochlea. Intensify this operation, and this will precipitate your wife's message to your psychic auditory power center, which will spread it to the great auditory center in your conscious mind. Lecture 18. How to derive useful knowledge from the physio-astral world through the control of psychic power. The mind's mysterious connection with the past and the future. Occultists call the annals of the Earth's past and future events Akashic annals. They claim that every Earth phenomenon, past or future, is written in the ether in the form of light rays. Those of the past move away from the Earth, and those of the future move closer. To read the past or future of anything, one need only tune the mind to the specific wavelengths of its light rays and direct the psychic message to them to get the answer. But there is an important physical fact about the Akashic Annals, which has not been explained. How can a psychic message coming from a human mind and sent to the light rays of the past reach these rays, since they are equal light rays traveling at the same speed? The light rays of the past could not make contact with human ones except through the astral body, which can travel faster than light. Nevertheless, the Annals of the past can be read without the astral body. The Akashic Annals consequently do not offer a satisfactory explanation. The Annals of the Land of the Past and Future The Earth's Annals of the Past consisted not only of light rays, but also of sound waves that both resulted from their physical, chemical, and mental activities when they were produced on the Earth. Instead of rushing into space at the speed of light and sound, they drifted away from the Earth together with combined forms, and were held back then by the huge pile of combined forms accumulated before them from time immemorial. This thick crust of combined forms over a thousand kilometers is perpetually thickened by the endless addition of new combined forms. Why these combined forms do not hurtle through space at the speed of light is a mystery, but the fact that they can make contact with tuned minds indicates that this is the case. This also explains why scenes that occurred many centuries ago are sometimes spontaneously reproduced in an astral form. Worthy witnesses have witnessed annihilated battles that were suddenly recombined many centuries later in a given location. This also explains the mystery of spirit-haunted houses and repeated appearances of the same spirit in the same place over a considerable period of time. All these supernatural entities must be very close to the earth permanently. They could not have left the earth at the speed of light during centuries and be able to suddenly reappear traveling all that distance unless this is done on the astral plane. But since the past can be reached without the astral body, the combined forms of the annals of the earth cannot exist solely on the astral plane. It may be that they have weight and are thus held back by earthly attraction. Or it may be that they possess a psychometric astral link with the concerning people and places and remain bound to them until they are destroyed. That is why, with the destruction of a house invaded by ghosts, the apparitions are eliminated. But even then, they do not leave the earth at full speed, because they can still reappear to the one whose mind is attuned to them. So, in conclusion, it could be earthly attraction or astral magnetism that binds the annals of the past to the earth. 
No other explanation of this mystery can be offered here. The intention was to show that the annals of the past can hardly exist as the Akashic annals explain them, but more likely that they exist under the combined forms of the annals of the earth of the past. In contrast, future earth annals consist of light rays and sound waves emanating physical, chemical, and mental forces that converge from different directions to a specific point on earth bearing a particular phenomenon or event. Even these cannot approach the earth coming from great distances and traveling at the speed of light. They must wander close to the earth where the physical, chemical, and mental forces that cause them emanate and converge to bring them together at a certain time at a certain place. If, for example, you meet John or Joan in the street tomorrow morning, the light rays and sound waves of your minds and bodies that are converging to bring you together are certainly not traveling to the earth millions or trillions of miles away. Rather, they exist here on earth in minds and bodies. Once you have met and separated, the event remains attached to the two of you in the form of memory and remains close to the earth. As you forget this encounter, its combined forms separate from your minds, but they remain close to you. When you both die, they will finally separate from the physical bodies completely, but they will always float close to the place where the encounter took place. If someone who knew both of you well were to spend time in this same place, he could feel or witness this same scene, even though the people around him might not realize anything. This, then, is the basis for being able to draw useful knowledge from the physio-astral world. Know how to tune the mind to what you want to know, and you will be able to get it. Tuning the mind to the light rays and sound waves of a scene is equivalent to feeling the molecular action of an object, as you did with psychometry. Clairvoyance of the Past and Future Clairvoyance is the faculty to make contact with the annals of the earth of the past and future and to transpose them to their origin. This does not include the ability to see apparitions or visions or other supernatural entities. Every phenomenon or event possesses its own individual light rays and sound waves. No two are exactly alike. The secret of clairvoyance lies in you assuming the appropriate receptivity or tuning your psychic power center to the specific light rays and sound waves that agree with this particular combined form. Appropriate receptivity is more easily assumed in a trance state because the conscious and subconscious minds then lose their destructive influence. The electricity of the cochlea and the brain waves of psychic power are then under control. In the clairvoyance of the future, you tune the receptivity of the psychic power center on the most probable light rays and sound waves converging physically, chemically, and mentally in the vicinity of the Earth to cause a certain phenomenon or event. How to acquire the appropriate receptivity for the annals of the Earth, past and future. In psychometry, the oral imprint of the object quickly places you in the appropriate receptivity for its Earth annals, but to do the same thing for clairvoyance, you must find a substitute for the object. But you can do this by thinking of something else that occurred at the same time. Once you have acquired the appropriate receptivity of this something else, it will be easy to continue to focus on the annals of the earth of this same period and acquire the appropriate receptivity for the combined form with which you want to make contact. On the other hand, you will receive a psychic message from the annals of the earth of a combined form of a past phenomenon or event, and you will be unable to determine the time or place in which it took place. To help you, Keep before you an image of something resembling what you have glimpsed in the message, or that of a historical figure of the time, and employ it to stimulate appropriate receptivity. Exercise to develop the appropriate receptivity for the annals of the land of the past. Exercise 1. How to know where your best friend went when you left him the previous night. Instead of trying to get in touch with the combined forms of a scene that happened 20 or 50 years ago, Try to get in touch with those of a scene from the previous night. An excellent scene you can start practicing with is to try to find out where your best friend went the previous night after leaving you and what he did in the next hour. Sit and lie down in a quiet place and visualize your friend as you saw him or her the previous evening and replay in your mind the image of the two of you at the time you broke up. Now imagine yourself in the guise of the friend immediately after the separation so that you now think and feel exactly as he thought and acted at that time. It is the quickest means of tuning your mind with its own, 
and making it receptive to the combined forms it has released into space at that moment. As a result, the light rays of these combined forms will be sucked into your psychic power center and the sound waves into your auditory power center. When you have practiced this exercise for some time, the scenes will take shape in the mind and you will rapidly develop the faculty of appropriate receptivity. Exercise 2 Do exercise 1 again in a more rigorous uni manner with scenes that are obviously increasingly distant in time. Exercise 3 Repeat exercises 1 to with historical scenes. You will be amazed to see how easily you will have acquired the appropriate receptivity and will soon be able to gain useful knowledge from the annals of the land of the past. Exercises to develop the appropriate receptivity for the annals of the land of the future. The means of acquiring the appropriate receptivity for the earth annals of the future is similar to that of acquiring the receptivity of the past. But instead of putting yourself in the position of the past, you put yourself in the position of the future. Instead of putting yourself in your friend's place after breaking up the previous night, put yourself in his place to know how he will behave when you meet him next time. Exercise 1. How to predict what your best friend will do when you meet him tonight. Sit in a quiet place with your eyes closed and your muscles relaxed. Imagine what your friend will look and act like tonight. To make things easier, create his or her day as you envision it. As your receptivity improves, large waves of color pass before your eyes and result in shapes or scenes of your friend going about his daily tasks. Now concentrate on seeing how he will act tonight. Since the combined form of how he will act tonight is already formed, his light rays and sound waves will find ready receptivity in your psychic power center. Since these forces are already converging before they actually meet and create a combined form for the annals of Earth, your mind will be transported with them and will know in advance what your friend is likely to do tonight. Exercise 2 how to know in advance what a friend will do at some time in the future. Sit or lie down with your eyes closed and focus on a friend. Imagine yourself in his place to quickly acquire the appropriate receptivity for his future combined forms. Then launch a command rocket of psychic power by asking him when he will get married, when he will lose employment, when he will take a trip, etc. Since his psychic power center is already receptive to the converging light rays and sound waves, that are on the verge of meeting and creating a combined form in the future of the response of your request, the question will be connected with the appropriate receptivity and will discern the final construction of this upcoming combined form and report this knowledge to your psychic power center. Note, do not hope for 100% success. You cannot understand more than 10% of your friend's true personality. You have not developed 100% appropriate receptivity because you have not developed 100% unconscious personality. But developing such a faculty even as little as 1% may be enough to get a valid answer to your request. How to look into the crystal to help appropriate receptivity. Seeing into the crystal can help appropriate receptivity. Accessories can help accelerate initial results, but in general, delay progress by encouraging laziness, Acting alternately with or without accessories is wiser. Periodic progress with accessories will give you confidence and launch you faster toward new achievements. A wide variety of objects or makeshift means have been used to see into the crystal. These include the crystals themselves and other light reflecting objects, pieces of quartz, sparkling stones, sunlit water, flames, sparks, mirrors, blood, the Maori, etc. A wide variety of objects have been used at all ages and in every country by civilized and non-civilized peoples. A crystal ball is no more useful than a shiny surface to look at. A bright surface reflects so much light that it temporarily stuns the nerve ends of the optic nerve, so that the eyes perceive only the bright surfaces within the visual field and do not see the other darker ones. The effect partially hypnotizes the mind and the psychic power center takes control over you. However, this does not develop the primitive self-consciousness, but simply allows the conscious personality to lose its control over you, and also encourages the undeveloped primitive self-consciousness to momentarily control you more easily. True appropriate receptivity increases only when you develop the primitive self-awareness beyond the normal, 
as in the exercises in past lessons. By all means, perform the following exercises to gain more confidence in developing appropriate receptivity and gain the knowledge of the physical astral world more easily. Exercise 1. How to look into the crystal to increase appropriate receptivity. When contemplating the crystal or similar object, you should be quiet and serious. Sit in a comfortable chair and place the crystal about 60 centimeters in front of your eyes. At this level the muscles in your eyes and neck are relaxed, allowing you to fall more easily under the enchantment of the crystal. Do not strain despite everything, and also squint your eyes if you feel the need to do so. Try to see something familiar in the crystal, a friend's face or a typical scene from current life. After many experiments, the first scene you will see will be a milky haze and the crystal will lose its transparency. Gradually a shape, a face or a scene will appear as when you develop a film. You may succeed the first time you try, especially if you try to visualize something in the crystal that is very familiar to you, such as a chair, a ring or a familiar face. Note. Store the crystal in a safe and secure place. When you use it regularly, the molecules on its surface change position and acquire a harmony of molecular action in accordance with your psychic power center. The crystal then becomes even more useful in helping you develop the appropriate receptivity. But it will not be more than an aid. How to use practical clairvoyance to improve the future. Clairvoyance, the faculty of predicting the future, is certainly a desirable faculty. With it you will be able to spot life more competently and take advantage of all opportunities that come your way. It is the ability to be able to read the annals of the land of the future. It is nonsense to say that knowledge of the future means taking the pleasure out of life. If, on the contrary, you know the future you will find the best advantages and pleasures of life. It would be foolish to criticize the acquisition of security for old age on the pretext that this may take away pleasure or to drive a car without knowing whether the brakes work, on the pretext that it is more pleasant to drive that way. The same thing applies to knowledge of the future. How could we better organize life and avoid unnecessary risks? If you study the future objectively and arrange sensible and practical plans, life will be a great satisfaction for you. Most of the difficulties you encountered in life could have been avoided if you had known in advance some insignificant but decisive detail. If Hitler or Napoleon had foreseen the catastrophic winters of the Russian campaigns, they might have prepared better or delayed the invasion to a more propitious time. You too have probably experienced losses in business and social or love life just because you were unable to foresee some small impediment or some unexpected detail. An insignificant change in personality may be all you need to avoid most future difficulties. How to Practice and Develop Practical Clairvoyance to be a seer means to develop to the fullest the faculty of connecting your psychic power centers with the light rays and sound waves converging from the annals of the earth in order to convert them into thought forms that the conscious mind can study and interpret. The practice of clairvoyance involves four important degrees. 1. Grade. Set a daily time for exercise in a quiet room. 2. Grade. Lock the door to avoid interruptions. Then, darken the room. The chances of clairvoyance increase 20 times in a dark place. In any case, starlight or moonlight is preferable to electric light. 3. Grade. The test of innate clairvoyance. Look at a spot on the wall for six minutes with a clear mind. If dot you feel drowsy, you have the makings of a seer. All you need is patience. 4. Degree. Another test is to breathe rapidly and vigorously for 90 seconds. If you become dizzy, you can become a seer, because this indicates that the brain reacts quickly to an excess of oxygen, and the body rapidly absorbs electrons from the air. If you repeat this test several times, it is almost certain that you will enter a conscious dream state. In this state you will be able to see without your eyes. If shortly afterwards you see sparks, flashes of lightning, trails of living light, vapor or clouds in front of your face, continue the sittings and you will become seers. If you remain perfectly calm, 
these clouds and sparks can mutate into forms of friends from the past. The psychic power center transforms into thought forms for your conscious mind, the annals of future Earth with which you were in contact. Exercise 1. How to predict the future. 1. Sit in the room in the dark and make a vacuum in your mind. Focus on the black void before closing your eyes to the point of ignoring the material world absolutely. 2. Write down everything that is communicated to you. Get used to writing by translating into words what you draw from the annals of the earth. 3. Do this every day for half an hour. If you cannot devote that much time to it, do it as much as possible. 4. Do not ask any questions to the vague shapes that appear in your eyes. Do not ask anything during the first seven sessions. 5. Ask a few questions at the eighth session. 6. At first it is preferable to be alone. Later you can have other people with you who believe in psychic phenomena. 7. Later, ask questions about your future and write down the answers you receive. Do not accept these answers as final for a while because they will not be accurate until your skill is perfect. But in time you will make progress until you can trust what will be revealed to you. Even if some of the interpretations of the information you receive seem fantastic at first glance, note them anyway. You will find that often what seems improbable becomes conceivable later when it comes true. If it is bad news, you can warn yourself. If it is good news, you can prepare to take advantage of it. That way you will not risk missing good opportunities. Lesson 19. How to use the secrets of psychic power domination to control others at will. How to create the atmosphere of psychic dominance with the astral cone. Mental dominance demands nothing more from psychic power than thought transmission and the use of auras. Nevertheless, the mastery of psychic power also demands the use of the astral mechanism, as will be demonstrated in the exercises that follow. Exercise 1. How to approach people who have the same ideas as you about a particular project. Sit in your room and visualize the project you want to bring to fruition. Create a large astral cone starting from your eyes. Make it curve outward in the manner of a trombone. Send a message of psychic power through your brain antennae, but let it disperse through the cone in all directions of space. Spread it out until it forms a quarter sphere from 16 to 24 kilometers in radius and contacts the receptive minds of any correspondence in this region. Everyone with a receptive mind in this region will receive your message in the form of a dream or intuition or vague recall. It is not necessary that each of these people be drawn to you. You may only need one person for one project. If you think about your project, and if you propagate it with a rush of photons, there is a good chance that the ideal partner will come to you very soon. The meeting will seem like a pure coincidence, but in fact, it will not be a coincidence at all. How to profit from the atmosphere of psychic dominance? The three main conditions for establishing the atmosphere of psychic dominance. One, you desire with all your might to convert your project into reality. Two, imagine it in detail as it becomes reality. Three, sit calmly and project the message of psychic power through the astral cone and create an atmosphere of psychic domain for it. You can form a hemisphere with a radius of 32 to 48 kilometers, but do not go beyond that because otherwise the atmosphere of psychic domain will lose its power of attraction. Someone within your radius will suddenly feel the need to pass a certain street, or to enter a certain store at a certain time, or to sit on a certain bench rather than another, and in this way the encounter will take place. How to advance in society and business through the pull of the astral cone. Try to imagine your message coming out of the astral cone with such an irresistible force that you have the impression that you are being pulled with it into space. Imagine the psychic power centers of dozens of people as they receive the message. Now try to bring this radiation of the message of psychic power back to you. To do this, extend your fists and forearms while keeping your eyes still at all times. Imagine people as they are torn from their homes to rush to you. 
Feel how they approach until they arrive at your door. If you can repeatedly recreate this atmosphere of psychic dominion for several weeks, and then go to different places in your region, you will be amazed at the number of nice people you will meet. When you are among people, in a gathering or club, it will be very helpful to spread a message of psychic power and create an atmosphere of dominion. To sum up, the atmosphere of psychic dominance brings you a whole range of advantageous circumstances. 1. The fact that you attract people receptive to your message to you through the astral cone. 2. The fact that they will extol you to their friends and acquaintances. 3. The fact that more and more customers will flow to you. 4. The fact that you have a larger bank account, more security, more happiness, confidence, and more luxury in life. In life, it is not enough to dream of big plans and hope to see them realized. One must set oneself in motion by means of the atmosphere of the psychic domain. How to use the atmosphere of the psychic domain to spontaneously attract needed information. The events you used to call coincidences are often nothing more than events elicited by the receptive communication established between you and others by the atmosphere of psychic dominance that you unintentionally created when you focused on something you were looking for. The conscious mind then becomes so impatient to get this thing that it instinctively appeals to the psychic power center. The latter responds by creating an atmosphere of psychic power to put you in touch with the aura of someone who could help you. Exercise 1. How to get the specific knowledge you need. Sit in your room and clearly visualize a tedious problem you wish to solve. Formulate it in exact words or write it down. Then repeat the words slowly and penetratingly in your mind. Starting from the psychic power center, launch the words through the brain antennae in the form of radio waves with the astral cone. Repeat the projection to create a psychic dominion atmosphere, the size of a hemisphere, having a diameter ranging from 32 to 48 kilometers. Imagine your message reaching a dozen people and exciting their minds to give you the desired information. Then trace it back to your psychic power center and then to the conscious mind. Repeat the exercise several times, and you will be amazed to see the regularity of the answers. How to avoid the dangers that fear attracts to you. Do not be afraid of things. By trying to attract to you what you desire, you also attract what you fear, be it a person or a circumstance. The fear of something unpleasant happening to you can draw the physical, chemical, and mental forces of the harmful phenomenon or event onto you. In this way, you create mental images of what you fear and spread them around you with instinctively created astral cones. The people you fear generally dislike you and try to dominate you. By fearing them, you do not constitute a valid protection against their nefarious influences. Although they cannot consciously influence you, they practice tyrannical introspective action against you by means of radio waves. Your psychic power center continues to receive hostile attacks on a regular basis. It then automatically spreads them to the conscious and subconscious mind, and fear for this person increases. The best defense against fear is the oral helmet. How to create the oral helmet The best defense against the dominion of another person's psychic power is the oral helmet. The oral helmet consists of a sphere around the head that prevents the radio waves of the psychic power domain from being able to influence and control you. Sit in your room and close your eyes. Imagine your aura spreading around your neck and enclosing your head, as if in a helmet. Build the walls six inches thick so that they can effectively resist the penetrating power of other people's radio waves. The outer walls should be irregular and jagged so that radio waves hitting them will be scattered. It is very easy to fabricate the oral helmet. Train and perfect it and you will have an invincible means of defense against others' attempts to dominate. The full strength of the oral helmet will last about 24 hours, after which it must be renewed. How to intensify the dominance of psychic power with the traveling astral body. The traveling astral body is an unsurpassed means of mastering psychic power. But you cannot use it except when you are asleep or in trance. 
you have to materialize yourselves. Extraordinary facts can be accomplished with the astral body. The archives are full of examples of dying people who spontaneously entered the traveling astral body and appeared to individuals thousands of miles away just before they died. Remember the times when you dreamed of falling into the void and woke up just before you hit the ground? Have you never dreamed of walking down the street in your pajamas or even naked? Such experiences are generally warped memories of travel in the astral body. What is needed to travel in the astral body? Well-trained and psychically gifted men claim that if they force themselves to appear to a person at a certain time, the astral body will do their bidding. The traveling astral body depends on an amazing control of psychic power over the astral personality, incredible power of separation between the physical body and astral body, and extraordinary visualization. These three qualities, supported by great faith in the possibility of realizing this miracle, make it possible. The slightest doubt about the possibility of realization will annihilate the faculty of execution. You will therefore need great self-confidence to realize the traveling astral body. It is well known that animals sense the presence of supernatural bodies before humans do. This is normal because their psychic power center is much more developed than that of humans. To travel in the astral body, you must awaken your psychic power center considerably. The Composition of the Astral Body The easiest means of learning how to order the astral body to travel is to first know what it consists of. The astral body is more commonly known as your spirit or ghost. It has the exact form of your body and remains in it all your life until death. But since it can leave the body when you are alive, it must be composed of substance released from the body. The astral body must therefore be composed of 1. Hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen, or air gases. The physical body can emit these gases in the energy left by the brain when you are in a trance state. 2. Other gases, such as chlorine. 3. Metals. It is doubtful unless they contain carbon. 4. Water, sweat. 5. Carbon dioxide. 6. Radiant heat. 7. Infrared rays. 8. Electromagnetic radiation, radio waves. 9. Heat due to the energy included in the projection of the astral body and the creation of different forms the latter can take. 10. Possibility of a different atomic or molecular action. Is this why no heat is felt? but only a cold sensation in the air when an astral body moves? 11. Mind and will of its own, but without perceptible tissue, because it cannot be injured or killed. 12. The ability to pass through solids and ether spaces. 1. A. Either because its molecules are infinitely small and 2. B. Whether it generates its own heat by itself because it is not cold like ice, but like mist. Conclusions Since the astral body penetrates the more compact solid, it must be. 1. A. A gas, plus. 2. B. An electromagnetic radiation, and it must be. 3. C absolutely controlled by a will or mind. 4. D. But this mind may or may not be that of a human being. Is it the subconscious mind? Or the primitive self-consciousness? It is certainly neither once the body is gone. Also the astral body. 1. E. Can be converted to joint and several at will. 2. F can be converted back to gas at will. 3. G can change form and substance at will. 4. H in the psychic state of possession. It can also replace the astral body of the injured victim and impose its will on him. The three qualities needed to make the astral body travel. One quality. 
The dying man seldom possesses superhuman psychic energy, but he is capable of anything in order to make contact with the beings dear to him for the last time, and he frantically draws to himself the electrons he needs for a miraculous projection of psychic power. In reality, cases have been recorded in which the dying person had appeared at the same time to relatives distant from each other. Such manifestations truly demand superhuman psychic power, but the dying person practically loses all reason in the frantic effort to bid his or her parents a final farewell. Therefore, until the supreme moment, no one would suspect in him such remarkable psychic powers. At the threshold of death, the primitive self-consciousness finally awakens. When you order the astral body to travel, do not just say, Astral body, I order you to appear before John or Joan this evening at eleven o'clock. Any order of psychic power is most effective when it is supported by a mental image of what you want to achieve with words. Then do the following exercise. Exercise. To command the astral body to travel with a psychic power command, lie quietly on the bed and close your eyes to concentrate better. Imagine that the astral body completely fills every part of your body. Now launch a rocket command to the astral body ordering it to depart through space to make an appearance to John or Mary. Repeat the exercise several times until you feel the astral body become alive in your body, like successive waves of a power ready to burst at the first signal. 2. Quality Now create, with your aura, a giant suction cup to M in diameter. Hold this oral suction cup above your body and make it begin to suck in air furiously. Lie still and motionless and imagine it ripping all the mass of the astral body out of the physical body. This will cause all the hairs of your horn to straighten. Double this tension by throwing a psychic harpoon into the astral body that is outside of you. 3. Quality Once you have separated the astral body from the physical body, disintegrate the giant oral sucker. Order the psychic power center to observe everything and not to forget anything the astral body sees and does on the journey. Send a rocket command to the astral body telling it where to go and what to do. Now visualize the astral body free of the physical body as it penetrates space and appears to the designated person. If this person expects to see you, order the astral body to materialize under a human form. Order it to make itself visible and visualize this change. On the astral plane, these actions are performed in a fantastic manner. The mysterious molecules of this plane are sensitive to thought beyond any human conception. Practice astral body projection calmly without setting time limits for the completion of the experience. The dying you already know, do it instantaneously. You too can do it, but you will need time to achieve remarkable results. How to Project Customized Astral Thought Forms if you do not have the time to apply astral body projection, you can use customized astral thought forms more easily and get amazing results. First of all, you have to concentrate so intensely on another person that your thoughts can take shape spontaneously before him or her as an appearance of yourself. Although this maintains a subtle astral thread of connection with you, there will be no conscious connection with you, and you will consequently have no communication. Nevertheless, you can project personalized astral thought forms. Learn how to create them and make use of them with the following exercise. Exercise. Sit and lie quietly in your room and think of a particular person. Create an image in your mind that is so vivid so that it seems real. Visualize it from head to toe in every detail. Observe her as she applies herself to what you think she does. To construct a fairly accurate picture of her activity, cast out of your mind all prejudice against her. When you have an impartial and loyal attitude toward her, your psychic power center acquires the appropriate receptivity for her. Her will then easily respond to any psychic communication of yours and practically invite you to appear in person before her. The destined person will now suddenly become aware that you intensely occupy his or her thoughts and will begin to actively think about you in his or her conscious mind. It is time to send her your psychic power message that reaches her psychic power center and is spread to her mind. Her mind sends the response to your personalized astral thought form, and then it is spread to your mind. This exercise will multiply the faculty of concentration, 
of getting in touch with others and grabbing their attention. Lesson 20. How to Master the Physio-Astral World and Gain Miraculous Power How to Create the Magical Image that Others Can See Through Provoked Vision For centuries and centuries, East Indians have confused foreigners with their faculties of provoked vision. This faculty results from the creation of thought forms and is so authentic that the people present actually see them and accept them as such. Indian fakirs have developed this faculty to such an extent that they can show travelers, distant mountains walking and moving at their command. At our place there are actors who can look into the void and see scenes and induce the same audience to see them without uttering a word. How does this occur? This is accomplished because the optic nerve contains fine command distribution fibers that run from the great visual center to the retina. These fibers can be used to transport images created in the conscious mind to the retina by guiding them with a command from the intensive psychic power in the retina. These images are converted into radio waves. You can then direct them into the horns of the other person's brain so that they reproduce the image you conceived in the conscious mind. This creates the magic image that you can see and accept as true an image. To achieve this, you have to very accurately reproduce the structures you visualize in the thought forms so that you can produce an authentic image in the great visual center. Otherwise, you will not be able to transfer a convincing image to the other person's retina. This is the vision provoked by the Indian fakir. Learn how to use it. Exercise in making others see what you want them to see. Exercise 1. Look at a garden or meadow but imagine that you see a stream. With the help of a psychic power command, direct the image of the stream formed in the great visual center to the retina, where it is converted into radio waves. With a phenomenal launch of photons, conduct these radio waves into the garden or onto the lawn in front of you until it seems to you that the stream suddenly floods the garden. For this to have substance, imagine the stream in all details, with the reflections of the sun and the sound of the water. Although you see the stream well now, you probably see the garden as well. To make the garden disappear completely, throw two or three intensified commands of psychic power at it. Then the garden will be covered by the stream. If you now tell the viewer that he is seeing a stream, he will see it instead of the garden. Exercise 2. Throw a stick to the ground and imagine it turning into a snake. With a command from the psychic power, Bring this image into the great visual center through the subtle command distribution fibers of the optic nerve to the retina. The image is converted into radio waves which you direct onto the staff, turning it into a snake. As the image of the snake erases that of the stick, you see the reptile moving slowly. Thus, although the stick always remains a stick, your visualization force transforms it into the snake so that, through provoked vision, the observer sees exactly what you yourself visualize. To facilitate the success of the experiment, you can verbally describe to the observer what you see. Here is the snake that is black and shiny like coal. Look at the scales, how small and regular they are. Now it moves, raises its head and shows its tongue. There it goes. He's leaving. Exercise 3. Repeat exercise to using other objects or animals. Describe them vividly, first orally, and then silently. In this way, create the magical image with provoked vision. Describe the scene point by point, just as if it were happening before your eyes. Exercise 4. Do exercise 3 again, but do not describe what you see. Just look at the scene as if it were an authentic river or snake. The viewer will see what you see through thought transmission, telepathy. Exercise 5. Repeat exercise for by visualizing other objects or animals. Abstract. You can use the provoked vision for more practical purposes. It will help you greatly in society, business, commerce, and love. How to use the astral body for telekinesthesia. Telekinesthesia is the movement of material objects caused by a person without any physical contact. 
This means, simply put, moving objects without touching them. Many psychic phenomena are falsely attributed to spirits. Moving material objects without touching them is not an accurate expression, however, because it implies that you do not touch them at all. Instead, you astrally touch them. Spirits evidently can be summoned to move objects and perform other phenomena. In the houses inhabited by ghosts, they do so spontaneously. But do not confuse the performance of a spirit with that of an astral body. Exercise to learn how to use the astral arm to move objects. Exercise 1. Sit quietly in your room in a comfortable chair. Observe an object that you would like to move, such as a brush. Create an astral suction cup a little longer than your arm and place it against your arm. Remain still and let the suction cup furiously draw air to itself. Imagine it pulling the astral arm away from the physical arm with physio-astral separation. The hairs on the arm will also straighten. Start the exercise again several times for three days in a row. Exercise 2. When the astral arm is completely sucked out of the physical arm, immediately disintegrate the astral sucker to leave the way clear. Then discharge a rocket command of psychic power to the astral arm, commanding it to stretch out until it touches the brush. The astral arm will hesitate, but you reinforce the command with more rockets. Exercise 3. This time engage with the irradiating psychic arc to keep the sympathetic nerves under control. Then begin exercise two again. Now insist on the rocket command launching of the psychic power until you can raise the astral arm to shoulder height. Having reached this point, you have already achieved good results. Exercise four. Send a command flare of psychic power to the astral arm, commanding it to reach up to the brush by stretching as when pulling chewing gum from both ends. Although the stretching does not cause the astral arm, which has no nerves, to suffer, the conscious mind, because of a visual suggestion, will feel terrible pain, as if the physical arm were being tortured. This pain causes the astral arm to retract into the physical arm. Then intensify the irradiating psychic arc and begin the exercise again. In a short time, the inhibitions of the mind will be eradicated. Exercise 5. Henceforth progress will be rapid. Command the astral arm with psychic power. Visualize it as it stretches further and further into the chamber and becomes thinner and thinner. Finally, it will reach the brush. Exercise 6. Touch the brush with the astral arm. Discharge photons from the brain antennae and its fingers will become alive and mobile. The astral arm will feel stronger than the physical arm since it is under absolute control of the psychic power center, just as the physical arm is when you are hypnotized. Exercise 7. Take the brush with the fingers of the astral arm and lift it up. The fingers will look like spider legs, but will be as strong as the psychic power center can make them. Perform this exercise to develop the faculty of the astral body to make the table and other mediumistic things move. You will also gain the faculty to make others feel your physical presence without touching or approaching them. How to use the power of materialization. Materialization is another higher physio-astral faculty. It is not easy to master because it is not fostered by the disbelief of the conscious and subconscious mind. Mediums regularly attain it when they are in a trance state. Psychic masters achieve it by astral body projection. The projection of the astral body can take any form you wish. You only have to visualize the desired form with conviction when the astral body is separated from the physical body and send a command to it to reproduce the visualization. Exercise 1. Sit in your room and lie down completely. Reach for the brush with your astral arm, but do not pick it up. With a command of psychic power, visualize a normal hand reaching for and lifting the brush. Observe the hairs on the back of the living hand, wrinkled skin, nails, and wrist. Visualize a living hand, separated from the arm, but connected to it by a long hazy cord the size of a finger. Pick up the brush with this hand, move it in the air, and put it back. Then let the hand dissolve back into its astral form. 
This is the materialization. Exercise 2. Do exercise 1 again. But this time direct a psychic power command to the astral arm to mutate it into a full human arm. Then take the brush and move it through the air with this arm. Exercise 3. Sit in your room looking at the ground and project a mass of astral body out of you. Let it bunch up in the center of the room and send it a command of psychic power to give it the shape of a large brown and white dog. Send another command for the dog to move its tail and bark. It will look like a real dog, and if someone touches it, its fur will look like that of a dog. But his mind will be yours. Send a command for him to speak and repeat your words with your voice. It has no personal instincts, only your psychic power center to guide it, even if the actions are those of a dog. Repeat this exercise several times. Exercise 4. Materialize furniture and other inanimate objects with the same system. The miracles you can accomplish with try conscious cooperation. If you have been successful with these materialization processes, you will have consumed a considerable amount of electrons. But your competence increases with practice until you can materialize a series of scenes at a time within a few minutes. The materializations consist of ectoplasms, that is, of astral body substances. If a sword were sunk into the materialized hand or dog, no blood would come out. And if the hand or dog moved, they could pass through a wall. You can reproduce any form, living or dead with ectoplasm. You can even turn the dog into a horse or an eagle if the psychic power command is strong enough. The animal will do exactly what your mind commands it to do. You will be able to visualize and reproduce in this way an entire regiment, a funeral procession, or a mountain of money before people's eyes. It all depends on the cooperation you can get from the conscious and subconscious mind and the primal self. Everything then depends on the degree of perfection of tri-conscious cooperation. How to realize levitation? Needless to say, the most mind-blowing thing you can do is levitation especially if you lift your body. Practically everyone knows the experience of the yoga master taking a siesta in space at a height of 1.20 meters. Think of the influence you might have on a person who has seen you do such a thing. But only a psychic master can come to that. On the other hand, knowing how this happens will increase your psychic power and thus your power to master psychic power. Levitation During thousands of years, Man has tried to explain I, phenomenon of levitation. In spiritualism, this can be accomplished by lifting the physical body into the air by projections of astral body limbs onto the ground. Many psychic masters, however, raise themselves without making use of their astral body. Here is what happens. When you walk on the ground, the feet have a magnetic polarity, N, opposite to that of the earth, S, while the head, which in this position has a magnetic polarity s opposite to that of the feet in, has the same as that of the earth s. If you can reverse the magnetic polarity of the body so that the feet have the polarity of the earth s and the head, the polarity opposite to the earth n, the body will stand in reverse according to the law of like repelling like and opposites attracting like. Similarly, when you are lying on your back, the back draws a magnetic polarity opposite to that of the earth while the front of the body draws the same as that of the earth. When you are lying on your belly, the front of the body takes a magnetic polarity opposite to that of the earth, while the back takes the same as that of the earth. If the whole body could voluntarily assume a magnetic polarity like that of the earth, he would be repelled by it. At that moment, levitation could be magnetic repulsion. The body and the earth repel each other. To perform levitation, therefore, the psychic master needs his body to have the same polarity as the earth, and the earth will repel him. This is opposite magnetization. Analyze the two ways of performing levitation. How to realize levitation with the astral body. Lie down on the bed. Think of yourself suspended in the air, but supported by extensions of the body that is on the ground. Now cease your vision. 
you have visualized the image you want your primal self to realize. Now you are ready to begin. Imagine yourself on your back with extra arms and legs pushing your body into the air. Repeat this exercise until you feel your astral limbs projecting out of the physical limbs and pushing the physical body into the air above the ground. The magnetic polar repulsion existing between humans. The easiest way to achieve levitation with inverted magnetism is by starting with the horizontal position, because in this position, there is more of the body in contact with the earth. Reversing the magnetic polarity of the body and concentrating it to a point that can be repelled from the earth is not easy to do. Only a psychic master can realize it to learn how to implement it, even in a small way. Flipping the magnetic polarity, however, can be very useful to you just the same. When you meet someone, you both possess the same magnetic polarity, which means there is a natural magnetic repulsion between human beings. Therefore, learn how to nullify this inevitable magnetic repulsion between you and others with flipped magnetization. The easiest and simplest way to reverse the magnetic polarity of the body when you want to attract someone to you is to feel a great desire to get to know this person, to be his or her friend, and to help him or her as much as you can if the individual does not trust you. Conversely, remain in a waiting position if the individual is interested in you. If John has a magnetic polarity similar to yours, if you feel the same for him, yours will also intensify and cause mutual repulsion. But if you instantly reverse your magnetic polarity, the surfaces of your bodies will then be attracted rather than repelled. How to flip the magnetic polarity? Exercise 1. Lie down on the bed. Your back and the bed do not possess the same magnetic polarity and therefore do not repel each other. To acquire a bed-like magnetic polarity, your back should have the impression that it wants to lie on the bed. So simply think that the back loves to lie on the bed. Feel happy and relaxed, and you will fall asleep quickly. You now know why the psychic master falls into a trance of sleep before his body remains suspended in the void. Do not expect miraculous results from this exercise. It will improve health by providing you with deep sleep and better rest for the next day. How to keep the primitive self-conscious always awake. You have studied practically and acquired at least 1% development of your unconscious personality by awakening the primitive self. Learn how to keep it awake permanently with the psychic pattern. The psychic model. The psychic model is the quick means of placing the primitive self-consciousness under the control of its 10 important parts and freeing it from the influence of the mind. To achieve this, two conditions must occur. One, submitting alpha, beta, delta, and theta waves. Two, placing hearing under the control of cochlea electricity instead of true auditory electricity. Explanation. The first condition places the psychic power center in control of the conscious and subconscious mind, which already occurs during sleep. The second condition places the center of psychic auditory power in control of the hearing and auditory centers. Realize these two conditions while awake, and you can always awaken the primitive self-consciousness. How to create the psychic model? To realize the psychic model. 1. Put you in a kind of light trance. 2. Command the psychic power center to take control of you. 1. The easy means to put yourself in a kind of light trance is to A. Stretch the muscles from head to toe. Stretch the eyebrows, hands, feet, jaw. The rest will come reflexively. B. Close your eyes and look into the void, thinking of nothing. If the eyes are closed, look at the blackness behind the pupils. 2. Launch a command from the conscious mind to the psychic power center for it to take control of your body. A. Silently count to four to allow time for the center to take over. This is the psychic pattern. Do this once a week simply to preserve the fantastic potential of the primitive self-consciousness. How to be a new I for the rest of life. You have finished cyclomancy. 
You have awakened the primitive self-consciousness, and therefore you will not be prisoners of the conscious mind, but masters of your hidden powers, which will increase more and more, and which you can use to reach unhoped for goals. With your new self, you will reach everywhere. Progressive method of using the new I. Here is how to use the new I in current life. Morning. As soon as you get up, sit by the window and do some breathing exercises to fill yourself with electrons. Then saturate yourself with the radiant psychic arc to better digest breakfast. As you leave the house, use muscle tone control to assume gracefulness of movement and gait. On the street, meet a neighbor and make him or her amiable by using flipped magnetization and electrifying handshake. To attract more customers in trade, create the atmosphere of psychic dominance. To get along with your wife or girlfriend, cast hints or calls with the psychic bow. Afternoon. Regain strength with the crossed zembla. With the psychic spear, force a person who ignores you to feel a keen interest in you. If you have rivals, protect yourself from their insidious thoughts by means of the oral helmet. If your occupation demands fine hearing, increase the sensitivity of cochlea electricity. Evening. Refresh yourself with the horizontal ozone. If you study or read, do so with the help of the primitive vision center. If you visit a sick friend, raise his spirits with light touch. When you go to bed, do zembla to delay aging. Stimulate your spouse with the human lamp. Fall deeply asleep with the help of the irradiant psychic arc. Read Cyclomancy again starting afresh, and you will profit so much that you will multiply the primal self-consciousness. Then regularly consult the passages concerning the parts of your personality that you want to better develop and do the corresponding exercises. This recording of Cyclomancy, The Secret of Psychic Power Control by Frank Rudolph Young, was presented by Stargate Book. Sound recording copyright 2023 and produced by Deep Send Limited 2023.